I chimed in with the haven't you people ever heard of closing a goddamn door no is that emo yeah okay, absolutely so. oh he's yeah. emo yeah okay that's what i said and I people were like not tragedies yeah even if some things aren't the standard emo if it's like adopted by the emo culture i feel yeah. like that makes it emo as well okay let me see um let me think is this emo is this emo stubbing your toe on the side of a chair no that just sucks oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god i am going to video game myself this is literally it this is the point this is why i don't but this is what it is this is you don't have any other fucking situation where you have a shit ton of cyber stalkers that get together congregate in a fucking reddit and like upvote this shit into oblivion out of fucking context look at this this crushing win has got me down Wish I could get out of this town Wherever chatters go when I start to game Surrounded but I'm so alone I'm so well known but no one knows The isolation of this online fame I chime in with the hell that you people ever heard a goddamn door trying to watch the fans warp tour in the state of Arkansas and it's taking me back to Ohio it's taking me back to where lovers go and if I suck my toe is it emo or does it just suck my privacy is sacrificed my every word is analyzed the line between adoration Session. The constant chase for content The shock of cruelty to faceless names And if I fail, will they understand? And if I fall, will they lend a hand? Crushing weight has got me down Wish I could get out of this And wherever chatters go when I start to game I chime in with the hell that you people ever a goddamn door trying to watch the fans warp tour in the state of Arkansas and it's taking me back to Ohio it's taking me back to where lovers go and if I suck my toe is it emo or does it just suck it just sucks I have to go to Brazil what's going on everybody I hope everyone's having a fantastic evening, fantastic afternoon, fantastic pre-noon, no matter where you are in the world. I'm Muslim Piker and this is and our broadcast coming to you live from yet another gloomy day here in California, Los Angeles, folks. We're live and alive, and I hope all the boys, I hope all the girls, and I hope all the MBs are having a fantastic one. Because today's a beautiful day. Today is yet another wonderful day, regardless, regardless of how shitty it is. It's 61 degrees and cloudy here in California, Los Angeles, and... I'm still alive, and I'm still alive, and I hope you guys are as well. No matter where you are in the world, all the boys, girls, and the Ambies having a fantastic one. It's going to rain in Cali. Regards to how sad The Walking Dead was last night, yo, I'm not going to lie. I'm still distraught emotionally. I ended the stream. I ended the stream, and I, I had to just sit around. This is part of the broadcast where I t uh, tell you about my personal news. Uh, I just saw the VOD you killed Ben, watched through all the ups and downs, but I don't know if I can continue subscribing to a streamer who said, who lets a boy die like that. We had a good run, but this is where I draw the line. Dude, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. I just had to kind of sit around and just think about, just contemplate the meaninglessness of existence and what, what one action, what kind of chain reaction can come out of one singular action, you know? <laughs> that game made me throw up crying. Jesus Christ. What is this? It's a zombie. I just oh, fuck you! Oh my god! Oh my god! I think I literally. Hey, oh hey. oh my god! Bro, I bopped that kid so fucking fast, which is shocking. I bopped that kid in the head so fucking fast, and it turns out nobody did that. Like gamers were scared of bopping the kid, and it's like, what are you supposed to do, bro? The kid's a zombie, like, and he's fucking in pain. He's not even, he's like a hungry zombie. He's called a Bordo, you know what I mean? Season two had me ugly crying several times, it's been years, and I still think about it. 
Um, just want to say this gaming series is probably your best since old school GTRP. Yeah, I curb stomped them, dude, because I didn't want to fucking waste a bullet. It's a zomber. Yeah. Also, I'm pro abortion. Um, yeah, Israel has halted their educational activities. We're going to talk about that. Hold up, folks. I'm live and alive, and this is the part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit about my personal news about what's going on in my world. Okay. What is this? Chat after Ben D worded RIP Bozo. You could say Ben killed. Bro, I think the fact that, like, the fact that I found out that you can't have Vernon nor Molly on the crew afterwards, but, like, you guys lied to me, and you made it seem like Vernon and Molly could have been crew members if I didn't kill Ben, and that shit sucks, okay? That shit sucks. Uh, and, and chat was so goddamn convincing at, like, this particular lie I mean, I believed it, and then chat leaned on it. I, I already was, like, insecure about this Ben decision, seemingly because Clementine was upset at me, and it fucking made me mad. You guys gaslit the shit out of me, bro. Yeah, y'all are propagandizing big time. What the fuck is, what is this girl doing? Down. If you didn't make Clem upset, none of this would have even happened. Yeah. Um... I can't believe that there's people doing Ben-only runs out there. Remember, when you feel... When you feel like you're an insane person, okay? When you feel like the world has gone mad, remember that there are people who played Ben-only runs on The Walking Dead Season 1, uh, on the fa final chapter, which we're going to get into, which is crazy. Like, doing a Ben-only run, you have to be... Like, that directly should come with... Like, that should alert the FBI. That's all I'm going to say. If you do a Ben only run, the FBI should be immediately alerted because there's something going on. You need to be on a fucking radar or something. Okay. Ben chatter or duck chatter. Yeah. I mean, duck had its moments. Duck, duck literally had his moments. Duck was like my night wing. You know what I mean? He was good. He was the Robin to my Batman. He was a detective. I fucking didn't high five him. And that was a big L for me. I left him hanging and then fucking had to pop him. You know what I mean? But Ben is just so bad. Okay. Anyway, I'm done talking about The Walking Dead, at least for now, even though I can't stop talking about it and I can't stop thinking about it because it's such a fucking awesome banger of a game. Um, Walking Dead aside, ended the broadcast last night. And then I don't this Nightwing like that. Yeah. Okay. Listen, I end the broadcast. I start watching Fallout. I was like, oh, yeah, maybe I'll, you know, I'm trying to get back. I mean, I am into One Piece still, but like I take some time off from it every now and then during Wano because Wano is a little bit long. And I was going to watch One Piece last night, but Fallout is so captivating. It's so good, dude. It is so goddamn good. I love it. Okay. I love it. Walton Goggins is phenomenal. Um, uh, what's her face is phenomenal. Purcell, she's great. Great character. It's awesome. It's really good. Ella Purnell is great. Um, yeah, I really like it. <laughs> She's fucking weird with how big her eyes are, but like, what the hell's going on with her eyes, bro? It's like transvestigated you. <laughs> what? This is my trans mask brother, and transphobes think he's a girl. Too bad for them because he will always be a man. <laughs> That's your own tweet, okay? And, and no. People have transvestigated me before, which is pretty funny. Because, like, don't you kind of feel like this whole, this gender shit's busted? Like, your understanding of gender is busted if I am somehow not, like, in your worldview, a real man? You know what I mean? It's like, you, it's just a self-report that you don't believe that, like, like, that there's any difference between trans men and cis men. Like, you just do not think that there's any difference. <laughs> at all um but yeah it's surprising how good it is considering how yu yu Hakusho and avatar were mid as fucking disappointing bro i think this might be one of my favorite video game recreations it's better than last of us am i crazy for that one and last of us is so perfectly designed for movies like it basically is a movie 
and I like Last of Us. It's definitely better than The Witcher. This is honestly Fallout, especially for this community. You guys will love it because it's like real commie shit in there too. There's a lot of commie shit happening. Um, so it's more. This is more original. All Last of Us had to do was not fuck up the existing script. It's uh, it's very good. It's very good. Yes, Last of Us adaptation doesn't have an ultra Zionist like Rappaport. Oh my god, it was Rappaport. Bro, I literally... Oh my god. That's so funny. I was watching that because you can't really see his whole head. Night Titus, right? So you can't really fucking see him uh, in the show. And I, I couldn't tell. I was like, this motherfucker looks like Michael Rappaport. <laughs> Yo, that's so fucking funny. I literally was like, bro, is this Michael Rappaport? Like, no. No. Nah, no way. <laughs> no, I straight up. Yeah, he had the voice too. Oh, fucking not, nah, dude. Oh, this so fucking sucks. Yeah, he always just plays himself. This was directed before that big term, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. Um, Did you see the Israel reference in Fallout? <laughs> you know, this is all your fault. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one, Oliver. Um, oh shit, Jonathan Nolan is the director. You're gonna live stream your Drake this track reaction? Yes. No, I, I I literally have not listened to it yet. I heard it, like I heard that it was a, a real thing. It was the genuine thing, so I I wanted to hold off until I listened to it. Um, no, I have it. I have it right here. I have it right here. Don't worry. Drake's diss track against Kendrick Lamar, future Metro Boom, and Rick Ross in the weekend is seemingly surfaced online. Um, so what did you think of Walton Goggins? So good. So fucking good. I mean, Walton Goggins is a master of the craft. So I I feel one of the things that makes me really sad about Walton is that he's getting a little old. Like his age is getting up there, and it makes me kind of sad. Like, he's 52 years old, which is not that old. But I feel like the pocket of the type of characters that he used to play is has always been, like, peak 40. Does that make sense? Does anyone understand what I'm trying to say here? I, I don't know if I... I don't know if this makes sense the way I'm explaining it. Where, like, 52 is not that old for actors especially. It's not. But Walton Goggins has, like, always played, like, the perfect... 40 year old characters you know what i mean and and he's like when when it, there are many instances in the show where you're watching him there are many instances in the show where you're watching him and you're like he just looks a little maybe too old but i guess he's like supposed to be a washed up actor so i guess that still makes sense doesn't really matter because he's still the goat he's phenomenal he is so sick um he is so good He's so good as the ghoul. Like, I, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know how to explain it. He's just phenomenal. He's just great. He's the goat. That's it. That's all I have to say. Makes it so watchable. Um, Yeah. I wonder how they did the nose. I was thinking like the entire time I'm watching it, I was thinking like, do they CGI that shit you think? Or is that just makeup? Cause like what happens to his actual nose? Cause I feel like that's gotta be so goddamn uncomfortable. To just like constantly have that, have your nose like taped down. You know what I mean? I assume they just cut it with CGI, right? They like paint it green. Like he, he has the prosthetics on and then they paint his nose green. So then the CGI cuts it off, right? Do you guys ever think about that? I feel like the, the production of like the production process of that, I feel like is, is going to be very frustrating. Um, what is it? A uh, combination of makeup and CGI. I mean, Walton played a washed up divorced veteran doing kids' birthday party shows, loser old man fits. Then he goes on to become a badass ghoul bounty hunter, sick as hell. Yeah. Oh, here, here's a, okay. They, they have a whole article on it. That's, I love that. Fall TV show star explains how they removed the ghoul's nose. The piece was designed so it went up your nose. They just put white dots, just tracking dots. When I read the script, the ghoul's face is described as a melted candle. And I could not picture what that would look like in my head. I mean, I had a reference to the game. Seeing you in person for the first time is freaky. Goggins also spoke to Diaz about comparison between Fallout and fellow game adaptation. Wait, hold on. The actor takes on the role of the mutated gunslinger Cooper Howard in the newly released Prime Video Show. Speaking exclusively, 
actor revealed that he wore a special piece on his face during filming, which might have taken other actors out of the story. Oh, it's so weird because I didn't take that into consideration, but everyone else was looking at my nose. I wasn't. I didn't really think about it. Goggins were called. No, that works perfectly, though. Honestly, that works perfectly. If they're all looking at your goddamn blue nose, it's still great because there's a hole there, so it still fits. Yeah, I heard that uh, the director went up to him and went, oop, I got your nose, and then that's how they did it. Um, God. Only problem is the stretching skin on his neck and his lips too normal. No, dude, they still had to make him look understandable, dude. Come on. They still had to make him look like Walton Goggins. Like, what do you mean? I think it's perfect. I think the way they ghoulified him is perfect. Anyway, it's a really good show. There's a lot of commie stuff in it, too. There's a lot of red baiting. It's great. Because, obviously, it's, it's so far very anti-capitalist as well. I mean, Fallout is anti-capitalist in general. But I do love that uh, that vibe still remains. Doubly ironic that it's an Amazon TV show. You know what I mean? It's like, just think about that. Never forget. Goggins vac vax maxing. Huh. That's fine. Um, just watching the show. I like it, but a lot of the editing is pretty bad. Dude, I'll say it like this. First episode of Fallout is the weakest episode, which is shocking. First episode of the Fallout show is the weakest episode. And I've never seen nothing like that before. Usually, usually the first episode is a banger and then the rest doesn't follow through. Fallout first episode is the weakest episode. This doesn't mean that it's a bad episode. It doesn't mean that it's a bad episode at all. It's still a very good episode, right? But it only gets better. And what do I mean by this? There are like, there is that long exposition, the long cut scene with all the slow-mos and you're just like, come on, bro. Like, I get it. I get it. We get it. We get it. Things are happening. There was a lot of shit like that that did frustrate me in the first episode, but, um, um, despite the slow build, it was still very good. And honestly, the follow-up is even better. So it's it's so good. So yeah, I've been um I've been watching Fallout. <laughs> if you guys couldn't pick up on the context there. I've been I've been watching a lot of it and it's really good. No, I don't care about the three body problem. I'm sorry to the three body problem enjoyers. It didn't do it for me. Now I'll say it like this, though. Obviously, there are issues with the Fallout show. Issues such as this. That's right. Ella Purcell is not gadded up. Thank God gamers have fixed Ella Purcell's real human ass. Okay? Thank God. Or Purnell, not Purcell. Okay? Also known as Lucy. I mean, there is no better indication that your brain is just completely warped. Then looking at a real human being, looking at real costume design choices that someone made and treating that real human woman like a video game female character and just fucking doing this to them. This is very weird. Okay. Gamers brains are so goddamn warped with culture war nonsense that they've decided in their weird echo chambers and their weird hug boxes where they're being gross and pervy that like... This kind of behavior is normal. This is not normal. Okay? This is not normal at all. I don't know what to say beyond the fact that that is so weird. Anyway, um, let me blast off and let's continue. Talking Fallout TV show. It's great. And Saturday fun day. Unless World War Three breaks out. Iran watch. Ban appeals. The ROM watched Drake dis leaked Ben appeals finishing Walking Dead season one without tearing up challenge impossible difficulty get in now do we have a do we have a meme for this speaking of memes uh, I'll do okay buddy today as well they did this a Brie Larson with Captain America as well. It's so funny because Brie Larson is also titted up like she is fucking she is stacked up. So it's like I think someone was I forget who I was talking to and someone was telling me like she literally just started. She just started like 
you know, wearing more revealing clothing. And then everyone fucking stopped. All the gamers stopped complaining about her. Gamers are genuinely counter-revolutionary. They are genuinely reactionary. They are disgusting. You watching Tokyo Vice season two? I mean, I watched it. Didn't it end? I watched all the episodes. I think it was 10 episodes. You asked why people said yesterday why they think you're a bro. You just said tit it up. Sorry, you're right. I should have said she has some honkers on her. Do we have a good chat? Do we have a good meme to blast off with? Or do we not? Hard drive. Gamers just want apolitical games. White ethno state. Yeah. This is how you sound to us, dude. Yeah. Some of those sure. kids today will be oh, my co hosts It's years just ago. like, <laughs> dude, you got the best barrels ever, dude. Just like. Yeah, I love this guy. What do you mean? And also, he's perfectly valid and totally normal. You pull in and you just get spit right out of him. And you just drop in and just smack the lip. Whoop! Drop down. Whoop! And then after that. You just drop in, just ride the barrel and get pitted. So pitted. Like yeah, what do you mean? You don't like riding the barrel and getting fucking pitted? Like, I don't understand. Yeah. Duck if he didn't become a zombie. Anthony Jeselnik. Who's that fucking loser who's going through the worst? Oh divorce? my god, is Anthony Jeselnik alright? What does he have, fucking cancer? What the fuck's going on? Jesus Christ. Bro, is he okay? Oh, Zempic. Bro, he was already fucking shredded. What do you mean? I actually don't understand it. He's it, w what the hell? He looks like legitimately different. Am I crazy? Oh, Zempic's there. Okay, shut up. Chad wants Kudasan playing with mice, not Brohasan. Okay, I don't think you guys understand. Kudasan playing with mice is also the same as Brohasan. Okay, it's this. I'm the same person. I know that it's hard to compartmentalize. I know that it's like hard to comprehend because I'm just a guy that you see on camera. So you think I'm like a character of sorts, but the reality is that is me. Okay. Both of those guys are me, which I find strange that you don't understand it here. I just used the no Iranian ever called me incel meme because you guys failed me today. No, no meta, no memes whatsoever. You failed me. So I used, I, I used this one talking fallout TV show. It's great. And Saturday, fun day, unless World War III breaks out. Iran watch, Drake, Diz League, Ban Appeals, Finish Your Walking Dead Season 1 Without Tearing Up, Challenge, Impossible Difficulty, Get In Now. Once again, your Tumblr fandom understands this better than most. My favorite characters of yours is Enraged by Trans Chatter, Hassan. I mean, that's not like... It's also me. A handless gun enthusiast? I don't want any trouble. I'm just your everyday average no-handed fellow with a rooster shirt on. Hey, that's Santa Claus? Whoa, man. Listen, I don't want any Dude, America is so crazy. Like, I actually don't understand. Uh, bro has no hands, and he's still, like, I mean, I, I, I guess it's fun, you know? Let him have fun. I, I don't know. It's not like he's, like, carrying that shit around all the time. Trouble. At least he's got good trigger discipline. I'm just your everyday average no-handed fellow with a rooster shirt on. Hey, that's Santa Claus? I'm not going to lie. I did think he would pull out the gun faster. Like, I, I don't know why. Like, it's already it, like the impressiveness comes from the fact that he has no hands and he's still able to shoot. But like, don't lie to yourselves if you didn't think that he was just going to like do something where you're like, what the hell? Whoa, man. Listen. I don't think you can unzip a bag faster than that. Yo, why don't they just make this guy's hands a gun? You know, cut out the fucking middle man, dog. Actually like a pirate you know like you know how the pirates will have like a hook which i never really understood like why the fuck do you have a hook for a hand bro like I, I feel like there's way more useful shit that you could put there even a fucking hammer i feel like would be more useful than just a hook so just give him guns for hands you know just give him yeah edward 40 hands exactly but this time it's like give him a cold 45 i saw this and it reminded me of you Ooh, trains. <laughs> okay, dude. Why is he not being canceled by the right for wanting to destroy Christmas by killing Santa Claus? That's right. <clears throat> what is this? Hear me out. Yeah. No, that, that's what makes it make sense. Cut out the fucking middleman. Put a goddamn laser beam on that arm, dude. Get to work. Put a cannon on there. Put a cannon on that bad boy. Fuck it. YOLO. Rig that shit. Um... Insurance companies with 100% sponsor it? Sure. Who's that 
fucking loser who's going through the worst divorce of all time right now? Steven Crowder. I've never even heard of that guy. So lucky. He's like if Joe Rogan seems too confusing, they like Steven Crowder. <laughs> Steven Crowder tried to be a stand-up. He was a stand-up and was the worst stand-up of all time. And then was like on Fox News as the funny one. And he got fired because they were like, you're not funny at all. And now he's going through like an insane divorce and losing all kinds of money and swears. <laughs> but I was at the Comedy Cellar when he auditioned. The owner had seen him on Fox and was like, I'd like a conservative voice. And then I got to watch him just eat the hottest of hot dicks for five minutes on a Sunday. And every time I see him being like, mwah, mwah, democracy, I laugh thinking about what a loser he is. We gotta get him on the pod, Aaron. Gotta get Tucker. I want Steven Crowder's wife on the pod with the kids. That's awesome that he hates Steven Crowder. That's great. I love that. I mean, good takes from Anthony Jeselnik. Um, we're gonna talk about gamers in a second. Uh, we're gonna get back to gamers in one moment. But yeah, a brave man protests Israeli and American warmongering against Iran. No Iranian ever called me incel. That's a, that's a great... For those of you who don't know... I mean, I don't know how to describe it to you, but uh, that's uh, Miz really just met Vivek Ramaswamy and asked him if he knew Squeaks. Does he say yes? Miz give is so cringe, dude. I love, I I I love that like every fucking, I love how right wing the UFC circuit is. I might be alone on this, but I absolutely love. Like, I want to go. I want to go to like one of these like slap boxing events. Or one of these like fucking like UFC events and I want to sit there and I want to shake Donald Trump's hand. It's so funny. It literally is just like, it's like Kid Rock, just a whole bunch of influencers like from Hey Big Mike. Like a lot of my friends go, you know what I mean? Miz got tickets for UFC 300 and everyone who gets tickets get a free ticket to Power Slap. Dana is a close friend of Trump for like 20 plus years. No, I know. I know. It's just awesome. I love how much of a fucking hog epicenter it is. UFC is the one sport where you need to have right wing dudes going at it. It's like going to a baseball game and not drinking a beer and having a hot dog. I knowing your luck, you go to a night where the only politician in the audience is someone awful like MTG. That's not awful. I mean, I am going there for hog watch. I'm, I'm trying to do hog watch IRL. So like that does make sense to me. It's even funnier when two Trump supporters fight each other. Yeah. Great. Wemby had 34 points, 12 boards, including 17 points in three minutes to beat Jokic and prevent Denver from getting the one seed. Spurs were 11.5 point underdogs. 17 points in three minutes, three minutes with three, uh, with four threes. I got to pee. All this play, I got to pee. Super high basketball IQ. Victor for three. Doesn't push anything in his game, though. Takes whatever's well, given to him. Yeah, and you do a nice job. Oh, wow. <laughs> Good job. Good job. going toward the rim, and he's just casually tipping it in. Just don't see that one. Oh, oh my God. Good. Victor Rimmon, Yama. Goodness gracious. <laughs> he is all... Yeah, right. He, he just took his time underneath. He just wanted to make sure Victor wasn't going to get back in the play. Another one. Yes! Oh, oh, yeah. And the rebound of it, and he brings it on the bounce. Let you know Go one. ahead. <laughs> Get out of here. Oh, yeah. smart. Just super high basketball IQ. Victor for three. Doesn't push anything in his game, though. Takes whatever's well, given to him. Yeah, and you do a nice job. Oh, wow. <laughs> Victor, he's going toward the rim and he's just casually tipping it in. Just don't see that one. Oh, oh good. good. Victor Rimmon, Yama. Three. Dude, it's so funny watching him shoot. It's just like, it literally looks like an old school catapult. Like, it, I don't know why, but every time I watch him shoot, it looks like he is literally fucking launching a catapult directly at a castle. Okay. My man's got the trebuchet. Look, it's like, there's so much. There's so like, it takes him a couple seconds. <laughs> it takes him a couple seconds to get it off. Not because he's like a slow shooter or anything. It's just because there's so much, there's so much movement required when you're that long you know what i mean it, everything he does i swear to god everything he does 
looks like you're watching him operate in slow motion specifically because he's got like this float to all of his movements because of how long and dangly he is three goodness gracious he is on fire he just took his time underneath he wanted to make sure victor wasn't going to get back in the play also jokic is like typical serbian man bro fucking defend him he's shooting he's like nah it's fine he's like me on the court Typical Balkan behavior. Eh, it's okay. Gonna get back in the play. Another one. Yes! Oh, you Go ahead. Okay, that one is unfair. To be fair, that 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 one is it's valid not to fucking press him at that point. He's got he's doing Steph Curry range. That's weird to do. You're like seven eight, bro. What are you doing? Let the fucking shorties have some. What that is kind of stupid. That is a, actually, it doesn't make sense. That is very stupid. Hon honestly, why is he shooting from half court? You're seven, eight. That's odd, man. Four point line. Dude, this is why I think it's so funny when motherfuckers are like, bro, basketball was better in the nineties. It's like, dude, this doesn't physically exist in any other era. Science had not caught up to a man who's eight foot tall and can just fucking drop these three pointers from half court do not tell me about like oh Dirk Nowitzki or whatever don't even fucking try this shit okay it just doesn't make sense it does not happen I watched Shaq actually talk about this by the way and he agrees with me on this issue okay no Dirk was in the 90s no I know I'm just simply bringing up that like there have been tall guys who fucking um you know there have been tall guys Who've, uh, who've who've been able to be good shooters or whatever. That's that's why I brought him up. But listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Shaq talked about this where he said that when he first came up, when he first came up, he learned about the whole like 90s uh, TikTok memes, right? He's heard about it as well. And he talks about how when he first came up, they constantly would say that uh, the old greats would destroy him. Okay. And he's like, no, of course not. Like, the game improves across the board for every single person. So, like, yes, now, uh, nowadays, you agree with Shaq? Come on, man. Oh, my God. Shaq couldn't even make free throws. <sighs> Bro, he literally openly admits that, like, now there are dudes that would cook him as well. He's a great guy out in public all the time in Tampa. Lol. Shaq is not a great guy. Actually, he never said that they would cook him. He still said he would cook all the new kids. Uh... If he was peak, Jokic clears. I love comparing sports eras will never die. It's just because there is an objective truth. There is an objective truth to this process. And for some weird reason, people just like refuse to reckon with it. I, I That's why it frustrates me. That's why it frustrates me. There are obviously, there are, <laughs> there are obviously genuine improvements in medicine, in food, in exercise science that greatly that greatly improve the game across the board. No one would ever break records on any issue ever if it did if it worked that way. Okay? It's just so weird. Yeah, power it is power scaling. Exactly. That's why you have to match your players to your peers. You calculated Wemby's BMI and he's the equivalent if I was 160. Yeah, he's he is way too skinny still. That's disgusting. That's actually disgusting. Wemby is ahead of this class too. I I agree, except for Alperen Shangun, who cooked him that one time. Let's not forget, okay? Never forget, Alperen Shangun literally served Wemby the top of the hour ad break. He did. And then he got injured. He did. He dropped 48 on him. That's, or was it a 48? I, I, something crazy. I forget. Alperen Shangun. Literally served him a top of the hour ad break and was like, yo, if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. Okay. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, baby, for $5 or for free. Anyway, when you. Oh, fuck. Wemby looks like those skeletons they hang up in classrooms. <laughs>
Sakura Gore, thank you for the 10 community gift of subs, allowing 10 people to know longest to the ads at the top of the hour. He's a three minute break now. Fuck Wemby, the true goat was actually hooping last night. Our glorious King LeBron did it last night to ice the game. Control and it's around. It's loose and they're going to get control and it's there's no reason like there's just like just pack it up he is the greatest of all time dude he just keeps getting better with age he's like a fine wine how is this man almost 40 how 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 is he almost 40 look at that speed look at that strength look at that explosive speed look he is literally he is basically virtually outside of the court a dude half his age is running at the ball. He steals it, passes everybody, and yams it up. There's just nothing, dude. He's definitely not getting better, Law. He's a GOAT, though. He can't get better because he is the best. When you're the best, it's just hard to get better. Wow, you see that speed? Look at my man's hairline, bro. What is happening? Yo, God punished him with this, okay? I'll be honest with you. God was like, you can't have everything, LeBron. Okay? You can't. You, we have to give. We have to consistently make you bald. And it's really funny that he fights against it so much. This part is really funny to me. Okay? Because he literally fights against it. It's like, bro, just go bald. Everybody knows you're the baldest man in the NBA. It doesn't make any sense that he just keeps... Like, you think we think it's weird that your band, your your fucking headband is, like, right above your eyebrows in the beginning of the season, and by playoffs, it's, like, literally at the top of your head, and it happens every year? We know what's going on, LeBron. I love you, but you don't have to hide it. He's an unk now. It's okay to be bald king. That's what I mean. He doesn't even wear headbands anymore <laughs> for that reason, probably. Bald is the head that wears the crown. It's just so funny that... Like, someone must have made a, ha a hairline tracker for LeBron, for LeBald. Because it literally is just like, it goes, it goes down and up again, down and up again, down and up again, down and up again. And it's so crazy because, like, look, he, he always tries to go over the uh, front fix. But look at the back, bro. I've never seen balding like this. He's balding like a Japanese samurai in the Edo period. Where, like, you know how they used to, like, normally cut their hair that in, in that area? What is happening? Why is he fucking... He's balding all the way to the back of his dome, bro. Just don't. Just let it go. Let it go. I know you're so down bad for LeBron because you give him a balding pass. I, I love him. He is the GOAT. Who cares? Him trying to brush his hair. LeBron James. Oh, no. It's the phantom limb. Chat, don't make this joke. Bro, okay. Many of you don't know this, but sometimes when people lose their fucking... Sometimes when people lose their arms, they feel it, okay? Like like a traumatic accident happens and you like lose your arm, you will sometimes get like a phantom pain on the part where your arm used to be. That's a real thing. And that's precisely what's happening to LeBron right now. Dude, uh excuse me, LeBron expert here. LeBron's only do this when they're in extreme distress, okay? It's not funny nor cute. You need to you need to get her to Turkey immediately, okay? Get him a new hairline Stop pronto. Brushing brush his hairs. <laughs> brush, brush his hairs. Stop. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Stop it. Just uh, putting a little lotion on my arm, you know. Can't be out here ashy in these streets, especially my elbow, you know. You gotta... <laughs> oh, no. It's like, ay, 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 pre-watched, yeah. The milli you are millimeters to be unable to shame Le Bald. What? What? LeBron hairline. With LeBron James being one of the greatest players ever, and arguably getting better each year, his hairline has been doing the complete opposite. That's oh my god, bro! That's ruthless. What? Oh, that's crazy. That's a wild way to start this video, bro. That's a wild. That is savagery. That is unacceptable. Why would you do him like that? <laughs> a violation. What the fuck? Yeah, this guy hates him. This guy has to hate him. See, even his haters re recognize his greatness, though. He's, like, getting better. When LeBron James burst on the scene being claimed as the chosen one because of his raw ability in high school, this is also when he sported one of the craziest hairstyles of his career. At St. Vincent... 
Oh my God. I don't remember that. What the fuck? Bro, bro. Okay. He was destined to be bald straight up. He was destined to be bald. You can kind of tell. At St. Vincent St. Mary, LeBron put up averages of 29 points, 8 rebounds, and 5 assists per game, all while capturing state titles and winning awards like Mr. Ohio Basketball and being featured on the cover of Slam Magazine. But little do many know, Kobe Bryant is the one who had the most influence on not only his play, but also his hair during this time. And LeBron recently talked about this and said, I want to be just like it, man. In high school, I wore a nappy afro because of Kobe Bryant. I always said my inspiration came from Jordan, but I always thought Jordan was so out of this world I could never get there. Kobe was someone that I just always kind of wanted to be like and play like. LeBron also during this time had a promising football career in high school where he repped his unique hairstyles as well. Once his afro began to grow uncontrollably, he began to be uncomfortable in his helmet, so he decided to get cornrows. Shortly before LeBron was drafted with the first pick in the 2003 NBA draft, he decided to get it cut short and look nice and sharp. Yeah, now he's past Jordan, and also he should pull a Jordan and fucking go bald, bro. That's it. For draft night. By the time LeBron was pictured in his all-white suit, he had a short fade, which was so much better than any of his previous hairstyles. The beginning of LeBron's career was filled with criticism and doubt, but by that time, his hairline was still fully intact and thriving. This was also the beginning of the headband era for LeBron, which still to this day he whips out on occasion. A few years had gone by since draft night and people started to realize that LeBron's hair was slowly disappearing and even <laughs> speculated that he used the headband. <laughs> That's so fucked up. Bro, 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 or no, bro, or no, bro. God damn, son, chill. Band to cover his hairline up. Most of LeBron's bad hairline years in Cleveland were outsigned by the number. Bro, this is a hit piece. Why are we watching the LeBron hit piece? Numbers and success he was having as an individual. But as the years progressed and his hairline started to shift back, the hair comments began to pour in. By the time LeBron was making his decision to take his talents to South Beach, he went live on air to tell the world his decision. And there he couldn't hide his hair with a headband. So the world got to see just how far back it was pushed. The hairline criticism came again, but was quickly. Okay, no, this is, this literally is, this, this is a hate crime. What he's doing is a hate crime. This is the most hateful, spiteful person. Clearly starting off like, oh yeah, I love LeBron. He's the go. But like, so obvious. He brings up the decision and says the worst aspect of the decision is that he couldn't hide his hairline with his fucking headband. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God, dude. That was crazy. Outsigned by the unstoppable force that was the big three in Miami. For nearly 12 seasons and more than 1,000 consecutive games, LeBron James was rarely ever seen on the court with a headband. During game six of the 2003 NBA Finals, LeBron's headband was knocked off, no! and he proceeded to take over at a must-win game, finishing with a triple-double. This triggered something in LeBron, and he went without a headband for a while, eventually revealing why he stopped using it, saying, I did it because I wanted to look like my teammates. Just wanted to be one. Nothing more than that. Over the course of his time in Miami, his hair only declined, and many people felt that his hairline was receding due to the stress of constant criticism, no matter what he accomplished. After shocking the world again by heading back to Cleveland in 2014, his hairline began to reach the top of his head, which seemed to suggest that LeBron was going ball soon. But just a month after everyone assumed it was the downfall of his hair, he was introducing his new LeBron Nike 12s, when his hair appeared to magically be back in great condition. Yeah, this has got to be like a Cleveland fan, maybe. I, I don't know. It's just all of this brings us to the topic of hair plugs and cosmetic assistance, which LeBron got from a hair specialist to make his hair look normal again. At a certain point, LeBron's hair looked more perfect than it ever was, and everyone began to catch on to the fact that some of his hair was fake. In May of 2017, LeBron was in an interview when he was talking about his hair and said, I didn't go bald like Mike, but I'm getting there. LeBron saying this got a reaction, but the funniest part was Tristan Thompson's reaction in the background, which pretty much said, yes, you are bald, written all over his face. In more recent years, LeBron has battled man. with his hair and it seems to go back and forth between good and bad. But the recent news is that LeBron was getting professional hair plugs to make up for balding on the top of his head. At the beginning of the 2019 season, 
LeBron apparently had hair plugs and other hair surgeries to repair his lost hair. And in late October during a game between the Lakers and Jazz in Staples Center, his hair started to fall out mid-game underneath the new headband he was sporting at the time. Late in the game while the Lakers were shooting free throws, you could see Anthony Davis yell something to LeBron from the bench and then eventually pointed at his head, trying to get LeBron to notice without making a scene. But everybody saw and everybody knew what this was about immediately. Bro, chill out. This is, bro, this is fucked up. This is so unimaginably, unimaginably fucked up. What he, this is abusive, dude. It's, it's mean. It's so mean. Unibrow man talking shit, lol. No, he's just trying to save his ass, to be honest. And as LeBron got the hint and tried to fix the hair, the camera zoomed up right on his head with his hair looking completely messed up. Ever since this happened during the season, LeBron has rarely come out with a headband on again and has just embraced what he's become here in his later years. LeBron's barber Nick Castamanos joined the discussion during an interview at Yahoo Sports. I genuinely don't understand why LeBron doesn't go full bald though. Like he would look sick. He would look so cool. He would be the goat at being bald and defended his client saying there is no dye no additives no preservatives oh my god i can't believe he just leaked it he said he means there is a dye there are additives and there are preservatives he's hitting it with he's doing i bet he's doing kaya quiet i bet he's doing oh my god i bet he's doing the the fucking pepper technique you know how they like do the powder Maybe I maybe my Instagram algo is like kind of busted, but I see that shit all the time on Instagram, like all the time where they'll be like, they put like powder. It's like black powder. You guys must have seen it. Wait, does anyone have? Oh my God. Where is it? Where is it? Let's see. It's like, um, I'm sure, I'm sure there's like a, like a quick video that I can show you. It's like makeup, but for your hair. Yeah. It's not an ad. It's not an ad. It's like a bit. I mean, I guess it's not a bit. No, my mama, she raised me better okay, than that. Okay, I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> oh, my bad. I'm so sorry, bro. My bad, man. So, what you about to get in? It's like that. Yes, it is a powder. So, I found the closest thing to hair in a can, and we're going to try it out today. It's this, like, powder oh. thing with a bunch of hair follicles in it. Hair oh. oh, man, I should have gave you all a hairline warning. Yikes. Okay, here we go. We're just going to sprinkle it on. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. What the fuck? Oh shit. Hey yo, wait, wait. Oh uh, yeah, put it all up on there. Yo, what? Oh my gosh. Told you. This is crazy. This is what I was talking about. Maybe LeBron's doing that. I feel like that's what he's doing. That's what his barber's Everyone doing. thinks he's dying his hair using temporary <laughs> hair colorings like Bijan or black ice. It's all his hair. They still don't believe me. I get Bijan comments all the time. LeBron is very tedious about how his hair is cut. The beard is the number one thing. He leaves the top up to me. I leave him less bald. He's my guy. He's my hardest haircut. He has good hair. You have to cut it right. He just has a few fat patches around the chin that you have to take your time with. You have to have patience. It usually takes about 50 minutes. Rob Hoffman, who's the president of the Hairline Clinic in Akron, spoke about the work he was going to do with LeBron's hair a few years ago when Hoffman said, he definitely has more hair, there's no question. The question is how he got it. By 30 years old, 30% of men have lost their hair. By 60, 60% 60 are bald. We go in and we take each hair follicle out one at a time. There's some people who go bald and it doesn't bother them. But if it does, don't be afraid to come in. Your whole world changes and it's something people shouldn't make fun of. People should think twice before they do that. Longtime friend and teammate Dwayne Wade even chimed in on the hair discussion, but this time clowning him rather than being on his side. Wade poked at LeBron during an Instagram live video asking Bron why he doesn't have hair during the- He said, take off that damn wave cape, you ain't got no hair? That's so fake, dude. God damn. That's so- Dude, dude, I never believed the magic until I saw my dogs turn into snakes. That's crazy. That's crazy, bro. Wow. Wow. In the workout, during another video, LeBron puts the camera on Wade and says how fair it is that he can grow hair perfectly with a solid hairline. Another one of LeBron's longtime teammates, J.R. Smith, claims that LeBron just can't have everything 
and spoke with Devin Friedman from GQ about LeBron's hairline. Smith said, I tell him you can't have huh. everything. I tell him all the time, you can't have it all. <laughs> you have to give up one J.R. Smith gave up everything. <laughs> one thing, and it just so happened it's your hair. If someone told me I'm going to give you $600 million, but I'm going to take your hair, take my hair. Over the course of more than a decade, LeBron has had to deal with the hair critics. J.R. Smith, the greatest contested shooter of all time. So as of recently, he has started to embrace it. In 2019, LeBron found a video of himself dunking as a 16-year-old, and he quoted the tweet saying, Young King on a mission and haven't stopped. P.S. Can't believe my hair decided to go Casper on me like this, though. Ghost. If you've enjoyed this video, then we're sure. <laughs> what is this? Bro, what is this channel, bro? Hey, guys. Today what is this channel bro what is going on with this channel disgusting okay i hated that video not the basketball players you won't believe exist one it's the it's the, the lebron one that fucked me up what watch this look how his current teammates make fun of lebron's hairline <laughs> who is that oh wow who is this uh who is that <laughs> okay somebody dark skin this guy is very very dark skin Screaming. I see some hearts. Looks like we got wristbands on there. Ah, uh, and the white right there is his shooting sleeve. I see a basket. I think the shoes are red. Wait, is that a tattoo? And I'm gonna go brown. Rui or Vando? Is this me? I'm going with LeBron. I have no idea who this is. Awesome. Good job, kid. <laughs> oh, yes, it's LeBron. Perfect. That's pretty good, yeah. I can see that. I can see that. Oh, my God. That is me. He's kind of going, like, ball right there, and I kind of see the This dude is sick, bro. God, I'm such a weeb. I can see that. That is me. He's kind of going, like, ball right there, and I kind of see the resemblance. So that's what really gave it away. Oh, my God. That is my hair. Oh, that is not right. Everything else <laughs> is tough, but the hair, right away. <laughs> Yo, chill. I met Rui out in LA once. He was actually the coolest guy. Yeah, of course he's the coolest guy, bro. He's fucking Japanese. He's so sick. I know I'm losing my. He's hair, got bro. it all, dude. He's playing. He's playing for the Lakers, and he's he's got Japanese citizenship. But damn, they didn't have to have me looking like Homer Simpson. Yeah, I love that. This is like Picasso's work right here. You did a phenomenal job. You really hit it with the hair. Bring this. Up. That's crazy, bro. The disrespect. The fucking disrespect. Okay, I can't do this. Bro, when the guy with the fucking unibrow is clowning on your hairline, you should you should know better. Come on, bro. Come on. Look at this. Look at your face, bro. Really? 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 He's like, oh yeah, his hair. Oh yeah. Well, come on. That's crazy. That's crazy. The disrespect is insane. Bro, how about you give some of your fucking unibrow to LeBron so we can fix his goddamn hairline, fake friend? You got enough of it up there? Give him some of it right now. Fix up both of you guys' problems. Anyway, frustrating to see. Why did you guys show me this? I'm distressed. Why did you show me this? I'm now distressed, officially. You have distressed me. The vibes were immaculate. The vibes were immaculate, and now I'm thinking about LeBron's hairline and what has become of his hairline and how his teammates, who he carries, are, are making fun of him. The audacity, the disrespect. I, I, the vibes were immaculate until... Wow. The vibes were immaculate until I started thinking about what people do to the goat behind his back and maybe even in front of his face. That's really fucked up. Okay. Anyway, uh, gamers need to be... <laughs> gamers need to be lobotomized okay that's all i'm gonna say about this i couldn't resist i had to fix this happy birthday alloy like I, I don't know what to say about any of this beyond the fact that like i hope people recognize how objectively creepy and weird this is another day another man embarrassed himself bro watermark this <laughs> you've never felt the touch of a woman yo when the account is so crazy that blue check marks are making fun of him Except for this guy, whose name is MiddleMaga.com, who said, BASED! I just, I don't know. These guys need, uh, these, not, these guys need to be sedated. That's what they need. All right, quick update on Israel, Iran Watch. Uh, we're going to be doing that right now, okay? Uh, before we get to some fun shit. Before we get to some fun shit and fun day stuff. 
uh, banana peels, meme reviews. We got it all. Oh my God. Costumes do this for Brett. Like Game of Thrones, Olivia Munn and X-Men. Why not butts? Wait, what? Costumes do this for breasts? What? Are you trying to defend the dude who's like artificially boosting booty cheeks? Like what? I showed you one with the breast disease too. I, just, I still think it's like weird. It's weirdo behavior, bro. It's fucking weirdo behavior. Yeah, we saw what LeBron was doing in <laughs> chatter. We already watched LeBron fucking with the finisher. Okay, don't worry. 39 years old, the GOAT. That's how the conversation originally started. And then everyone was like, everyone saw a 39-year-old man go from coast to coast and yam it down, okay? And literally had to fucking bring him down. This is literally like my haters. You know how my haters will see me thriving, having a fun time, moisturized, not a care in the fucking world, you know what I mean? And then they'll be like, let's fuck his day up. That's exactly... That's exactly what they did to LeBron. They saw a 39-year-old man absolutely fucking clamp down, and then they turn around and were like, let's talk about his hairline. Let's talk about how Anthony Davis is disrespecting him. He should know his place. He should respect his elders. You know what I mean? LeBron paved the way. But it's just, you know, it's just that's how we started the conversation. Anyway, Elant News doing self-promo in the chat. This is where the you know, gamers discourse is coming from. This video is going insane right now. I hate this world. I mean, it's only got like 300k views in two days, which is pretty solid. Why modern gaming sucks? Ugly characters everywhere. Oh, God. Is he going to say, well, like, is he going to talk monsters. about Clementine? You're calling LeBron old? I mean, he's 39 years old, guys. He's the GOAT. But also, you know, it's he's stretching it. You know, one of the best things about video games is that they allow us to transcend the petty limitations of the real world, creating fantastical landscapes that defy logic, terrifying landscape. monsters, awe-inspiring wonders, and iconic characters bound only by the limitations of the human imagination. It truly is the very purest form of creativity. Unless, of course, you happen to be a Western game developer, in which case your escapist fantasy entertainment absolutely has to reflect the world we live in today the world we live in today i love this because it's like <laughs> guys like this i i would love to see what this dude looks like but guys like this when they make videos like this when they make video essays like this are just white knuckling through it like i can hear him clenching his fucking jaw throughout the entire process like he is so mad bro it's like oh games today yeah, you don't see characters you'd want to clank to like games back in the day. I'm E. Fartlaw and I love Israel. Wait, Piers Morgan? He went on Piers Morgan? Which one is it? Which one is it? Is it this one? Oh my God. I cannot believe it. Which one is that? Is it this one with a Batman logo on the back? Or is it this one here? Which one is that? It's the fourth one. Oh, this guy? You'd make a great Shrek big bro. Thank you. Bro, just divorced dad vibes on lock, dude. Respect. He definitely doesn't... He, I, I expect him to be much fatter, I will admit. Okay? I expected him to be much fatter. If you... I, I, I have to come clean. I thought he was going to look like quarter chicken pounder McNuggets. Okay? Like, I, I, I thought he was going to be another quarter pounder type. Okay, at least the dude does uh, shape up his beard and shit. And this is your greatest moment. I can't hear your first Oscar. As a pro, as a pro, you're drunk taking. Oh, yeah. I mean, Robert's trying to laugh, laugh it off there, and hopefully they were going to move on quickly. But it's probably just another example of Jimmy falling on his arse as a comedian and falling on his arse. He looks like Sargon off Ozempic. Yeah. Anyway, um, regardless though, regardless though, it is really fucking bent so out of shape about how he kind of how he kind of jerk off to the fucking character is no longer it's bullshit i kind of jerk off to the spider pussy fuck world we live the in world today. we live the in world today. we live in today you've probably noticed that there's been a bit of a shift in the portrayal of video game characters in recent years particularly the female ones a process that probably has a far more technical name but which a simple man like myself can best describe as 
uglification. It's like gaming is somehow de-evolving even as technology and production costs rise to astronomical levels, producing characters that look less human and more physically repulsive with each new release. Bro doesn't go outside and see real women in the wild like I don't know if he knows this, but like women look like this too. You know what I mean? Like women have the capability of looking like this. No, no lassie is gonna have a higher muscle mass than me, the critical drinker. I kind of jerk out the Abbey. And when I do, I get weird feelings. A ruined and terrible form of life. I mean, Jesus, look at the state of it. I don't think anyone wants to go on an adventure with this girl. <coughs> a quick glance at your average AAA development page is like taking a walk down your average high street in Scotland. The face- Wait, what? Th that's a real person, bro. Why is he- what? I think some of these people- Okay, these are just non-white people. You just posted a collage of- Mostly non-white people. What the fuck's going vaguely on? Correspond to your understanding of what human beings look like, but the features, proportions, and arrangements are so far off that you're left with a disturbingly intense urge to get out of there as quickly as possible and never look back. And it's interesting to note that this phenomenon seems to be confined to one half of the population only, almost like it's intention. The males are fucking hot still. Why the fuck are the males jerk offable? I found myself cranking a Spider-Man rather than Mary Jane. Why? <laughs> Only the females are no longer crankable. <laughs> oh my god. Bro, really just outing himself about the fact that he has never seen, let alone talked to a woman. I I don't understand why this is a, a major deal. I, I don't. Please stop commenting on people's appearance. Love you to death, but there's nothing wrong with being fat. I don't want to be a rad lib. I just want to be empathetic. Please stop. Take a week off. Sheltered Rosebud. Thank you. Thank you for coming to the show. Once again, missing the point and then getting mad at me. I am not making fun of people for being fat. I am actually quite literally talking about someone losing their minds over characters looking more realistic. And you didn't understand the point, And you instead came at me and made it you know, everyone else's problem that you misunderstood the point I was making. Uh, but take a week off from chatting and uh, we'll, we'll be excited to see you uh, in the next seven days. Intentional <laughs> or something. The problem seems to have been bubbling away for a while now, but like an explosive diuretic. You expect this guy to be fatter? They didn't misunderstand anything? If that's what you're hyper-focusing on in this entire process, I said I thought he was going to be unkempt, kind of similar to a quarter pounder. And he is definitely in better shape than I suspected him to be. The average gaming archetype. Far, it could only be held back for so long before it made its violent entry into the world, destroying a pair of your best Calvin Kleins in the process. And the explosive release finally came with the advent of the Sweet Baby debacle, which has shed light on a lot of things that Western game developers probably would have rather kept secret. But there it is, all the same, <sighs> and now that it's out there, it's fair game for people like me to comment on. So just like on my main channel, where I talked about the problems blighting modern Hollywood movies, I figured I'd make a video series here about why modern gaming sucks. And truly, where better to start with any good book than the cover? Par yeah. Modern gaming sucks because everyone is not crankable. <laughs> I can't crank to the fucking characters. That's why Elden Ring was a phenomenal video game. I jerked off the Mekala ten times. You understand me? Ten fucking times I jerked off to the Blade of Mekala. I thought to myself, what a fucking looker. Right? <laughs> This guy, this guy literally ranks games on how hard he can jerk off to the characters. It's crazy. I love the rot. I need this scarlet rot on my penis. Part one, everyone's fucking ugly. Now, rather than just point and laugh at how ugly characters have become in recent years, let's see if we can break this one down scientifically. And that being the case, the first major problem seems to be a general rejection of femininity and female beauty in modern game development. A perfect example of this is the character model for MJ in the two Spider-Man games. This it's is a really funny, this is a very funny thing to get mad at because like, isn't this a real person who also is attractive? Like... She's 
you just don't find her attractive, I guess. So now you're mad about, like, they didn't, like, uglify her or anything. He's mad Spider-Man is hotter. <laughs> dude, dude, I love the, the men's right activists, like, unironically, openly demonstrating that they just, like, they want, um, they, they just... They just don't like women in general. You know what I mean? They're, they're literally just like, I, I don't like women. I just hate women in general. I don't even want to see them in my video games. And if I do see them in my video games, they, I just want to see ass and titties like nothing else. ...character in the same game series made by the same dev studio, but with a radically different appearance in each one. In the first game, you can quite clearly see the facial model has all the traits commonly associated with traditional femininity. Rounded facial structure, full lips, large eyes and a small nose. Now compare it to MJ in the second game, and well, I think you can spot the differences. This version has a Wait. ...facial model has all the traits commonly associated- Bro, doing phrenology to a fucking video game character is awesome. This is mental illness. By the way, this, this is literally just mental illness. Like, like taking a snapshot, taking a snapshot of like the character in the, the character in the first game versus the second game from a different angle and being like, look at that 33% different. And that 33% difference causes me to jerk off way less to the MJ. I don't like it. I kind of jerk off. Associated with traditional femininity, <laughs> rounded facial structure, full lips, large eyes and a small nose. Now compare it to MJ in the second game, and well, I think you can spot the differences. <laughs> this version has a large prominent chin, a wider and stronger jawline, thinner lips, heavier eyebrows and eyes that are proportionally smaller because the rest of her face is now bigger. Didn't they just get better at mo-capping? Like from the first game onwards to now? like. It's the same woman, isn't it? I don't, I don't know. Nah, they fucked up. They fucked MJ up in the second one. Bro, it's just, guys, it's a real person. It's the same person. Just the graphics are better. It's like getting mad when, when HDTVs first started coming out and, and like makeup wasn't changed. Like when we, when we got like higher definition and people just like kind of looked weird at first. And, and ever it's like in that process, being upset at, it would be like being upset at, uh, woke TV producers or something, bro. Switch from talking about positions, the gaming contents. Wait, what do you mean? What positions? In short, she's got a far more masculine appearance than before. Interesting. Or how about Aloy from the Horizon Games, a series that I actually quite enjoy. You can see in the image on the left how she looks. Yeah, did you enjoy it? Looked in the original game, not hyper feminine by any stretch because she's trying to survive in a primitive post apocalyptic world where cosmetics aren't exactly easy to come by, but still she's recognizably female with the softer facial structure typically associated with women. The image on the right, on the other hand, is so masculine that if you were to give her some facial hair, you'd basically be left with a man. And a handsome man at that. Same deal with the main character from Star Wars Outlaws, prominent. Bro's just gay, I think. <laughs> no disrespect. I just, uh, like... <laughs> Chin that would make even Sergeant Slaughter jealous. A wide, strong jawline, thin lips and small eyes. Jesus, it's like these characters all rolled off the same bland assembly line. It's even more perplexing when you see what her actress looks like. I could go on and on with this stuff all day, but you get the basic idea. The real question, though, is why? Why are Western developers so against- Classic. The Lara Croft titties discourse, bro. It's not, it's like 2008. It's the idea of femininity and female beauty in games. I mean, if I was a cynical man, I might suggest that most- St Stephanie Tyler, the face model for MJ in Marvel Spider-Man games, left the video game industry because of the harassment from fans, if I'm not mistaken, it's so fucked up. I remember her talking about like getting literal death threats over it, right? Am I, am I remembering this correctly? I'm pretty sure she was like- yeah, face, uh, Spider-Man 2 MJ face model addresses harassment from players. I appreciate the love for my role in the Spider-Man games and the positive responses to my version of MJ has gotten over the years. However, I'm no longer an actively auditioning actor or model. The shoots I do now are purely creative outlet for myself and a way to collaborate with friends I love. Over the weekend, some followers crossed boundaries 
One even went to the extent of calling my workplace and leaving multiple voicemails wanting to speak with me and requesting I call back, which is unacceptable to consider stalking. My skincare page is not for Spider-Man or MJ fans. Bottom line is that I came into work this morning and immediately felt unsafe and uncomfortable hearing those voicemails. Please respect that. I am a human being trying to make a living just like you, and I kindly ask for boundaries not to be crossed. Messages will not be answered. I will block you if you make me feel uncomfortable, and you can unfollow me if this disappoints you. Thank you. What? Oh, my God. While we're in the midst of this breaking, Iran launches attack against Israel using dozens of drones for four U.S. and Israeli officials told me. Oh, no. It's happening now. No, while we're in the middle of this gaming discourse, come on, bro. Yo, I hit up the fucking Ayatollah. I was like, bro, chill. Dial it back. Don't do it yet. It's fun day. That's what I said. I said it's fucking fun day. They literally just got better at not flattening women's features to stop them from all looking the same. It's insane. They've got, they have the soft and slash sharp and certain features in post and they stop being as heavy handed all the time. And that's all they did. That's why they're mad. Iran be watching Hasanabi and attacks for clout? Yeah, it's fucked up. And it means tomorrow no gaming again? Mainstream news is not covering it yet? Yeah, because they're fucking not going to cover it. And I mean, they're we are faster than mainstream news on this sort of stuff because we're getting it directly as it in real time as it happens. I'm sure they'll... It just happened like three minutes ago, chat. That's why. Anyway, um, I'll finish this fucking video game sequence and then we'll get to World War Three. Game studios are infested with jealous, physically repulsive land whales who can't stand to be reminded that they've broken more mirrors than Conan the Barbarian. Physically repulsive land whales. <laughs> But let's go a little bit deeper than that. It's definitely not a technology problem, that's for sure. Games have been capable of rendering accurate facial scans of real actors for decades at this point. I mean, look at Julia Voth from the Resident Evil remake. That game's more than 20 years old now and the resemblance is uncanny. Or Ellen Page in Beyond Two Souls, which came out in 2013. Or Hayden Panettiere from Until Dawn from 2015. Or Keanu Reeves from Cyberpunk. No, he literally is just saying, he literally is just saying that, like, he doesn't, like, these are the people that he finds hot, and some of the people he doesn't find hot are, are in video games. That's it. And as for today, well, all you need to do is take a look at games like Final Fantasy Rebirth or Stellar Blade to see that we're more than capable of rendering beautiful characters on screen. No, the issue here is a creative one. But why exactly? Well, yeah, that's... That I mean, he's not wrong. Yes, game developers are making the active choice to feature more realistic looking women in their games, some of which are also still attractive, but you don't find them attractive. Others are not in fucking makeup because they're in a war zone. You're just like, like you literally are using this as an example, by the way, a great game, like, you know, fun and, and sexy. And that's awesome. I have no issues with this, but it is so fucking strange it is so strange bro this guy's just been promoting this one fucking dude so much shut up yeah there's always been ugly dudes in video games too i don't see him fucking crying about that maybe it feels like it's because he only wants uh the women's role in video games to be one of like uh sex appeal i suspect that is the major issue here is that if women appear in video games they have to be sexy if they are not sexy, then they do have no role in the video game itself. They have to be eye candy. Yeah, I mean, my gaming channel just posted Stellar Blade Killed Wokeness three hours ago. What the f Her oh, body God. proportions are crazy. That's a... Well, there seems to be this weird assumption that gamers can or won't take a female character seriously if they find them physically attractive, so the only solution is to reduce or remove any element of attractiveness and sensuality. Name an ugly man who's a main character in a video game then? Literally any RPG where you can make your own custom built character, you can make them ugly if you would like. Mario, Nico Bellic, Shrek, Duke Nukem, Disco Elysium. Thank you, chatters. Kratos isn't exactly a looker himself. I guess he's like every single man in every single Far Cry. Dude, do you guys just not like gaming? Is that what it is? I think a lot of quote-unquote gamers, one, hate women, and two, hate video games. It is the vibe I'm getting. 
legitimately, I think a lot of these dudes just, one, don't like women. They want them to look like hentai characters. And if they don't look like hentai characters, then it's not good. And also, they just don't like games in general either. Because how can you fucking say there are no unattractive men in video games? Like, that's such a fucking stupid... That's such a stupid take. You just... It's so strange, bro. It, it is so... It's such an odd take to have that you can only arrive at that take unless you think like, I guess, either A, you think all men are beautiful unconditionally, okay? And no women are beautiful unless they fit my expectations, like these incredibly unrealistic body standards or whatever. Or B, you just don't play video games and you haven't realized that there are plenty of fucking dudes that don't really look that hot that are main characters in many video games. <sighs> Maybe a bit of column A, column B, Gears of War, another great one. Exactly. Video game men all look like Mike Isretel. That's such a good line. You're right. Gears of War, especially. It is kind of funny. Can you imagine? Dude, 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 dude. Imagine like, um, we're going to get to Israel in a second. I want to finish this, but it's like, it's like, imagine if women were like, oh, it's really fucked up that Gears of War would have been a much better game if they actually made the main character a little bit hotter and not look like such a fucking juice monkey, like a roided out Ninja Turtle looking guy. I wanted to fuck the main character, but unfortunately he looked like Fred Durst with uh, a, a, a steady, healthy diet of Trenbolone and Anivar. Really fucked up. Why can't he look like my sexy twinks from Final Fantasy? There you go, ladies. One of you can make that now. That's a, that's a free TikTok for you. That's a banger TikTok. You get a million fucking views on that easy. Why is the main character in Gears of War looking like a goddamn Ninja Turtle? I don't want to suck his dick at all. It's really fucked up. They should be looking like, they should be looking like a K-pop idol. Peak male character design. That's what I'm talking about, dude. Duality, producing bland, ugly, unappealing models that nobody wants to look at. For me, this is a deeply flawed premise on two levels. One, because characters like Lara Croft, Ada Wong, Jill Valentine, Tifa Lockhart and Aerith Gainsborough are all conventionally beautiful, but they've all stood the test of time as well because they were more than just their physical appearance. They were all genuinely interesting characters that people liked and identified with. Their Lara Croft? What genuinely interesting character did Lara Croft bring to the table? What? Bro, I played the original fucking Tomb Raiders. What the hell do you mean? Like, that's a, that's a, okay. Yeah, genuinely interesting, bro. Beauty You're right. didn't undermine that, it enhanced it. The second reason is, well, down to simple human nature. We as people generally- Like, these are genuinely interesting characters, and they're hot, okay? These are legitimately interesting characters who also happen to be sexy, okay? That's it. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, you can say that they are genuinely interesting characters. You can't say that about fucking Lara Croft. They prefer to look at physically attractive individuals. We instinctively seek out beauty, we're drawn to it, and we enjoy being around it. Why do you think so many Hollywood actors or models or pop stars are conventionally good looking? It's, it's also, again, Yes, a lot of people in Hollywood are more attractive than the average person, even though beauty is in the eye of the beholder. There are still a shit ton of actors, celebrated actors, phenomenally accomplished actors, method actors, who aren't exactly hot. Not every fucking actor is Chris Hemsworth, dude. That's so strange. That is such a fucking strange thing to say in general. He tagged me in this? That's such a dumbass. It's the same reason we don't go to art galleries to look at children's finger paintings. We want to experience something higher and better, something aspirational. That's an awesome fucking take. He also compared, like, first of all, you've never been to an art gallery. If you understood art even a little bit, you would recognize that artistic choices being made by game developers to make more realistic looking uh, characters in general is simply that, an artistic choice that they've made that you're mad. You literally are demanding the finger painting level of artistic interpretation from video games by being like, what kind of jerk off to the fucking game characters that aren't real? I need my art to have major titties. I need it. 
I fucking need it. Also, there's plenty of fucking modern art that looks like finger paintings, but I'm sure this guy also fucking feels that way, uh, that they're bad too, so. You know, I know that's a tough pill to swallow, but there it is. The truth of the matter is that nobody enjoys looking at ugly people. Yeah, we know that most of us don't look like Chris Hemsworth or Sidney Sweeney, and that's okay. We know we'll never have a body like Chris Redfield or Lara Croft, and that's okay too. Why? Because we're not narcissists. Dude, the fact that he keeps fucking saying, uh, a body like Lara Croft and showing Lara Croft, like, is he trolling? I can't understand it. I can't tell if he's trolling or if he's being fucking serious. Like, the, the Lara Croft thing is, like, weird. Narcissistic idiots who need to see ourselves reflected in everything that we see and do, or have all our hang-ups and insecurities validated by pulling everyone down to our level. Believe it or not, human beings are a lot more mature and resilient than that. The other thing that strikes me is that a lot of the shitty modern tropes from Hollywood are starting to spill over into the video game industry, particularly when it comes to blurring the lines between men and women. Male characters Characters in movies and TV shows today are often depicted as neurotic, insecure, emotionally fragile, cowardly, verbose and self-deprecating, generally lacking in agency or the ability to assert themselves in any particular situation. <sighs> Women on the other hand are now written to be stoic, confident, assertive, arrogant and aggressive, which are the same exact traits that were once considered toxic in men. They're basically trying to turn- Dude, these guys- okay, you can't have- you can't have a- a normal conversation with a dude who believes these things objectively like like women having normal emotions and men having normal emotions that weren't heavily weren't heavily showcased in the past because of one dimensional writing is not a bad thing okay an example of this would be like the highs and lows of even joel right like you're you're just upset that characters are not one dimensional anymore that's all this is offering whatever kind of traits that you ascribe only to men to women and offering whatever kind of traits you only ascribe to uh, women to men technically is moving beyond the the shitty uh, one dimensional writing. That's it. Like, I, I genuinely think a lot of these older guys, this dude is like, what, in his 40s or something? I think a lot of these older people, they just don't get the same enjoyment that they once got with their childlike wonder from video games. And that's where this comes from. Like they're looking desperately. Uh, I feel like a lot of these guys basically look at anything and everything they can point to, to say like, why have I lost the same uh, enjoyment that I once got from video games? Why do I no longer derive that same level of enjoyment out of video games that I once did when I was a child? And I think that's what this is. No, it's not porn addiction. It's just like misogyny paired up with an inability to enjoy games nowadays. That's it. Like, sure, a big part of the problem with the gaming industry in general is a consequence of capitalism, right? All of these major publishers have like sucked up every developer and they're churning out the same IP over and over and over again. And they're basically just like juggling IP and trying to make as much money as possible with um without taking crazy initiatives without uh truly running wild with their uh with their art okay it has become a major industry larger than hollywood in general and this is a byproduct of that but beyond that there are still phenomenal games being made phenomenal games with ugly ass male characters ugly female characters and sexy ass male and female characters who gives a shit you just uh, are upset by the fact that it is not as one note as it once was. Hassan, this is not important. Iran confirmation. Guys, there is literally three more minutes left in this. I know that the drones are headed in the direction of Israel. I am familiar. I know what's going on. I'm going to get to it in a fucking second. Please calm the fuck down. Turn them into men, or at least a warped parody of what they think masculine behavior is, and I think that mentality is bleeding into gaming I have now the as, well. Interview as well. Female characters are being redesigned to look more and more like men, because game studios incorrectly associate masculinity with strength and femininity with weakness, rather than seeing both as just being different paths to the same destination. They desperately want to create tough, independent, empowered women, because let's face it, that's pretty much the only 
only kind of characters they're allowed to write now, and because they lack the skill and imagination to construct interesting characters with actual feminine characteristics, their only solution is to churn out women who look, talk and act like the toxic men they despise so much. Oh my it's god. It's actually kind of funny when you think about it. Their own flawed worldview creates- This is why it's hard. This is why it's fucking, uh, uh, this is why you can never get these guys to tell you like a positive example of like some someone doing it right. Or the only positive example that he can fucking show is like Lara Croft. And not even like new Lara Croft, but like old Lara Croft with like the triangle titties. It's just like, that's really, that's your, it, that's it. That's peak women writing for you. Just jerk off before you make a video like this, man. It'll save everyone the trouble created a problem that they can only solve by replicating the same exact problem that they created in the first place. SON OF A- Fucking genius. And the thing is, who is any of this supposed to appeal to? Men certainly don't like it, because seeing their favourite characters turned into the Giga Chad meme to score social media points and court an audience that doesn't exist is irritating and depressing. Women don't seem to- The funniest part is that like a lot of these- a lot of these video games are also making a shit ton of money too. So he's objectively wrong. It's just that, like, it doesn't appeal to his sensibilities and the sensibilities of a bunch of older divorced dad gamers who don't derive the same satisfaction from playing video games nowadays. So they just keep chirping and chirping. And there's a big audience for it, like a big enough audience for it, rather, on one side of the internet. But overall, the video game industry is expanding like crazy, right? And they just cannot cope with that reality. Like, you can't cope with the top of the hour ad break coming in right now. You're worried about the fucking drone strikes on Israel. You should be worrying about the top of the hour ad break and how you can avoid that top of the hour ad break, which is, of course, by subscribing for $5 or for free. We're going to move on to the Iran Israel situation in a brief moment after I'm done with this video. Okay? Care much for it either because I'm willing to bet that not many of them aspire to look like this or this or this. Female gamers aren't gonna feel sad and excluded just because they've seen Ada Wong killing monsters while executing- Like that's- you just made up a thing. You just made up a, a, a problem, which is that like, there are more realistic looking uh, women in video games. Why is this being done? Why is this a problem? It's not a problem, but if it is a problem, why was this even- why was this action even taken? It can't be because like, uh, I don't know, Game developers want to make something more unique than the, the than the bland shit that they've been doing, right? And this is one way to, like, switch it up a little bit, okay? But it's actually because women are playing video games, which is bad, and uh, female gamers need to see, like, female gamers need to see ugly women, right? Like, female gamers need to see ugly women. It's like, no, that is, that is not the case at all. It's very stupid to make this assertion. You've just made up a problem and looked for a fake reason for why this problem exists when it's not even a fucking problem. You spent 10 minutes to tell everybody that you're kind of perverted and you have to be able to jerk off. You have to be able to jerk off to the female characters. You also did not factor in that there are plenty of uh, male characters that are not hot. Uh, and have not been hot historically, but it, didn't, it doesn't bother you at all because male characters, I guess you don't give a shit about because you don't want to jerk off to the characters when they're male. Bruv, this take is almost as bad as the vid. It is idiotic to hyper-focus on a few uh, female characters that you didn't personally find attractive, okay? Maybe I'm weird, but I'm not looking to crank one when I'm playing fucking video games. I'm not like... You know, I'm, uh, you, you need both hands when you're using the controller. You need both hands when you're using a keyboard and mouse, chatters, okay? There's a reason for that. It's because you're not supposed to be fucking jerking off while you're playing, okay? You're supposed to jerk off before or after, if you would like. Cute in a perfect backflip in a ball gown. Instead, they're gonna see a cool, awesome, beautiful woman kicking ass and doing awesome things. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I love the examples that he's using too, by the way, which, uh, again, uh, prove that there are still sexy women. There are still sexy women who are fucking, you know, prominently featured in video games. Like, it's so dumb. Just like there are sexy men. Who gives a fuck? Uh, that's the whole point of playing video games, in fact. 
They're not supposed to reflect the real world with all its tedious mundane problems and restrictions. They're supposed to represent something higher, something better, something more fun. They're supposed to represent what we aspire to be, not what we're stuck with in our day-to-day -day lives. And the more you try to fuck with that, the more you lose sight of the very purpose of your industry. And well, the more your customers are going to abandon you in favor of something better. Yeah, that's why everyone is just leaving the video game industry in droves. That's why it's like a fucking trillion dollar industry now. Because everyone is left. Yeah, there are less gamers now than ever before because uh, they don't have the triangular titties of Lara Croft. It's such a fucking idiotic take that even the dumbest, most divorced dad incel fucking video game uh, essayist has to... Like, their fan base cannot be that delusional. I do not think that even they believe that video games are uh, not as popular as they once were when the companies were just, like, uh, churning out way sexier fucking characters, I guess. Can you imagine if they just made all the characters in the Walking Dead games hot? Like, that would be so dumb and unrealistic. Yeah, it's, it's very odd. This is... These are takes that come from older gamers that, once again no longer feel the same excitement that they once did playing video games and cannot understand why and it's because maybe you've gotten too old okay and they're trying to cope with it or they're the same people that say this play the same game they play world of warcraft still or they play fucking call of duty still and then they just like chirp about all these other games that they're not even fucking playing and not even interested in they're just interested in the discourse okay that's it because like the reality of the matter is the reality of the fucking matter is that like it, the games are more diverse and in a good way too. I don't mean like diversity, diversity, DEI. I mean like just in general, games have more complex plot points, which is great. Obviously there's a lot of shit too, but ultimately um, gaming has improved so much. Yes. He literally hasn't talked about one of the most, if not the most important part of these games, the gameplay, which has improved so much in the last 20 years. Exactly. Why do you think the Stellar Blade demo made such an impact? It's because the developers were smart enough to give their customers exactly what they want. A kick-ass beautiful woman in a skin-tight bodysuit. And in turn, <laughs> gamers saw it- Bro, the way he said that, he- I think that's disgusting. You're gross. You're a gross pervert, bro. I'm sorry. Look at this. Something better. Why do you think the Stellar Blade demo made such an impact? It's because the developers were smart enough to give their customers exactly what they want. A kick-ass beautiful woman in a skin-tight bodysuit. And in- <laughs> A skin-tight woman in a kick-ass bodysuit. Skin-tight bodysuit. <laughs> he fucking- he- he- His- his, uh, Lockjaw fucking finally let in a couple pieces of spittle and drool out on that one turn gamers saw it as a giant fuck you to all the prissy sanctum i do think that people should genuinely be more embarrassed to put out videos like this like i'm serious you you need you need to be more embarrassed you need to be more fucking embarrassed to to be able to just like make a 10 minute and 33 second video just being like i kind of jerk off to the ladies on the games nowadays like, what the fuck's happening here? Funniest you need shame. What happened to shame? Killing developers that are slowly strangling Western gaming. And Western if there's one thing gaming. that gamers love doing most of all, it's saying fuck you to people who try to control and lecture them. And for now at least, Eastern developers still seem to understand that fact. That's the great thing about the free market, you see. The yeah. customer- Once again, just one answer to this, okay? Here. <laughs> Eastern developers still making sexy ass fucking characters. I can't believe it, right? I can make, I can jerk off to this lad. Let me tell you, all right? Fucking right? Thank God for the Eastern character development, right? Huh. Oh, sorry for showing you this. I know many of you are in here probably busting a fucking fat knot saying Mario. Mario, real working man. Customers can always go elsewhere, and if you don't change course pretty soon, you might just find that out to your costs. Yeah. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now. Fucking hell. I cannot believe it. All right, dude, like I said, jerk off before posting shit like this, okay? And your life will be better. Jerk off before you post shit like this, and, you know... It won't be as bad. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's tune into CNN if they're covering it or not. Uh, you, Netanyahu's warplane is out. It's in the air. 
Drones are on the way. Uh, we'll see to what happens. Israel. And and so we have a president and an administration that has tried very hard to keep this conflict from widening out. From uh, the moments that October seventh unfurled, uh, they have tried very hard to keep this conflict from becoming bigger. Uh, as you're alluding to there, uh, this really raises the risk of the conflict spilling over and getting much larger. What can President Biden and his team do right now as they both s s signify uh, that they will be standing by Israel as an ally and doing, and, and as Jake Sullivan said, ironclad support for Israel, but also trying to keep this from widening out? Sure. Well, look, it, it looks like they've been doing all the right things the last few days with regard to talking to the Israelis, I assume sharing intelligence, talking to Arab partners as well in the region. we got to keep in mind they have vested interests here, but they're doing all the same things that I did, that my colleagues did when uh, the Trump administration faced off against Iran in late 2019 and early 2020. I think it was very prudent to move destroyers uh, into the vicinity. They have very great anti-missile uh, uh, and other anti-drone capabilities that would help Israel shoot down any incoming attacks. And again, if it's cruise missiles or, uh, or drones and ballistic missiles, it's such a far distance we can see those and track those, and it'll make them easier to shoot those down. So I think a big part of it now is, if this is real, is to shoot down uh, as many, if not all, as you can. That, of course, um, you know, if there's, if there's little damage, that gives Israel... According to Elint News, we have six hours for the drones uh, go all the way over to uh, go all the way, make it all the way to Israel... Iraqi security officials have confirmed that dozens of one-way suicide drones have been detected over southern and eastern Iraq after entering via Iranian airspace and that they are heading west. Um, so let's see where this goes. Okay. Yeah, fun day is over. Uh, sorry to everybody that wanted a fun day. <sighs> Here it is. These drones will likely take many hours to reach Israel if launched from Iran. If cruise missiles are used, they are likely to be launched in the coming hours as they take a few hours to reach Israel and then ballistic missiles will be launched last if they are to be used and they take less than 10 minutes to reach Israel. Video retweeted by OSIN account. Unknown drones over Diyala governorate, Northern Baghdad. I don't know what's happening uh, there. I don't know the ver I don't know if that's a real one or not, but <sighs> will the Turkish US bases will drag Turkey into it? I mean, we'll see. Depending on how, depending on how Israel retaliates, because remember, Israel is uh, the country that bombed technically Iranian soil in Damascus in Syria by bombing the Iranian consulate compound. This was a direct violation of international law. This was a direct violation uh, and also a major escalation in this conflict. Um, it's not about Israel showing restraint. It's about what America does. It was about what America does uh, from the jump. I talked about this extensively yesterday. The fact that Joe Biden, after October 7, gave a bear hug and no red lines approach to Benjamin Netanyahu caused Israel to feel like they could do whatever the fuck they wanted and they could very easily bring Israel, uh, bring America into the conflict. Okay? And they violated numerous red lines, as you guys know, uh, both the ethnic cleansing in Gaza. But beyond that, way more uh, severe red lines that they, uh, that they violated, such as striking Beirut, Lebanon, uh, not just southern Lebanon, but straight up striking Beirut. And then another red line uh, when they struck the Iranian consulate uh, and the, um, the, the Iranian consulate compound in Syria, in Damascus. Beyond that, obviously, there were, uh, of course, locations that were uh, attacking Americans versus the Iranian proxy groups in both Syria and Iraq. That is, uh, that is the norm, just like it was the norm for Hezbollah to strike targets in northern Syria versus uh, Israel striking targets in southern Lebanon. But there were moments where Israel went above and beyond in the most belligerent fashion, likely escalating the tensions in the region and likely creating more destabilization with the hopes that they could bring the United States of America into the conflict directly. Benjamin Netanyahu's plane is already in the air, by the way. This is an amazing story by Tal Shalev. Ahead of a possible attack from Iran, Netanyahu moved over the weekend to a house, to the house of Simon Falik in Jerusalem, which according to the previous reports is a fortified bunker. Falik is a U.S. billionaire, a GOP donor, and the owner of Duty Free America. Netanyahu stayed at his house at the beginning or of the war after rockets were fired on Jerusalem. 
It's 1.13 a.m. They tweeted out a few days ago that the attack would happen at 1.12. I mean, sure. That's, uh, you know, irrelevant in my opinion. All right. And which earlier tonight updated its guidance uh, to Israeli civilians, limiting public gatherings in northern Israel as well as uh, the Israeli communities surrounding the Gaza Strip, also closing schools uh, for the coming days. But it does now appear, as we've been anticipating this potential Iranian response, that we at least now know uh, the first chapter of that response and the form that it is beginning to take. Uh, we also know that Israeli government officials in recent days have been warning that an Iranian attack from Iranian soil onto Israeli soil would result in a commensurate Israeli response, meaning an Israeli attack on Iranian soil. So uh, we will have to see how this all plays out, to what extent Israel is able to intercept those drones using its air defense capabilities. Uh, a lot of questions, but we are starting to get the beginning of the answers in terms of what exactly uh, this Iranian uh, attack, uh, what shape it is beginning to take. Yeah, what it might look like. Okay, Jeremy, stay with us. I want to go back to Mark Esper for a second because, Mark, we're kind of digesting what Jeremy is just telling us now. And I, I want to get your take on a couple of things. First of all, this uh, the fact that it's going to take several hours for these drones to get there. What does that mean in terms of being able to shoot these down, to prepare for them? Uh, what does that look like? Sure. It's, it's not difficult to shoot the drones down. Uh, you, you know, they launch dozens because some will malfunction en route. Some will get lost. You want some to make their way through. But if this is really an Iranian full-throated attack, they would phase it in. So uh, all missiles, uh, uh, so, so everything uh, hits their targets around the same time. So at some point, they would large uh, launch ballistic missiles. Uh, it's worth noting that Iran has the largest and most diverse ballistic missile force in the region. And it's probably their singularly best cap conventional capability. But they would launch ballistic missiles at some point to time... Um, uh, with the landing of the cruise missile, with the cruise missiles and drones, and that would only take a matter of minutes for ballistic missiles to get there, probably under 30. And then, um, look, if uh, they can really get their proxies on board, you'd see uh, Hezbollah in southern Lebanon launch thousands of the, what, 150,000 rocket and missile inventory they have in southern Lebanon. You'd launch all that at the same time, and the purpose would be to overwhelm Israeli air defenses so that some of the either rockets or missiles or drones or ballistic missiles will make their way through and hit their targets. But again, if that happens, I, I can't help but think you're looking at, at the beginnings of a major regional war. And, and we have to just take a beat, and, and you've said this, and we'll see how it plays out. Uh, but I think the other, the other thing that, that Jeremy mentioned was uh, that Israel had said it will respond in kind to whatever Iran ultimately does. And you can't help but realize that we're teetering right on an edge here, Mark, and that we are at this very precarious moment uh, where President Biden and his team uh, are facing what could not just become an expanding conflict, but a, an incredibly serious one that you're kind of laying out before us right now. Yeah, look, it's not unusual that, again, it, it may just be a limited attack of cruise missiles or drones at, again, an Israeli outpost or command post in the Golan Heights. Whether they hit or miss, the Iranians will privately claim victory to the Iranian people, and they'll privately convey messages to Israel and the United States that they're done, they're through, they made their point. And that'll be the end of it uh, to some degree. So, you, you know, there are a wide range of things that could happen here. And as I said earlier, this could just be one aspect of it, too. They could go after Israeli embassies abroad, um, you know, to, as another mean to kind of inflict the punishment they want. This is a country that goes eye for an eye. They're going to want to attack a like target with a like outcome. What happened is. What do you mean go for eye for an eye? It's just like that's the norm. Liners in Iran enough to establish And they haven't gone trend, eye for an eye uh, at all, as a matter of fact. If East, anything, they've been infinitely more restrained than Israel. War. Israel is the but one that has escalated over and over and so, over again. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see how they're walking this tightrope here as the uh, following hours unfold. Yeah, and let's go back to Ben Wiedemann, who is there in Beirut. Uh, ben, as we talk about the potential for this conflict to widen out, I know you've spent a lot of time there uh, in the last six months as, as the Israel-Hamas war has played out. Uh, and also, we've seen a lot of action there at that border. Uh, what do you know about, about the potential for this to widen out and, and what's happening around where you are? Well, there's real potential for this happening. Now, what we've heard from, close is very, from sources very close to Hezbollah, which of course is allied uh, with Iran, is that this is Iranian response to the Israeli strike on the Iranian consulate in Damascus 
was going to be, and now we see is strictly Iranian, that Iran's allies and proxies in the region weren't going to participate in this. It was going to be an Iranian strike. However, the same source told us that if the Israeli response escalates and that the situation deteriorates, that Hezbollah and other allies and proxies of Iran across the region will come in to support Tehran. So really, I mean, as I was saying before, this strike much anticipated the Iranian response, much anticipated. And as we're hearing from uh, Israeli military spokesmen, it's going to take hours for these drones to actually reach Israeli territory and the chances of them inflicting any serious damage are relatively small. The question is, how will Israel respond? We've heard Israeli officials say that if the attack comes from Iranian soil, Israel will respond on Iranian soil. So there's a real danger of escalation uh, now, as <clears throat> your previous guest was talking about. This is the first time Iran and Israel, or rather Iran, strikes directly at Israel. A threshold has been crossed. Now, it's up to the United States what do you mean? and others, Israel's perhaps, crossed. Israel to crossed the threshold. rein in the situation. Now, one cannot Biden help is in but the situation think room. that similar to the aftermath of the American assassination of Qasem Soleimani, the head of the Quds Force of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps in January in 2020, the Iranian response to that, the Iranians warned the Americans it was going to come, and it would appear that in this case, given all of the sort of indications we're getting, President Biden returning urgently to the White House, is that perhaps messages were passed from the Iranians to the Americans that this was coming. So there are channels of communication open uh, between Washington and Tehran, and those will be critical to avoid some sort of escalation that ends up being a regional war involving Israel, Iran, the proxies and allies of Iran, and perhaps even the United States. Jessica? And on that note, let's go out to the White House where Kevin Liptak is standing by. And Kevin, I know you just reported that the U.S. officials have officially confirmed that Iran has launched those, dry, those drones toward Israel. We know that the president has ended his weekend in Delaware, is on his way back to the White House. He is meeting with his national security team there. Uh, what more can you tell us about what they're going to be uh, doing there? Who's meeting with him in that situation room? And also, I told you, by the way, that they would stop saying this is retaliatory the moment that fucking drones were in the air. And uh, approximately 23 minutes after the drones were in the air, they've already dropped the whole pretense like why Iran did this and are reframing the narrative as Iran struck first. And you will see red lines are being crossed by Iran against Israel is the standing meta standing narrative. So quickly did it change. Yesterday, I told you yesterday that this was going to happen, and it's already happening. Apparently, what? A second drove, uh, State Link Media reports second wave of drones launched at Israel. State Link Media in Iran is reporting that a second wave of drones has been launched by the Islamic Republic at Israel. Yep. Israel has a right to defend itself is going to be the meta again. All of the principles in the American uh, national security establishment, you know, uh, Secretary of State Antony Blinken, Lloyd Austin, Jake Sullivan, all of these officials uh, arriving at the White House soon for this very high stakes meeting as these drones make their way towards their target. Now, we did know from American officials ahead of this uh, occurring that they had detected Iran moving military equipment within its territory, including drones and cruise missiles. It wasn't clear at that point whether that was a deterrent posturing or whether they actually intended to launch them from their own soil uh, into Israel or towards Israeli targets. That is now uh, becoming clearer. We also knew that the American military was repositioning its own assets in the region in part to help Israel shoot down uh, anything that was fired its way. And so as the U.S. watches in real time as these drones head towards their targets, they will certainly be hoping to, to intercept them and, and help Israel in that way. 
That has been President Biden's key message uh, over the last week as he talked about this significant attack in the offing was that American support for Israel would be ironclad despite his current differences with the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He's in, in, essentially said that that wouldn't get in the, in the way of American support for Israel in the case of, of Iranian reprisals. So certainly the U.S. watching this very closely, but also watching very closely what uh, Israel will do next. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Mark, I want to go back to you because you've been in that room. You've been in the Situation Room as a former Secretary of Defense during the Trump administration. Uh, what, is, what is that like? What are, they, what are they considering right now? And what are they watching for? Yeah, I think when they meet with the president, of course, they'll be giving the best estimates of what the, the Iranian uh, so attack cocked. line looks like, what they may be going for, anticipated battle damage assessment, things like that. Uh, of course, uh, Lloyd Austin will be speaking to his counterparts, not just in Israel, but again, Arab partners are really big here. They matter. Their views matter. They're going to be concerned about not just the Israeli response, but what uh, the United States will do. So you've got to be speaking to your Arab partners also. But then I think at some point, uh, you know, once uh, there's more clarity on what happens, the outcome on the ground, uh, talking with the Israelis, what will the U.S. do? What will the U.S. support? Will the United States uh, put more forces into the region to uh, to support Israel or to, you know, backstop U.S. forces? So we're not at that point yet. I think at, right now what they have to see is, see is what is the extent of the attack? What What's the likely damage, the outcome? Because those two things will have a big impact on how Israel thinks through a response, if any. Uh, to this, um, what looks to be an unprecedented Hezbollah Iranian attack. Hezbollah declares the start of operations against Israel. And just Israel to bring everyone in, again, in on Iraq. our breaking news, Iran has launched an attack against Israel using dozens of drones. We are told they have launched those drones from Iranian territory. It could take several hours for them to arrive at their destination. I want to go now to Clarissa Ward, who is live in Tel Aviv. Uh, Clarissa, as all of this is unfolding, what are you learning? Well, obviously, this is unprecedented and unnavigated territory. There are very high concerns about the number of different scenarios that could plausibly play out here. We have hours until we expect those drones to be entering Israeli airspace. The question becomes, will they potentially be accompanied by some kind of missile fire from Iranian proxies? Obviously, the IDF and Israeli government taking this very seriously. Schools have been closed. Gatherings of more than a thousand people have been uh, forbidden, at least until Monday. And so everybody here is sort of grappling with what exactly to expect. On the one hand, Iran very clearly telegraphing its actions. And so in that sense, it seems to be positive. They're looking for potentially a sort of Goldilocks approach, if you like, trying to retaliate without escalating into a full-on regional conflagration. Uh, at the other moment, though, of course, there are high tensions, high fears, because we are entering sort of unnavigated territory, because there are so many different possibilities as to how this could potentially shake out. And so a sense of high alert, I would also say calm, but definitely everybody watching very closely to see what will be happening in the coming hours as we anticipate the arrival of those drones. Israeli sources tell the IDF military radio that they believe that the Iranian attack on Israel will also include uh, cruise missiles, the they believe. intercepted or shot down, but the real question becomes whether there will be some sort of supplementary force as they get closer to Israel, Jessica. Right. And Clarissa, before I let you go, you've covered this region for, for many, many years. And you're talking, and we're, our other guests are also uh, alluding to this as well, kind of this unprecedented moment. Can you give us some context about what it means that Iran is launching these drones uh, toward Israel from a, a Iranian territory? Just kind of give us some context around that. Well, the context of Iran launching an attack directly on Israel from Iranian territory is something that we haven't seen in decades. And that is why you are seeing a lot of concern, a heightened state of alert, why you're seeing President Biden coming back to the White House, because everybody is aware now keenly that this could develop into something dramatically more serious. At the same time, I do think it's important to underscore that Iran has been very clear 
and has telegraphed that it will uh, meet out a retaliation for that attack on the Iranian compound, the diplomatic embassy compound in Damascus on April 1st. And so some are extrapolating from that that by telegraphing it so clearly, Iran is trying to find that precise point. And this is where it gets dangerous no, and difficult. No, she's when doing it. She's doing a decent job. Spot between escalating and retaliating and avoiding creating a scenario that you can't pull back from the brink of, there is always the capacity for things to go wrong. And that is why there is so much tension. That's why there is a high degree of anticipation, even though this moment has been expected since April 1st, Jessica. Right. It is a razor's edge. All right, Clarissa, stand by. I want to go to General Mark Hurtling, who's joined us as well. And General, we just heard Clarissa really lay it all out there. Uh, as we await these drones in their travel time, we see how uh, Israel might respond um, as it does take hours for them to get to their final destination. Uh, but also broadening it out a little bit more, uh, Israel has promised to respond in kind to whatever Iran uh, ultimately does and however this unfolds over the next hours or days or however long this might go on. Uh, what does that say to you and, and, and what do you think that could potentially look like? Dude, if I'm a rapture enjoyer, evangelical, I'm so horny right now. I'm like, oh, the end of times is here. We don't know how many aircraft are in the air. It's slow moving and it's developing. But I'd suggest that that's just the first of many actions. There could be the potential I'm like, for I'm, I'm losing my mind. Slow moving Going, drones, this is it. Jessica. It's happening. Finally. About the, 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 the speed of a Piper the red heifers, or baby. A Cessna aircraft. They're just very slow, 150 miles an hour at best. So they're going to be supplemented from, I think, from uh, attacks from other directions. Hezbollah is going to step up their actions, although even, even while we haven't been watching what's been going on in the northern part of Israel as much, the Israeli Defense Forces have been reporting multiple attacks on a daily basis uh, from Hezbollah in, in uh, southern Lebanon. You also have the potential for a synchronized attack between Hezbollah and Lebanon, these slow-moving drones, which will take about four to five hours to get to the boundaries of Israel, with other actions by PMF and some uh, faster-moving missiles, uh, cruise missiles potentially, or even uh, larger range missiles. So those are quick. Those move about the size of a jet. If Iran is able to synchronize the slow-moving actions with the faster-moving actions, uh, you could see a very big uh, synchronized attack. Israel's not going to wait for all this. I would suggest that in their command and France control and headquarters right now, I established they've a got clear a lot principle. of patience. Whoever hurts us, we hurt them. We will protect ourselves from any threat and will do so with coolness and determination. I know that you citizens of Israel are also keeping your cool. I urge you to listen to the directives of the Home Front Command. Together we will stand and with God's help, together we will overcome all our enemies. And, uh... We have Rory Challens, who's joining us now from occupied East Jerusalem. Uh, Rory, I believe we're just going to show some pictures of there. Uh, Rory, I'll come back to you in a second, but that is a live picture from uh, the joint uh, base Andrews over in the U.S., and that's the president uh, in the helicopter right there, President Biden. So arriving now at the joint base Andrews as this developing story is ongoing with Israel, with Iran launching drones towards Israel. Now we'll bring in Rory Challens. He's joining us from Occupied East Jerusalem, following all the developments from there for us. So Rory, uh, you've also been listening to the military radio in Israel. What have they been saying at this time? Well, what I think uh, people here would, would be very surprised if it was just a, a, a drone strike. And that's what is being reflected on Israeli military radio at the moment as well. If this is just a, a drone, then the expectation is that Israel's multi-layered uh, air defense system uh, could probably deal with it fairly uh, effectively. But they don't think that it will be just drones. They think that uh, Iran will most likely use drones as an initial barrage, uh, and then there might be a follow-up uh, with ballistic or cruise missiles. Now, yeah. Iran will have been watching uh, what's been going the drones on are in probably Ukraine very to closely over expand. the last uh, year or two. And what the Russians have been the drones doing are is exactly slower that. moving. They it's a it's a way to expand uh, their iron drones, deplete their iron dome if they the even get there. Obviously, Iran it might not even get there because Israel is saying that they are going to utilize the 
the American they're going to be utilizing the the uh, American resources in the region as well <clears throat> like their their goal is to take out as much of the anti-air systems as possible or deplete them as fast as possible while simultaneously lobbing uh, I assume faster moving rockets missiles um, uh, to shoot those down. So it means there's a greater chance that the, the, the missiles, be their crews or ballistic, get through uh, and hit their targets. That's now, not true. They use different systems for bigger missiles. Israel I know, has a, I know a, they do. a much better system of air defense than Ukraine currently has. Uh, it has a multi-layered defense system, which includes Iron Dome, which we all know about because that gets set off very frequently uh, to deal with rockets when they come from he's going to describe it now in, uh, in in lebanon and also he's going to talk uh, about the larger uh, the defense systems they have for larger uh, rockets defense systems that israel has as well called one called david sling and another one called arrow two and arrow three and See, together yeah. these make up a, a kind of uh, what's called a multi-layered air defense system which means they do deal with different uh, uh, threats in different ways now Israel's air defense systems have been well tested against things like uh, rockets, Katusha rockets, that sort of thing. Um, they're less well def uh, tested against. Uh, oh, finally, we got the weirdos in here well again. So you're rooting for Iran. Against, if this prompts a response uh, from the U.S., it could mean economic well, so collapse so and further escalation. Iran co question, controls uh, oil experts. Millions could die. Well, it's not Israel's good that Iran escalated now. Bitch, what the fuck do you mean? Uh, the kind of if you're mad that Iran retaliated to Israel, you should be they, incredibly they angry at Joe that Biden that and, and incredibly angry at Israel for literally fucking getting it to this level. For allowing Israel to, to feel comfortable in Iran, drawing the United uh, States Israel, into this broader conflict. From Iran didn't okay, escalate. We'll Iran retaliated. Moment, if Clarissa um, Ward Heiser on fucking CNN can understand that fact, if Clarissa Ward on CNN is saying that Iran is trying to retaliate in an even fashion so that they do not draw an even larger response from Israel, you should be able to understand that too. Except the difference for you is that you're not in it to, to make genuine assertions here. You're just in it to fucking get a clip out after trolling me so you can post it on a fucking subreddit and be like, look, Hassan is in support of complete global collapse. He loves Iran. He's a fundamentalist Islamist terrorist lover. That's your goal. Iranian attack involves hundreds of drones. Senior Israeli official tells Barack Ravid as of now. It is wild to assume that a regional actor that has developed its weapons capabilities specifically for this purpose is not going to retaliate when their own soil is struck. The Damascus consulate compound is Iranian soil. Israel greatly ex escalated it. The reason why you didn't hear about it is because mainstream media barely covered it. It was a blip when it was a major move. The United States' response to Israel's major move was to say, oh, they didn't tell us. That's really fucked up that they didn't tell us ahead of time. This is awful. This is going to ruin, this is going to possibly ruin the lives of many people in Israel. It's probably, it's probably going to ruin the lives of many people in Iran and would if, depending on what happens after this, depending on how this round of retaliation goes and how uh, Israel chooses to escalate and given that they've been fucking violent and belligerent from the jump, which caused this retaliation to happen to begin with, I worry that this will have global consequences. I hope not. But the, the next couple of days will determine uh, the future of this planet. It can, it can be a tempered approach. The United States will rein in Israel and say, listen, they took pot shots back at you after you took pot shots. You just got to fucking take the L here. Or it can mean full-scale global conflict. At the time it was announced, saying that it was to protect U.S. forces and also to uh, deter this type of escalation from Iran. Now that this moment appears to be unfolding, we will soon find out how the U.S. is planning to respond to this, to come to Israel's defense, as its top officials have vowed. Okay, um, Heidi, I will let you go faith for in now. The USA that can handle this appropriately. Again. The reason why this is happening today is because the USA has not handled it appropriately. If Biden, if Anthony Blinken, like he tweeted on October 8, urged Israel to de-escalate and urged restraint for Israel, if that tweet had been kept up after that meeting with Hakan Fidan, Turkish Foreign Minister Hakan Fidan, after Anthony Blinken and Hakan Fidan had a conversation on October 8, that was something that Anthony Blinken tweeted and deleted very quickly. 
if that was the attitude from October 8, it would have never gotten to this point because Israel would know that there are red lines. Israel would know that there are boundaries that they cannot cross if they demand unconditional support from the United States of America. Biden, on the other hand, reaffirmed his commitment to Israel, said that there were no red lines, symbolically bear-hugged Benjamin Netanyahu, and said, go all out. You've watched what Israel has done in the last six months after that. When you tell Israel no red lines, they're going to keep crossing the red lines that other regional actors have drawn, understandable red lines that other regional actors have drawn. You let the dog off the leash. That's the point from the sky. They also started jamming uh, GPS uh, around the country. And we understand from uh, Daniel Hagari that that is going on today as well, that there are now that these drones are incoming, that there is widespread GPS jamming going on to try uh, to destroy. Israeli here just wanted to drop in and say I'm very happy to now be in existential danger due to some old fuckhead army guy bombing some other dumb Iranian guy for shits and giggles. This is truly one of the moments of all time. I'm not that updated on this, so sorry if I said something inaccurate. Yeah, be safe, chatters. <sighs> the Israeli military command and control headquarters is placed right in the center of the densely populated stronghold of Tel Aviv. Yep, straight up. If the world is destroyed by a nation with restaurants called Hello Food, that is hilarious. I don't find it to be that funny. I mean, I get the irony of it, but it is wild to me that a nation uh, with the greatest exports being surveillance technology, ways, and techno music, like the absolute worst DJs per capita you've ever fucking seen, is going to bring about the actual demise of the entire uh, Western world is, is wild to me. Not going to happen most likely. We shall see. But uh, holy fuck. It is wild to think. Oh, here is our favorite Barack Ravid. Let's see Syria, what he has to say. That would give the greatest possible chance for U.S. forces to intercept them, of course, depending on their route, or they could try to come over uh, Saudi Arabia and through Jordan to try to <laughs> minimize the possibility of U.S. intercepts there. Though. Okay, official IRGC statement. Breaking, Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps releases a statement. In response to the crime of the Zionist regime and the attack on the consular section of the Iranian embassy in Damascus, the IRGC Air Force hit certain targets in the territories of the Zionist regime with dozens of drones and missiles. That's what they said. Actually, I'll pick up on, on what my colleague Jeremy Diamond was talking about here. Israel itself has a layered aerial defense system. Its long-range aerial defense would be the Arrow 3 interceptor. That would intercept ballistic missiles and can work out of the atmosphere. We have seen that used, if I'm not mistaken, over the course of the past six months to intercept certain launches coming from uh, or coming down the Red Sea from the Houthis in Yemen. That's the long-range interceptor, Arrow 3. The medium-range interception system is David's Sling. That is very similar to the U.S. THAAD system. That is also stationed at different points in the country. And then the short-range interception system that we've seen used so many times, not only over the course of the past six months, but in the past as well, is Iron Dome. And that intercepts within uh, a few dozen miles here. Certainly that would be able to intercept uh, these drones. The Thank real you, question Qatari is, and this is what we've been speculating and wondering about, these drones will take hours to get there. Cruise missiles could arrive much faster, within a couple of hours perhaps, and then ballistic missiles are within a few minutes. So it still remains an open question, is this it? Or is there more coming and could Iran try to coordinate a number of different types of weapons to hit at the same time? That, of course, is, is what we're waiting to see here as these drones make their way over an, what will be an hours-long process to reach their targets. Right. We know the beginning, the first chapters of this story so far. Let's go to Alex Marquardt right now. And Alex, you're getting some new information on, on the time frame cold. here. I'm How like long shivering. This might take I don't know why. Cold. Yeah, this is a really interesting statement from the White House, Jessica. The, the, the White House uh, putting a, a, essentially an expectation on how this is going to unfold in terms of the duration. Uh, they're saying that uh, it's going to be a number of hours. That's coming from a spokesperson for the National Security Council. Um, so they're not saying that this is going to be over very quickly. They're not saying that this is ex uh, something that's going to, to last for days. But there is an expectation um, that we have been talking about because of the weaponry that the Iranians are choosing, that this is going to take... Uh, several hours. It's almost midnight in Israel. Uh, that means that this could stretch into the pre-dawn hours. It will be very interesting to see whether it lasts longer than that. Of course, uh, there is a very distinct possibility that Israel then decides to retaliate uh, for this retaliation. And then we could really be off to the races in terms of an expanded conflict. But we aren't there yet. Jessica, we have been talking about this Iranian retaliation for almost two weeks now uh, since Israel struck 
that alleged consulate um, of the Iranian building in Damascus and killed seven members of the Revolutionary Guard, including uh, one of their senior most commanders who was in charge of the Syria and, and the Lebanon theaters. And so we knew this retaliation was coming and there was all kinds of speculation about what. Uh, yeah, I mean, they telegraphed it. They openly said that they were going to do it um, here. Uh, more updates. Fightux News says breaking Iranian drones began crossing Iraqi airspace and approached Syria and Jordan. The missile attack will begin soon. Iranian sources tell Iran's semi official FARS news agency. So, did he say alleged consulate? Ability that Israel will then ret retaliate against Iran itself. Now, this could have also been predicted because the attack that Israel carried out against that building in Damascus was carried out from Israeli soil. So what we're seeing here, I think, is a very calculated, very calibrated, but very significant retaliation by Iran. And Iran has been doing, I think, a, a, a pretty good job at telegraphing what its intentions are. Uh, the United States, a, a variety of European countries, Arab this countries, is Turkey, shocking. in the days this leading is up like to coverage today, that they I'm not expecting. telling Iran, do not escalate this conflict. But at the same time, there was a recognition uh, that Iran would have to respond to that attack last week. They would have to save face. But despite what we're seeing right now, Jessica, there is no real sense that Iran wants to widen this conflict. And so it's going to be very interesting in the coming hours, as the White House has just said, to see what kind of weaponry they add to this. If it's just the drones. How much faster are missiles than drones? Missiles. Is expected the missiles will add, follow up the drones? Uh, yes, they're much faster. Neighboring countries to Israel joining the fight, what the targets they go after are, and then whether there are other Israeli targets in other countries like embassies. So we are starting to, to get a lot more of the answers that we've been looking for, but so many questions remain. Jessica? So many questions, and it will take some time to see exactly where this all lands. But what we do know, again, just to underscore to everyone, is that Iran has launched these drones toward Israel uh, from Iranian territory. So, uh, Kim Dozier, let's go to you, and let's talk about these drones for a second. We now have Alex's reporting there that this could unfold uh, from coming from the NSC over a matter of hours a number of hours. It takes hours for these drones to arrive to their destination. What more are you gathering from all of this information? Well, I'm just hearing from a senior U.S. official that the drones are I don't know in, how quote, valid unquote, this stuff is. The Syrian directions. army will defend. So they are worried it's going to hit multiple parts of Israel. And the official says, as Oren was reporting, that yes, the U.S. military is trying to track them to help Israel knock them out of the sky. The worry is that there will be so many headed to so many different parts that Israel's air defenses will be overwhelmed. Um, now, the question is, has Iran waited these two weeks to telegraph to Israel? So perhaps it is hitting, uh, per, uh, planning to hit military targets, uh, naval ships in Haifa and south in Eilat, uh, army bases across the country. Um, any of this could be seen as, you know, Israel hit its uh, a military target in Syria, Iran is striking back. But this is still extraordinary. Any attacks that have been blamed on Israel that have happened inside Iran have been covert. This is an overt operation, and it's going to trigger an international response no matter what's hit. Um, one Israeli uh, former intelligence official I was speaking to uh, said... Uh, she was going to sleep I, because she was expecting uh, many long days to come. Hmm. Yeah, many long days to come. All right, Kim, stand by. Chatters, go to there's going to be a lot of these, like, OSIN accounts, unless it's coming from, like, Elant News in the chat, and even he might get stuff wrong. It's the fog of war. I have to repeat, remember, it is, it, it, you know, there will be misinformation. You're probably inadvertently, without recognizing, spreading misinformation um, when you send me any link and every link that you see for the record, like there needs to be confirmed reports. First of April when Israel attacked that Iranian consulate in Damascus, uh, but tonight uh, they really are skyrocketing. Uh, we're seeing the airspace over Jordan, for instance, since being uh, completely closed. And in southern Lebanon, of course, which has been the scene of daily and often deadly exchanges of fire between Israel and Hezbollah, we've seen that this evening, uh, just before news of the, Isra the Iranian uh, launch 
took place that there were some fairly intense Israeli air raids uh, along the southern Lebanon southern border. Uh, we're hearing now from residents down there uh, that there is an intense Israeli presence of warplanes uh, in the sky. I think probably the scenario the Israelis are worried about uh, is that there could be more done by Iran's allies and proxies around the region, even though we've heard from officials very, or rather sources very close to Hezbollah that the initial strike would be Iranian and exclusively Iranian. The worry is what, how will Israel respond to the Iranian response to the strike on the consulate in Damascus. And that's really where the danger lies. And certainly in terms of danger, uh, Lebanon is high on the list. Famously, by the way, Israel making, uh, making uh, the world very safe for Jewish people living in Israel once again. Just remember, remember that fucking line that no Jew in the world would be safe without Israel? Doesn't seem so safe for the Jews living in Israel right now. Doesn't seem safe for anyone living in Israel or anyone living in America even. And it's kind of wild because this kind of belligerent action in the region was of course going to draw up some kind of response, some kind of retaliation. It's weird. It's weird to think that like every single thing I've been saying for fucking years about Israel is, is just basically uh, coming to fruition as Israel has felt more galvanized year over year over year, especially after the Trump administration and definitely with the Biden administration as well. Absolute chaos happening. The commercial traffic rerouting as airspaces are closed for Israel, Jordan, and Iraq. Mass diversion of flights are happening over Western Turkey over the past few minutes as Iraq closes one of the busiest airlines in the Middle East. Oh, here's another part, by the way. Uh, this I saw this on, yeah, this is, this is N12. Um, IDF bombed dozens of targets in three areas of Lebanon, according to N12 uh, News, while everyone is, like, looking at what the fuck is going to happen with the Iranian retaliation. Uh, they might just be doing that specifically because they are worried about a Hezbollah attack as well coming in uh, in unison with the IRGC. Jordan declares state of emergency. Likely many other drones and missiles may fly over Jordanian territory. I think they also said that they would, uh, that they would strike down uh, drones and missiles that go over their airspace, right? Yeah. The Iranian shadow here. Some unofficial Iranian news sources are speculating the drones will be in Israel about two hours. Well, we know what the... It's longer than that. I think it's going to take longer than that since it started. Didn't Elant News say it was six hours? We hear aircrafts everywhere here in Jordan. Jesus Christ. Do you think the idea of using this as a distraction now? Would they go ahead with Rafa? No, dude, this is not a distraction. This is an expected consequence of the Israeli military action in the region, specifically striking the Iranian consulate compound in Damascus. That is Iranian soil killing Iranian officials, that is an act of war against a foreign adversary, a regional actor that demands retaliation. If anything, this is not about, like, invading Rafa. They're going to have their hands busy with this shit. So instead of invading Rafa, it, it actually is more so about drawing the United States into, drawing the United States into the broader conflict now, which they have. They officially have. Um, N12 reporting that this third wave was launched from Hamadan and reports of interceptions already in Syria. Uh, there is now officially a third wave of Iranian drones launched at Israel. Holy shit. And the Lebanese chatter is asking, like, I'm in Lebanon. I don't know what uh, Israel will do. Uh, will, this, will this be bad? There's a high likelihood, considering that I often want to... Uh, I often say the madman theory is not, not the... Nixon madman theory, but like approaching regional actors as not rational actors, but instead belligerent, violent, bloodthirsty monsters leads to bad analysis. Okay, it does. And the reality is for Israel, they are as close to uh, a belligerent, violent actor as you can possibly get. And even then, there is still some rationale behind the moves that they're making. Okay, the rationale albeit possibly a miscalculation, okay, albeit miscalculation is, I assume, uh, bringing in the United States into, uh, uh, bringing the United States into Iran launched third round just moments ago. I know, I already checked your chat. We already covered that. I guess a third wave of drones have also been launched from Iran. 
Syria puts air defenses around Damascus and major bases are on high alert, according to Reuters. I said this a couple of days ago, but it does seem, I might be totally off base on this, but it does seem like given the fact that Iran very clearly spelled out that this would be a retaliation against Israel for the Damascus strike, that their response, while to you guys from afar, looks like, you know, overkill, so many drones, so many drones, uh, is most likely going to uh, try to strike an Israeli target of equal worth. The reason why they're sending hundreds of drones, of course, in three different uh, salvos is because uh, Israel, alongside with coalition forces, has tremendous defenses, so they're trying to get through it. That's the reason why. Most of those drones are not going to make it, some of them will be intercepted above Syria. Some of them will be intercepted above Iraq. Uh, and, and some of them will be intercepted near Israel. Okay? You sound like you are condoning attacking Israel, a.k.a. A civilian population. I genuinely don't understand how you can be at the precipice of World War III and still be interested in trying to farm a clip. Literally. That's wild to me. That is actually wild to me. That... You know, there are hundreds of drones uh, currently heading in the direction of Israel. And there are still chatters in here who are like, I can't wait to get a clip off here. I can't wait to get a fucking clip off here. This is going to pop off on Reddit. I am. I have never. I have never. Oh, my God. Just ban and move on. These people are freaks. I know. I wonder why he's actually a subscriber, too. Well, you can't clip anymore. Probably because, probably not because he wants to avoid the top of the hour ad break. Probably he is a subscriber because he wants to clip shit and be able to post it on subreddits. But World War Three or not, a three minute ad break still comes at the top of the hour. Anyway. In a strike on their Iranian consulate. Now, the Iranian officials, including the Supreme Leader, said that this was a, a declaration of war. It was an act of war because they considered their consulate Iranian soil, and that this is the response. The Iranian um, representative to the United Nations had said over the past 48 hours that. Had the officials at the Security Council condemned Israel, Iran would have been satisfied with that response. But that did not happen. The United States, the UK, France, and they did not uh, condemn Israel's act. They uh, refused to uh, take that step at that Security Council uh, emergency meeting that was called within 24 hours of the airstrike in Syria. So that followed, um, what followed that was the officials here using the rhetoric that it is now in the hands of the Iranians to show a response to Israel. Because, of course, this is not the first time Israel has done something like this, carried out targeted assassinations on high-ranking officials of the Revolutionary Guard. There has been assassinations in Syria, um, in Iran, inside the country, uh, as well as, of course, the United States... Uh, when they killed Qasem Soleimani in Baghdad in 2020. So Iran felt like it was in a position that if they did not respond this time, then really this kind of behavior by Israel would continue indefinitely. And they couldn't afford She's to right. look weak, not only to their proxies. It the literally, region, why have any missile systems and any defenses if, if the other regional actor is just like relentlessly striking you and greatly escalating the fucking conflict like there had those are there for a fucking reason and the reason is for this this is the reason going to use what they have to defend themselves when israel attacks them on a continuous basis from october 7th until now Israeli airstrikes have killed 18 members of iran's revolutionary guards in syria alone iran had uh, responded by striking various uh, different positions um, before until tonight. So this is how it is unfolding now as a result of all the events leading up to this. Okay, Dorsa, we'll let you go for... IDF update. So far, the Israeli military has identified more than 100 drone launches from Iran. The Israeli Air Force is tracking the drones and is preparing for additional waves of attacks, which may also include missiles. All right, let's hear what CNN is saying. Uh, the region is waiting to see when those projectiles reach Israel. Will they actually hit anything? As we know, Israel has the ability 
along with the United States to track them as they fly in the direction of Israel. And we've seen that we, whether it's the aero anti missile system, the iron drone and other means, uh, whether Israel will be able to actually shoot all of them down before they actually hit the ground. Alex? Uh, Clarissa, to, to you, we're, we're showing live pictures of that Tel Aviv skyline. Um, one of the major questions is, of course, uh, what the targets are intended to be. Now, there is a sense that if uh, Iran does not want to escalate this, that they won't go, for example, for civilian centers. They won't try to target downtown Tel Aviv where you are. Obviously, we don't know what those targets are going to be. But what is the Israeli government uh, saying to its citizens uh, in order to stay safe? Uh, in a way that we might be able to glean w what it is they believe those intended targets to be? Well, essentially, they're saying this is a moment for caution. This is a moment to listen carefully to what you're being told to do. This is a moment not to panic. This is a moment for unity, as you heard Ben Wiedemann saying there. Schools are closed. Universities are closed. Camps are closed. No gatherings of more than 1,000 people. Everyone here being urged to keep a close eye on the news, on their phones, and pay attention to what they're told to do. I do think that the prevailing wisdom had been that Iran was telegraphing this for some time, that they had made it very clear they felt it was necessary to respond to Israel's attack on April 1st in Damascus that killed seven uh, Iranian officials, Quds forces, according uh, to the Israelis. Um, but now the question is, are they able to retaliate in a way that does not escalate? Are they able to find that so-called Goldilocks spot? And the fear is, of course, that given the backdrop, given the tensions, given the fact that we are really in a kind of unprecedented moment, that there are so many things that could go wrong, that there are so many potentially unintended consequences. I'm Israeli and I live in the north. I'm going to sit in my balcony and watch the missiles and drones come in law. That very few people Be across safe, the bro. region what the actually fuck? want to see. You have had a U.S. CENTCOM commander, uh, General Eric Carrillo, here for two days. He just left talking about how the U.S. will work with Israel to deter uh, any kind of attack. But certainly there is a sense that this is the pressure. Bro, don't rely on the Iron Dome. These are not bathtub missiles. You know what I mean? These are not bathtub missiles being lobbed from fucking Gaza made by like 17 year olds uh, using Israeli rocket parts. These are big boy drones and, and possibly big boy missiles to come as a follow up. Uh, is it, you know, this isn't like, uh, I mean, even when uh, Hezbollah ends up striking Northern uh, Israel, uh, there is more of a threat than uh, the, the Hamas and Islamic Jihad rockets. But this is, you know, this is the, the big dog in the region in comparison to all of the other regional, uh, all of the other regional operatives. These are not, this is no longer proxies. I mean, proxies are also involved, certainly, but this is the IRGC itself. So I would be very careful. Swear are trying to uh, make sure uh, that Iran and Israel essentially do uh, thread it carefully in a way to avoid this escalation. I want to get to Jeremy Diamond, who, who, who's in Jerusalem. Um, Jeremy, what have the Israelis been saying about how they may respond to uh, this Iranian attack? Because as we're seeing now, this is not proxies yet, perhaps, coming from other countries. This is an attack from Iranian soil, raising the possibility of an Israeli response against Iranian soil. Yeah, Alex, uh, there's no question that in recent days, Israeli officials have been trying to deter uh, this very scenario, a uh, direct attack <laughs> by Iranian forces launched. Yeah, no, they haven't been trying to deter that, soil to be directed honest. At Israeli soil. And indeed, in. Bro, fuck you mean deter. They, no, they haven't. They've had one speed, dude, and it's go. They've been just hitting go speed non fucking stop since since October 8th. Israel, meaning an Israeli attack uh, directed at Iranian soil. Now It's wild that, like, it wasn't enough to satiate their fucking bloodlust to kill tens of thousands of Palestinians, that they had to also strike Beirut, that they also had to strike a Iranian consulate compound. Like, what are you doing? It's crazy. Every step of the way, I told you that it's fucking insane, that they are behaving in the most belligerent way possible. It was ridiculous. Opening up multiple fronts deliberately is wild to me, especially when considering 
that that was a major fear from the jump for Israel was potentially having to fight Hezbollah in the north, possibly withstand attacks from Yemen forces as well, Yemeni forces as well, and then also Iranian forces, uh, the IRGC proxies that are in Syria and in Iraq. That was that literally was the fear from American military analysts that like Israel's going to get uh, swarmed on all fronts and not be able to withstand this retaliation. Israel then followed the next six months in the most ridiculous uh, by doing the most ridiculous shit you could imagine. Oh my god, the analyst numbers are growing. By the way, it's ridiculous. It is so nutty. It was never about self defense. There was no self defense. There is no self-defense in this regard. Days now uh, preparing for exactly this scenario that is now currently uh, underway. A senior administration official from here confirming uh, that many drones have been uh, launched from inside Iran into Israel. They expect that number uh, to really be uh, just north of what we had uh, reported uh, coming into this. Uh, and just to underscore, of course, the gravity of this situation, uh, President Biden was set to finish out the weekend in Rehoboth Beach. He has now uh, cut that trip short and has just returned to the White House, uh, walking straight back into the Oval Office, where uh, later today we expect him to, of course, convene uh, his team of national security uh, advisors. And they, of course, in turn, have been in close contact with their uh, Israeli counterparts uh, in the region as well as all, as all of this uh, has unfolded. And we saw uh, moments ago the National Security Council saying in a statement that they expect that this attack is likely to unfold over a number of hours. You know, you take into account just the travel time of some of these drones. Uh, and yeah, we certainly expect that this is going to be a late night here at the White House with uh, the president continuing to get updated as this uh, situation unfolds. Uh, I do think it's just worth uh, noting a couple of things Things that we have been reporting uh, leading up to this very moment that's important uh, from here, our stance here at the White House. You know, U.S. officials had said that they expected that Iran would be directly involved in launching the, these attacks uh, into Israel. But they had also said that, the, it, that it is certainly possible that proxies and other affiliated groups uh, could also be involved. So there's that. Uh, we also know uh, that Iran was expected to attack multiple targets in Israel, but there could also be other targets, uh, other assets uh, in the region that are also targeted. So it could be uh, sort of further reaching than what we are currently aware of. Uh, and then, of course, the idea that the U.S. is ready and willing to intercept uh, any weapons if feasible oh as this uh, unfolds. So. Uh, you know, we saw uh, the U.S. moving uh, extra forces into the region uh, in preparation for all of this. So uh, this kind of work and preparation has been under day, uh, underway again uh, for days now. And I think it's just uh, hard to overstate how much this state-on-state uh, -state conflict between Iran and Israel was a scenario that the U.S. had so much hope to avoid, uh, given the possibility of Let me tell you one thing. I am not getting fucking drafted, partially because I'm 32 years old, but also there is no fucking way I'm getting drafted to go and defend the genocidal apartheid state of Israel, okay? Oh my God, Biden is going to address the nation? Uh, I can't, that link is not working for some reason, Demacius. Uh-oh. Uh, just really have to underscore. He's going to come out and be like, unconditional support to Israel, okay? No matter what. Here you go, boys. Just get ready. Crawl out through the fallout, baby. Lloyd Austin, when they uh, the drop that of bomb. Uh, Cedric Layton, I want to ask Crawl you a technical the question. Because now we have uh, this reporting from the Israeli media plow. that it's not just these drones. When and now we're playing the number of more than 100 higher, attack drones, but also delay. cruise missiles. I don't think there's a number uh, on the cruise missiles just yet. It's going to take hours for those drones to get to Israel. How soon could those cruise missiles get to Israeli airspace? And how much more complicated? Does this make it for the Israeli air defenses when you've got this combination uh, of weaponry being used in this attack? Yeah, Alex, that's going to be one of the uh, biggest difficulties that, and challenges that the Israelis are going to face because those cruise missiles uh, could uh, basically get to Israeli airspace in about uh, a little less than two hours uh, from launch. 
Uh, so they uh, travel at about five to six times the speed of these drones uh, that uh, we believe the Iranians are using, uh, probably from the Shahed family, the same kind of family that is being used in Ukraine right now. Those drones travel at about 110 miles per hour. Cruise missiles uh, of the type that the Iranians have generally go anywhere from 500 to 620 miles per hour. So that's the kind of difference in speed that we're looking at, and that is definitely going to be a challenge for the Israeli air defense system and, of course, uh, the associated radar systems as well as the intelligence systems that are tied into that. General Hurtling, is there a possibility that if uh, proxy groups, notably Hezbollah in, in Lebanon, the, the most capable of, of all the proxy By groups, the way, arguably, uh, and then, of course, you have the Houthis down south in Yemen. Is By the way, this is before Iran uh, retaliated. OK, this is today from the opinion of the editorial board in The New York Times. But there ain't no fucking way there. Ain't, oh, there's a correction. President Biden is in the Oval Office, the pool says, not expected to speak from there currently. Um, they wrote this today. Tomorrow, I suspect they will have a very different approach. Because remember, remember, you can never strike back against the playground bully because when you do you are considered much worse israel is our guy israel is on our side many people in the western world only came to the conclusion that uh this death and destruction in gaza was unfathomable after 30,000 plus deaths Remember, Palestinians always have to be, or anyone really, that is fighting against or trying to survive against America's greatest allies in the region, they always have to be perfect victims. And Israel, only through its ethnic cleansing campaign, presented the Palestinians as perfect victims enough that, enough that even the New York Times editorial board changed its stance. Yeah, so just some to remember. And therefore, once Iran is no longer considered a perfect victim, which it never was really, but once Iran retaliates, and it, uh, as it is doing today, the attitude, I suspect, will shift dramatically in mainstream media, re-upping the efforts that, and re-galvanizing support to Israel by the broader American population. U.S. support for Israel's response may be, the Pentagon has really shed very little information on that. What we do know is in that the days leading up to this, and as U.S. official after U.S. official, including President Biden himself, said that this attack was imminent, the Pentagon had been moving around U.S. warships and warplanes in the region. We know that there are at least two U.S. Navy destroyers floating off the coast of Israel, one of them reportedly armed with the Aegis missile defense system, which is capable of taking down uh, uh, ballistic missiles. Uh, and as far as what, how that will be gauged, whether it'll be engaged, whether the U.S. may send fighter jets up into uh, the airspace of, of Jordan or Iraq to try to intercept these drones en route, all of that remains to be seen. But the U.S. president and his highest military and intelligence officials keeping tabs on exactly what's happening and saying they are monitoring this alongside their Israeli allies. Yeah, and Heidi, I suppose, I mean, we'll have to wait and see how all of this develops, of course. But um, many people may be asking whether the U.S. forces and the bases themselves might be at risk going forward. Right. It's been notable that while U.S. forces in this region, in Syria, in, uh, in, in Iraq, had been previously targeted by Iranian proxy militias, that those That's attacks crazy. had really ceased uh, after the U.S. retaliated. A lot of motherfuckers in North Dakota Iranian asking. proxy military assets. So it had been relatively quiet as far as Let's Iran see in the past 12 or months. Iranian uh, uh, proxies targeting Still nowhere U.S. Near. forces Just in wait. this region over the past the, month. The news is only and now it is hitting. Notable, uh, 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 and a defense really official popped off around October 15th. It that seems. There is no I wonder why. At, a, at this point, that any of this Iran attacks that are chat. You remember, we are lapping mainstream coverage on this. When you're in here and you're following something in real time, most normies have no clue.
Most normies are not clued into what the fuck's going on. It's the weekend. People are talking about the girl that Kai Sinat hooked up with. And how she, like, filmed him while he was sleeping, demanding hush money from him, even though they just, like, had consensual sex. That's what people are talking about. People are talking about the Drake leaks. They're not, they're not aware of what the fuck's going on on the entire other side of the world. Once, once they do, come Monday, those trend results will be very different. You are in Iraq about this latest development. So, that in as far as official statements, the only one we've received thus far is from the Ministry of Transportation, the Civil Aviation Authority, which announced that Iraqi airspace would be closed from 11.30 p.m. tonight. That was about 45 minutes ago until around 5.30 a.m. this next morning at dawn. But they also said that that could be extended. Let me read you a portion of the statement. It said that the closure of the airspace will be temporary and precautionary. This comes in... Here's an update from Elent. Uh, breaking news from ABC, a senior U.S. official told ABC News that they now think there will be anywhere from 400 to 500 drones and missiles launched to Israel from Iraq, Syria, southern Lebanon, and the Houthis, but that the bulk will be launched from Iran. Interests here. I mean, Israel is sitting in the middle of a very dangerous neighborhood with Iran and Hezbollah and Hamas, among others, threatening them. Do they want to go all in on a conflict? I would say no, and I think the Biden administration will be advising them no, that they are in a vulnerable position and they should look to de-escalate across the board where That's possible. interesting to hear. They, they still are very strong and able to defend themselves. They don't need to risk an all-out war to prove that point. And I also think it underscores the need to get to a ceasefire in Gaza, to get humanitarian assistance in to Gaza and to have an endpoint to that conflict, you know, completely admitting Israel's right to defend itself there without question. Um, but things need to calm down or Israel is is vulnerable in the region. All right. Congressman Adam Smith, uh, ranking member of the Armed Services Committee. Thank you so much for your time and thoughts this, this evening. Really appreciate it. Thanks for the chance. And I want to bring in uh, Axios's Barack Ravid, who has been breaking so much news uh, on this story today. That's not Barack Ravid. What the fuck? Uh, Barack, we are now seeing an expansion of uh, of what Wait, is uh, that of the Iranian Ravid? assault, essentially. That, I don't think that's Barack Ravid, bro. Is it? Uh, what are you hearing in terms of what U.S. and Israeli officials are expecting more from Iran and from elsewhere in, in neighboring countries? Oh. Hi, Alex. So uh, what I hear from Israeli officials and from U.S. officials that the drones were launched uh, both Come from on, bro. Uh, Iran and from uh, um, Iraq and Syria. Uh, and at the moment, some of them were already intercepted, um, especially by U.S. forces. Um, what Israeli officials tell me is that it will be something like 2 a.m. local time when the drones will reach um, uh, Israeli airspace, that's, I think, something like, um, you know, an hour and a half uh, from now, more or less. And the Israeli aspiration, I think, in both the U.S. aspirations to intercept as many drones and cruise missiles as possible outside of Israeli airspace. Uh, there was an interesting report in Reuters that said that the Jordanian military is also preparing to uh, uh, f uh, shoot down any drone, that any Iranian drone that enters Jordanian airspace. So I think that's the goal right now, to intercept as many drones as possible before they reach Israeli airspace. And Barack, what do we know about the back-channeling, uh, the, the, the private conversations over the past few days between Iran and the United States around this retaliation? I think we can, we can say, you know, we can be quite certain right now, and we, we see the numbers of drones and cruise missiles that were launched from Iran, that all the efforts uh, to limit this attack uh, and to make the Iranians maybe uh, recalculate uh, their decision making uh, failed. Um, the Iranians, um, during the last few days, uh, sent messages to the US through several Arab countries that if the US gets involved in the fighting between Iran and Israel, then uh, Iran will see US bases and forces in the region as a legitimate target. And I think it will be interesting, interesting to see whether the fact that U.S. forces are involved in intercepting those drones and cruise missiles, whether Iran will see this as a pretext for attacking U.S. forces in the region. 
Yeah, it's an excellent question. Of course, the U.S. will say that they are helping uh, defend Israel and, and, and not going on, on the offense. But Barack, more, more broadly, I mean, we haven't really talked much about the conflict in, in Gaza tonight. How much do you think that this could potentially reshape uh, what we've seen over the past few months? Well, I think that uh, this war has gone into a new phase, uh, a phase that from day one the Biden administration tried to avoid of this becoming a regional war. This is now a regional war. Even if this will, this fight between Israel and Iran will die down in I don't know, a day or two or three days or a week, it's a new phase. And uh, when, you, when you look at it like that, then the Gaza war of a, all of a sudden becomes a sideshow. And I think that the Israeli plans for, uh, or at least the announcements about uh, um, an operation in Rafah, this thing is now in the freezer. I don't think anybody will go back to this thing in the foreseeable future. Um, and right now, the focus is only on how to contain this, you know, direct fight between Israel and Iran. And how do you think that this impacts how the Israeli public sees what is going on? It's one thing for Hamas to fire rockets in the Iron Dome to essentially take them all out and, and, and give Israelis that feeling of security. But now you've got Iran, which is a whole different ball game. So how do you think that, that changes the Israeli public's thinking? And, and that pressure had already been growing uh, on, on Pr uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu. Yeah, here, by the way, remember, uh, this chatter is right. How does Zionists square this with their persecution fantasy of Israel being a small being surrounded on all sides by mini bobini Arab countries? Israeli sources says several friendly Arab countries sent messages to Israel that they're ready to shoot down Iranian drones missiles that are fired at Israel. So shocking to me that, of course, of course, all of the other regional actors are obviously aligned with the United States of America and will do everything they can, with the exception of the Iranian uh, proxies and the axis of resistance. A year ago, where he pushed back on the warnings from the uh, intelligence services that the judicial overhaul that he's pushing is creating uh, damages to Israeli security and is encouraging Israel's enemies to attack and it. And back at the time, exactly a year ago, he said, Israel's enemies will never attack us because they know it will be a mistake. And I think that when you put those two together, I think many, many Israelis look at what's going on. The war in Gaza is stuck. There's no hostage deal in sight. Hezbollah is still shelling the northern border and Israel is being attacked directly from Iran. I don't think anybody uh, thought that this is uh, where Israel is going, is going to be a year ago. Yeah, no, no doubt there is going to be a reckoning uh, for Prime Minister Netanyahu and others once this conflict uh, is over. Brock Ravid, thank you so much. Terrific reporting as always. I'm sure we'll be thank talking you. to you again uh, before too long. Uh, I just want to note that uh, a short time ago we had a graphic up earlier that said that President Joe Biden... I mean, the explanation is that many Sunni Arabs hate Iran too. Yeah, dude, totally. The average Jordanian definitely, definitely is, is uh, siding with Israel and loves Israel and wants to defend Israel. Like, get your fucking head out of your goddamn Iowa ass, bro. This has nothing to do with, like, Sunnis and Shias, dumb fuck. The fuck do you mean, bro? No, dumbass. It's the governments. The fuck are you talking about? It's ridiculous to have a brain so fucking cooked that it's basically soup at this point. It has nothing to do with the demands of the citizens or sectarian infighting. Motherfuckers learn Sunni and Shia in ninth history class, ninth grade history class, and use it for every analysis. No, they are, no, these guys didn't even learn it in ninth grade. They learned it like last week because they saw a fucking tweet about it. They saw, they, they read a tweet on Twitter and they thought this is profound analysis because it's new to me. Himself, uh, since confirmation of these uh, strikes being launched, uh, whether it is a paper statement. Anyway, or sorry, I shouldn't be so aggro towards the 14 month chatter right now, but it's, it's still incorrect. Your analysis is incorrect chatter situation and it certainly uh, feels like a moment when the American people uh, would appreciate uh, some sort of uh, explanation from the president on exactly what's going on and particularly the U.S.'s involvement and how this may or may not affect uh, U.S. personnel, for example. So uh, a lot of questions that people have uh, probably as they are watching these events unfold. But again, uh, we are waiting to see whether we will at some point hear directly from the president. But for right now, uh, the task at hand for him is getting a full uh, picture of the situation that is unfolding and he is going to be meeting uh, again with his top national security advisors, Alex.
And it could be a very long evening for the president and his national security advisors. Uh, MJ Lee, uh, stay with us. So as, is this as well a genuine the attack which has strategic in, goals? Uh, Rule or an authoritarian government reasserting authority by peacocking after they got smacked? Kappa? No, it is a genuine retaliatory attack from an authoritarian government reasserting its authority. But it is a genuine retaliation to a regional actor that has gotten out of fucking control. Good afternoon. It's This attack uh, is folding out, rolling out in a relatively ma a consistent manner with Iran's doctrine. Swarm tactics, be it drones or small boats in the Persian Gulf, followed by Iran's powerful uh, missile force, and then drawing upon proxies potentially to augment that capacity against an adversary. So in this sense, it's a very consistent um, uh, uh, behavior by the Iranian government. So what more uh, could we expect from Iran and its proxies this evening? Well, I think the question is not only what more, but how long. They First red alert out. from Israel Iran has an embassy in, Mount in Yemen, uh, manned Herman. by a senior uh, Revolutionary Guard official. They have intelligence personnel. They've no doubt coordinated with the Houthis. Iran also is certainly coordinated with Lebanese Hezbollah. So I think there's going to, uh, there's already in place a general plan having that has developed over the past week in which they play a role within the limitations Iran has set. So are you saying you do believe that there will be a, a role by Hezbollah and, and by the Houthis in the coming hours? Very likely. Uh, they will need to show that they're uh, standing with Iran at this moment, that they are uh, willing to put some skin in the game. But again, I think for Lebanese Hezbollah, uh, they and, and also Iran don't wish to undertake steps that could lead to a conventional war because that war is likely to inflict significant punish, punishment on the various regimes and perhaps end those regimes. What did you take away about what Iran hopes will unfold in terms of uh, whether the, the conflict escalates or not from their public pronouncements and, and the, the private messaging over the past two weeks since that Israeli strike in Damascus? Well, there seemed to be little doubt that Iran would undertake some direct action against Israel and that Iran's actions would be uh, thoughtful and based upon its own capabilities and perceptions of adversary weaknesses. So that again pushes you towards drones, missiles, some cyber perhaps, and, and proxies. At the same time, if you're in Tehran, you've got to worry about a potential Israeli retaliation. And Israel's missile, cyber, drone, uh, uh, special operations, and other capabilities are significant. And there are many reports over the years of Israel being able to conduct very significant uh, uh, damaging operations within Iran. So Iran doesn't wish to undertake an offer, a campaign that in essence leads to a series of embarrassing domestic defeats, particularly in a world where it has such a terrible economy and such a, such a large portion of its population opposed to the regime itself. And Israel, of course, has been mired in a, in a war for the past uh, six months in Gaza. They've been facing uh, rocket fire and, and, and other kinds of attacks from Hezbollah in the north to the point where tens of thousands of Israeli citizens have had to move out of their homes. We should note the same thing on the other side of the border and in Lebanon. What do you think the appetite in Israel or, or, or by the Israelis uh, is uh, to, to broaden this out and, and to perhaps strike back at Iran after what we see tonight. I'm um, actually, someone in the chat said, oh, all of uh, the media is reporting this as an Iranian escalation when it's a retaliation. There has been, uh-oh, reports of ballistic missiles observed in the sky over Wasit province in Iraq. This appears to be a land attack cruise missile reportedly over Iraq. So the thing is, um, I'm, I'm, truly shocked and things may change in the coverage i believe that things will change in the coverage once those missiles land if any of them do actually land um if there are any real human casualties um however however so far so far uh i uh, the the coverage has actually been surprising they do consider it to be uh i mean they do mention that this is a a retaliation quite frequently even on CNN, which is why I'm watching CNN. Conflict ends quickly. We have an, an open uh, potential for such actions to take place at any time in the future. This is an inflection point for the region. 
Why do you think Israel decided to go after this building, which, of course, the Iranians are, are claiming was a consulate? Um, they killed seven members of the IRGC, one uh, senior commander who we understand was in charge of uh, Syria and, and Lebanon. Um, he was not a household name for most of us, uh, like Soleimani was, who was, was killed, of course, four years ago. Uh, why do you think Israel decided to undertake that strike? Well, there were seven senior Revolutionary Guards Quds Force officials meeting in one location. Uh, they were almost certainly meeting to review or plan existing and future operations uh, directed against Israel's civilians and uh, Israel's uh, uh, interest in other locations. Uh, this would have represented a significantly valuable target for the Israeli government because removing those individuals... Not oh, only shit, dude. Never mind. Okay, guys, guys, guys. Guys, they were definitely going to plan to kill Israeli... They were... I heard that they were actually planning on raping Israeli babies. So it's totally valid. It's a valid target to hit a fucking consulate compound because I've decided that these guys were actually saying that we will make October 7 look like uh, a walk in the park. That's what they were saying in the consulate, likely. Military, this was an official diplomatic building. Uh, do you have any expectation, for example, that Iran would try to go after population centers and civilians in Israel? Well, generally, Iran's attacks go after only civilian population centers. Oh, my God. Facilities. We saw that in Saudi Arabia through its proxies. Of course, the fucking Farikazoid on, on CNN is just like really out of control. Targets. But in this case, the situation is a little different. Iran this dude wants cooking, to show I that like him. Uh, sort of Bro, this dude is the cooking the seven secret spices in the fucking Kentucky Fried Chicken. That's the only thing he's cooking. Get your ass out of here, bro. <laughs> Chad is be like, I love hearing analysis from a guy who's like, whose entire job was to beg the government to nuke Israel. Yeah, my um, Israel in this situation. It's eleven we know that spices, not been, seven. My bad. The region, uh, but but how do you think specifically the U.S. is, is helping uh, uh, Israel knock these these drones and these missiles out of the sky tonight? There have been public reports that the United States has shared geospatial information which would provide information on the uh, number and frequency of launches within Iran against Israel. Likewise, there are reports that the United States has military aircraft that it's are- It's pretty funny that this guy is saying like, Iran only wants to kill civilians when Israel itself said that Iranian targets are primarily going to be military targets. And, and even other CNN analysts have been like, yeah, Iran is trying to retaliate, uh, in an even-handed approach, an eye for an eye, if you will, uh, to hit the golden zone, the Goldilocks zone, or whatever the fuck. Meanwhile, uh, Colonel Spider Rapist over here, former Brigadier Rear Admiral General Colonel Spider Rapist, is over here being like, you don't understand, okay? Uh, Iranians don't even care about Israel. They just like murder. They like murder of the Jewish population, and that's precisely why this is happening. Don't... Make no mistake, um, it did happen right after uh, uh, the, the Iranian officials said that this would be retaliation for the Damascus embassy strike, but uh, that's just, I mean, they don't know what they're saying. They just wanted to retaliate. That's why they waited six months to retaliate. It's fucked up that this is what LeBron has to say about the war. Nothing like two heavyweights doing what they do best for the love of the sport. That's messed up, dude. I'm going to quote, is, is it cheesy to quote tweet it and be like, nothing like two heavyweights doing what they do best for the love of the sport. <laughs> he's talking about Drake and Kendrick. No, he's talking about Iran and uh, Israel. Drones or cruise missiles before they get to Israel. As Barack Ravid pointed out, the goal is likely to intercept as many as possible before they get to Israel. Sorry, and then of consulate. Course Israel has I'll its edit own it very to say capable, consulate. Multi-layered aerial defense system. Long range would be arrow three. That's designed to intercept or be able to intercept ballistic missile launches. There's the medium range David Sling, and then there's the short range Iron Dome that we've seen used repeatedly. Now, Iran is very much aware, as is Hamas, as is Hezbollah, that these systems are high quality, but their flaw is that they can be overwhelmed with quantity. We have seen this, and I have seen this on the ground in Israel. A number of rockets are fired, and simply enough are fired that Iron Dome can't get to all of them. Now, there is obviously much more time here to coordinate the response and be able to use not only Iron Dome at short range, but David's sling at a much longer range. 
But it seems that Iran's goal here is to try to fire so much that Israel can't intercept all of it, and it will, it will overwhelm the systems, all right? Iran is looking for some way to be able to claim some kind of victory here. So that's what we should be watching out for in the course of the coming hours, as we see not only how many were fired, more than 100 drones at this point, and then we're still waiting for a number of cruise missiles, but whether more is fired not only from Iran, whether it comes from uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon as well, and potentially the Houthis uh, in, the, uh, in, in Yemen. Alex, I will point out one more historical- You guys are wrong. LeBron would not be condemning uh, Iran. He would say Iran has a right to defend itself, bro. 2018, Iranian That's forces he would in say. Syria fired 20 rockets at the occupied Golan Heights in Israel. All of those were intercepted. There was no damage on the ground there. I was there on the ground, but Iran then came out a short time later and said Israel was lying and that the, the rockets had done damage and then claimed victory. Do we see something like that with what is obviously a much larger attack coming from Iran itself? It's worth keeping that in mind as we see how this evening plays out. Yeah, it, it certainly will be. Uh, right now, we know that there are more than 100 attack drones uh, heading towards Israel, along with uh, cruise missiles. Um, so it, it is a, a significant amount of firepower uh, heading that way. It is almost 1 a.m. Uh, in the morning, of course, in, uh, in Israel. Jeremy Diamond is in Jerusalem. Jeremy, I understand you have new reporting. What are you hearing? Yeah, that's right, Alex. I just spoke with an Israeli military official who tells me that it, the Israeli military intends to try and intercept these drones, more than 100 of which have been launched now by Iran before they reach Israeli skies. Uh, we know, of course, that... Chat, Erdogan's not doing shit. Are you crazy? <laughs> like, get out of here, bro. ...be deployed to intercept some of these drones. And so the combination of that could mean that uh, the majority of these drones uh, could potentially be taken down before they even reach Israeli skies. We know, of course, that there is a significant lag time, hours uh, between uh, when these drones were launched from Iran and when they are anticipated uh, to make uh, uh, to uh, arrive uh, in Israeli skies. And so that gives the Israeli military and its partners a significant amount of time to try and intercept them and the goal is indeed to do so before they enter Israeli airspace. I'm also told that Israel anticipates that Iran may launch additional waves of drones. Uh, that may be why the estimates that we got earlier have started to tick up. I was initially told dozens of drones fired uh, launched by Iran. Uh, that has since ticked up to over a hundred. Additionally, uh, Alex, Israel, uh, this Israeli military official would not yet confirm uh, with a hundred percent confidence that uh, cruise missiles have been launched, but uh, he did say that Israel is indeed monitoring other Iranian assets for additional potential types. If none of the Arab Gulf countries are going to do anything, how is World War III? You think the Arab Gulf countries were going to defend Palestinians? They are doing something. They're currently busy intercepting Iranian drones that are flying over their fucking that are flying over their airspace. What do you mean? They are doing something. They're doing something in the direction of defending Israel. We're also, of course, Alex, waiting to see whether this is just going to be coming from Iranian forces directly or whether Iran will also activate its proxies in the region. I think what's so interesting about this moment that we're in is that for six months we have been expecting that if a significant escalation happened to broaden this conflict between Israel and Hamas, that it would come from Hezbollah, where Iran, uh, where Israel and, Iran and, and Hezbollah have been exchanging uh, near daily uh, cross-border uh, cross uh, exchanges of fire. But uh, right now, it seems that the major escalation is instead going to come directly between Israel and Iran, rather than via Iran's proxy forces. But again, waiting to see whether or not those proxy forces could also be pulled in. Yeah, it's such important points, Jeremy. I mean, this is such a, a formidable uh, attack, significant attack by Iran, but they're crossing a huge amount of territory. Um, uh, they're, they're crossing places like Iraq and Jordan, in theory, uh, where there are significant uh, American air defenses uh, and forces uh, that will certainly contribute uh, to uh, the, the efforts to take down these drones and cruise missiles. Uh, I want to note some new reporting from our MJ Lee at the White House. Uh, she's saying that uh, President Biden is meeting with his national security it officially seemed, ballistics uh, right. have launched uh, according to the uh, the Iranian government's official newswire says the first wave of ballistic missiles have been fired against Israel uh, by the US to, to knock down these drones and missiles outside of I Israeli airspace how I suspect that that means depending on I don't know exactly how long it takes for the ballistic missiles depending on uh, what kind of missiles uh, but I suspect that it is timed 
specifically with the first wave of uh, drones. So that means the drones will probably hit around the same time. If it takes around 12 minutes, that means that the first wave of drones will probably hit in the, in, uh, in the same mark uh, entering uh, Israeli airspace. And I think that's what they are saying as well. Anyway. Holy fuck. All right, let's hear what Al Jazeera is saying. Uh, uh, in a way or another. But of course, uh, this doesn't mean that Lebanon in general is going to a, an, an all-out war. Actually, this is not an all-out war yet. This is an operation. The Iranians are retaliating, as they are saying, to the killing of their general in a sovereign land in Syria, which is the consulate. And given that fact, they are going, going to hit, and at the same time, they are going to activate their uh, allies or their, uh, the groups that they are backed by. Now, the issue about Hezbollah, for example, in Lebanon. Now, if we go a bit back to see the bigger picture, why there are Iranian-backed groups in Iraq or in Lebanon or in Yemen or in Syria. Actually, over the past years, since the Iranian Revolution, 1979, Iran has always... How can NATSEC bros look at this and say Iran is at fault? They are being the aggressor as if everything happens in a vacuum? What do you mean? They're paid to... They're either A, paid to fucking feel that way, or B, directly uh, LARPing as a person who's paid to be that way when they are not. Also, this is still not a good thing. For the chatters who are celebrating, you're behaving like you, uh, many of you were on October 7. Okay, if you cannot see how much worse things are going to get, especially given Israel's track record so far, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, not. It's bad. It's just all bad, all really, really bad across the board. Get that live picture over Tel Aviv, um, Sultan Barakat. So we now know that. About 100 drones or more than 100 drones have been launched from Iran. We're also hearing that Tehran has launched um, its first wave of ballistic missiles against Israel as well. Is this going to be sort of a wave of attacks or what do you think is going on here? What do you think the Iranian strategy is? I think a lot depends on what happened between the 1st of, Je of April and today. These back channel talks, we should not underestimate them. This is something that has taken place before in 2020. And it has led to that kind of uh, venting of uh, anger by Iran against the United States and the bombing of the bases in Iraq. And if, if those talks have been serious and they have reached a conclusion where there can be uh, an attack from Iran, but with minimum uh, casualties on uh, Israel, minimum damage, just to allow both sides to climb down, then that is one possibility. And I hope that that is the scenario. If that hasn't taken place, or it's not actually what is going on, and we have a serious attack now from Iran uh, heading towards Israel, then Israel will be uh, uh, seeking its right for defense. And I think they will activate their pre-planned uh, attacks on the nuclear facilities in Iran. I mean, Netanyahu has spoken about this for two decades now, about the nuclear threat Iran uh, constitutes to Israel. He has uh, repeatedly talked about having pre-arranged, uh, ready plans to take out those facilities and so on. So that maybe he will may take it as an opportunity to do to do. To do will this the U.S., the its biggest ally, be looking to rein Israel in at this point? Well, I think uh, this is why I keep putting emphasis on what happened in the back channels, because I think... This is also another interesting perspective that even I forgot to cover here. Iran says it wouldn't need to retaliate if UN had condemned the strike on Damascus. This is from Times of Israel on the 11th of April, 2024. The imperative for Iran to retaliate for the attack on its embassy compound in Damascus might have been avoided had the UN Security Council condemned the strike, Tehran's mission to the United, uh, the United Nations says. Had the UN Security Council condemned the Zionist regime's reprehensible act of aggression on our diplomatic premises in Damascus, and subsequently brought justice to its perpetrators, the imperative for Iran to punish this rogue regime might have been obviated, the mission writes on X. Israel has not publicly commented on the strike. Now, just, just a reminder that that's why uh, the American response to the Damascus embassy strike was very ballistic missiles have been launched. Oh, shit. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know. These are, I, this footage is like.
Do you really think all they wanted was a finger wagging from the UN? No, they also say punish the perpetrators. Here's the thing. The Iran, uh, the Iranian government doesn't really want the smoke either. If they did, they would have fucking retaliated after October 8th, but they never did. If you remember, if you remember one of the, uh, one of the major things that happened after October 7th was something that was truly unique, truly unprecedented. The heads of the Iranian state, the American State Department, and even the Israeli government organs were all collectively saying that Iran did not have anything to do with October 7. That was truly a unique moment, especially because the American State Department and uh, the, the Israeli government love saying everything is Iran's fault. They love it. They love, even when it's not, and in many instances it is, they always say it's Iran's fault. So the fact that they didn't fucking stop trusting Twitter videos, lol. First of all, I'm not. Shut the fuck up, dumb fuck. I literally pulled it up to say, I don't know if this is real or not. And it's not just a random uh, Twitter video anyway. But still, the point is that Iran has showed a lot of restraint thus far. If it were to utilize this as an opportunity for good PR for itself, seeing like the way that the Houthis were treated, Ansar Allah was treated. <laughs> Why spread hate speech? Why can't you show both sides? This seems like a one-sided sh show, and it appears you're enjoying it, praying for peace for our world. I love that, man. Thank you. You've already, like, made up your mind. You're, you've decided that, like, uh, first of all, I am directly showing both sides, as close to both sides as you possibly can. There are no Iranian uh, uh, media channels that I can show you. But, like, I am showing you the American perspective here. I'm showing you the Israeli perspective and very in a very limited fashion, the Iranian perspective. Huh. Chatter came in to be like, I pray for peace as fucking Iranian drones are about to make, uh, about the, the land in Israel. Six months of genocide, no, no prospect for peace. Six months of genocide, no demand for peace. And, and the, the first instance of like the Iranian retaliation tries like, let's pray for peace guys. Let's put an end to this. You, you think we haven't been praying? Sword against Iran to prevent further attacks, not because it wishes to escalate the conflict, but whether some sort of action, be it cyber, be it a drone, some other operation could degrade Iran's capability to fire additional ballistic missiles against Israel. General Mark Hurtling, uh, Norm there makes a good point. We should obviously be taking uh, with a grain of salt uh, what we're hearing from Iranian state media here. They're the ones reporting that these, uh, this first barrage of ballistic missiles has been fired uh, at Israel. We previously reported cruise missiles and, and drones. Um, but, but General Hurtling, to, to what extent uh, do you think that this is a, a matter of minutes? Can you lay out the timing uh, of what we could expect to see? Because obviously those drones are moving a lot slower uh, than many of those missiles, if they are indeed uh, flying at Israel. Yeah, we, we discussed this earlier, Alex, and I think what we're seeing is the potential for those drones to continue the movement toward the Israeli border as Israel prepares for it. And at the same time, the, the cruise missiles, if, if they have in fact been launched, could reach their uh, much faster. So the, the cruise missiles are going to overwhelm the big systems, as Alex uh, or as uh, Oren Lieberman and, and uh, Jeremy Diamond both mentioned. Those will be the priority targets at first to knock down those cruise missiles and destroy them. Then will come the drones, and that will overwhelm the rest of the systems. If it's been synchronized well, and, and what I suggested earlier might happen, is you'd have a combination of those Iranian drones, Iranian cruise missiles, a sudden launch of rockets from Hezbollah, as Mr. Rule posited, and also some uh, cruise missiles coming out of Yemen that have been launched by the Houthis. They should, if, if this was a well-coordinated action, they would all hit at the same time. Or if they're sequential, it could also cause significant challenges for the Israeli air defense. And that's why I think you're going to see the United States uh, with their systems in the area, helping to defend and, and actually attack those incoming missiles from a bunch of different directions. But again, it, depending on the numbers, the directions, and the types, you're going to see a very complex attack, and it's going to be very challenging to the air defenders uh, and, and the soldiers, sailors, and airmen in the area. 
Are, are these missiles and drones more likely to get intercepted outside of Israeli airspace, or are there more formidable air defense systems inside of Israel? Yeah, it, 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 there's an acronym we use some. Bro, can you just pray for peace for everyone? Is that too hard to ask? Are you fucking stupid? Of course I want that. Why are you guys cynically? Oh, fuck you. Top of the hour, bozo. God damn it. God damn it, dude. Oh my God. Oh my fucking God, dude. Oh my God. Maybe there's some fucking spare drones that can come target me in fucking West Hollywood. Holy shit, dude. This is a unique set of circumstances to be hitting a fucking ad break debate on, okay? I am not guarded against that sort of thing. The Iron Dome is not working in that direction. You son of a bitch. Imagine taking advantage of this. My my momentary lapse of judgment and my weakness to to fucking debate me at the top of the hour. Okay, well, I digress. At the top of the hour, there is a three-minute ad break, and if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. That is your defense against the top of the hour ad break and the three minutes of ads that you will see. 1436. All right, here's the three minute ad break now. So it's much more challenging from an operator's perspective to knock those down. And Oral Lieberman at the Pentagon, uh, over the past few days, the head of uh, Central Command, so that, uh, well, we don't have Oren apparently, uh, but I want to go back to Norm Rule. Uh, we've seen over the past few days, Norm, uh, General Carrilla, the, the head of Central Command, which is the, the area of operation, which is the Middle East, uh, he's been in Israel. Uh, what, what have you made of his activities and, and his messaging uh, while he's been been there. What is the, the message Who's uh, that Thank the U.S. You for the has five been trying to sense. send by having General Carrilla in, in place? General Carrilla's presence in Israel is a tangible demonstration that the U.S. is willing to marry together our finest and most uh, uh, experienced regional military personnel with Israeli operators to plan an effective defense that, it, that exploits mutual capabilities. And moving back to the point made, the strong point. Our General best generals, Hartman, only the sexiest generals. That uh, CENTCOM has uh, very effectively and uh, used against the Houthis north to support Israeli systems, as well as the existing air defense systems in the eastern Mediterranean, required some high-level conversations, as well as probably some understanding of what we could do over Iraq, and perhaps some sense of what regional partners would do. For example, some countries such as Saudi Arabia and Jordan would not want Iranian missiles transiting their territory or running drones. They may not want to be very public about shooting it down, but they have a responsibility to protect their territory. And how that might play out requires the conversations that would draw in the uh, uh, senior most officials of CENTCOM. All right. I want everyone to stay with us. Our breaking news on CNN continues right now. We got our we got our sexiest generals on board. Don't worry, they look so thumb like they're the they're the best generals we got. I R N A State Ram reports first batch of ballistic missiles. Yeah, we already covered it. Ballistic missiles have also now been launched in the direction of Israel. Was put in a position after Israel carried carried out that attack in Damascus, killing high ranking Revolutionary Guard commanders, including one of his closest friends, um, the Brigadier General Mohammad Reza Zahedi. So certainly, I think the Supreme Leader, along with other high ranking officials here, felt that they were in a position that they had no choice but to respond to Israel, not only because they were going to certainly look weak to their proxies in the region, but also to deter Israel from repeating these kinds of attacks, which uh, the Supreme Leader himself was an act of war, where they, which they carried out on Iranian soil when they attacked the Iranian consulate in Damascus. Okay, Dorsa, thank you so much for the time being. Well, it's just past 2200 hours GMT, so we're bringing you continuing coverage of Iran launching waves of missiles and drones at Israel. Senior U.S. officials have told American media they believe as many as 400 to 500 drones and missiles will be launched towards Israeli territory. It comes nearly two weeks after an attack on the Iranian consulate in Syria, which Tehran has blamed on Israel. Well, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is meeting with his war cabinet right now, and the Israeli combat planes are in the air. Schools across the country have been closed for three days, and Tel Aviv's Ben-Gurion airport is temporarily shut. Earlier, he said the country is prepared for any scenario. 
Israeli citizens, in recent years and even more so in recent weeks, Israel has been preparing for the possibility of a direct attack from Iran. Our defense systems are deployed. We are prepared for any scenario both in defense and attack. The state of Israel is strong, the IDF is strong, and the public is strong. We appreciate the U.S. standing by Israel's side, as well as the support of Great Britain, France, and many other countries. I established a clear principle, whoever hurts us, we hurt them. We will protect ourselves from any threat and will do so with coolness and determination. I know that you Israeli chatters. Is there anyone in the country that thinks that, like, the Damascus embassy strike is a, uh, was an unreasonable act of war from Netanyahu that is causing this retaliation? Or is everyone just, like, on board with this uh, and, and more on board with him, or is he more galvanized than before? Austin said Israel full U.S. support against attacks by Iran. While Jordan, Iraq, and Israel have all temporarily closed their airspace, this comes up. There are Israeli chatters in here. The Israeli left is in here. The GPS navigation system. We have a team of correspondents covering the story. I'm we not asking if you guys are uh, in that of that mindset. If you're in here, you probably are. I'm talking about are there is there. Is there like a large enough movement in Israel that even recognizes this as like the attack on Israel by the regime in Iran is going to be more extensive than initially expected? Uh-oh. and missiles towards the occupied Palestinian territories and that this was a plan that was approved by the Supreme National Security Council along with other defense officials in the country and that more details will be released soon. And according to a source speaking to in the state news agencies, the first phase of ballistic missiles have also been launched toward, towards Israel. We also heard from the country's defense minister uh, saying that any country that opens its airspace or soil for an attack against Iran will be met with a decisive response. Also important to point out that the wave of drones that we've seen heading towards Israel appear to be the Shahed 136 drones that we've seen being used extensively by Russia in Ukraine. Uh, the Iranian Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdullahian has said on his ex-social media account that um, the necessary warnings were provided to the United States, indicating that the uh, officials in the United States were well aware in advance of what was coming, and it was made clear that Iran is targeting Israel and it doesn't want direct confrontation with the United States. And, Dorsa, um, any sort of information you're hearing about how Iran would be preparing for an Israeli response if there indeed is one? No, we have had no official uh, warnings or um, any kind of alerts by the Iranian officials for the general public uh, since the past few days or even the past few hours. Uh, there has been no um, guidance provided for the general public in Iran. There has been no warnings issued about flights cancel being cancelled or anything of that nature. Uh, but Israel has made it very clear that it will... So the people saying, like, war is good for views in here? Fear mongering is on hard tonight. Bro, do you think I've stopped covering the fucking genocide of the Palestinian population in spite of the fact that people refuse to want to listen to it any longer? No. It's not my fault that people only fucking care about it when there's like breaking war happening. I'm a political commentator. I cover politics. I cover the news. No matter what fucking happens, you're in here right now today because you're interested. Maybe you feel embarrassed that you're only interested in it now, you know? It's not like I've stopped covering the ethnic cleansing campaign that uh, Gazans withstood. I never stopped it, despite the, uh, despite my viewership plummeting as a consequence of people that didn't want to even fucking hear uh, that uh, that Israel could be doing, uh, Israel could be doing ethnic cleansing territory. Uh, the first barrage of ballistic missiles we understand has been launched as well, and. There have been rockets uh, fired by Hezbollah against uh, Israeli positions in the occupied Golan Heights. And uh, Houthi, uh, the Houthis have launched drones, we understand, against Israel as well. So a multi-phased, multi-pronged, uh, multi-threat assault uh, is underway at the moment with Israel as the target. Israel has 
a very capable uh, air defense system, a multi, multi-layer multi air defense system that's made up of Iron Dome, it's made up of something called David Sling, uh, it's made up of Arrow 2 and Arrow 3 as well. But not just that, it also has the help of various other countries and parties um, from local uh, allies, such as Jordan, who are trying to shoot down some of the drones that might be going over its territory at the moment, but also the United States and partners like France uh, and the UK. We under, uh, the ind- indications are starting to come in that French and uh, UK planes might be assisting Israel as well in targeting these drones or, and other targets and, and shooting them down. But Israel has not faced uh, a, a threat like this before with uh, a, an onslaught of drones combined with missiles. It will be a severe test uh, of its multi-layered air defense system. There will be electronic warfare that's going on at the moment, trying to disrupt uh, the navigation systems of those drones and the navigation systems of uh, the missiles that might be incoming as well. Uh, plus, you've got the things that, you know, the air defense that will, will be shooting things down. Plus Planes up in the air. I've been hearing jets. Uh, well, what do you mean? Jets in the sky. What is it wrong? Gain from this senseless so attack? All of these things are I think a lot of people unfortunately have either amnesia or lacked object permanence. They don't pay attention to the news and only pay attention to it when shit's popping off. Israel attacked Iranian soil in Syria by attacking the Iranian consulate compound last week as the rest of the world stood by and said nothing. It's been six months of ethnic cleansing happening in Gaza, and Iran only showed restraint in that time frame. At a certain point, if Israel keeps consistently trying to open up new fronts, regional actors have to retaliate for self-preservation. So on that front, it is not a senseless attack. But even if you weren't, paying attention to anything that was going on until this very moment, you can at least hear what these people are saying in front of you, the journalists that are covering it. Yeah, no, that's uh, groups of more than a thousand people are uh, uh, a band at the moment assembling together. Right. We understand that schools and universities, any educational facility is going to be closed uh, for the next couple of days at least, and uh, Israeli airspace is shut. Yeah, Rory, and those demonstrations that you were speaking of were taking place in Tel Aviv, so let me bring it. Um, Elit News, update from the Golan Heights. Residents of a number of Israeli communities in the Golan Heights are ordered to stay near shelters. Anyway. Ministry right in the heart of Tel Aviv, and it's also where there was a protest happening right outside of it, calling to oust that same prime minister. So there is a lot of fear. There is a lot of worry. The police, in fact, ended up telling demonstrators to leave this protest immediately because of new guidelines that were issued by the Israeli army and by the Home Front Command, which is essentially rules and regulations that everyone must follow when it comes to these types of emergency situations. So those guidelines state that as of 11 p.m. tonight, gatherings of more than a thousand people are banned, which is why this protest was broken up. But it's, it was quite interesting hearing from demonstrators there who even said on the loudspeaker that in the face of this Iranian attack, whatever might come their way, they still want new leadership. So the Israeli security and defense officials have been preparing for this for quite some time, essentially since April 1st, since they knew that there was going to be some some sort of retaliation for their airstrikes on the Iranian consulate building in Damascus, killing several IRGC commanders, some of them quite senior as well. The Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant has spoken with American counterparts, speaking with the U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin two times in the last several days alone. And this evening, he said that Israel now has what they're calling new capabilities, not just on the defense front, but also in terms terms of a response, what those new capabilities will look like are still unknown. The Israelis are also kind of hoping for neighboring countries in the region like Jordan to help shoot down these several drones that are coming in. The Iranians say they're also firing ballistic missiles. But 
when it comes to an attack of this size and scale, Israel has never been faced with anything like this. And we heard from our colleague Rory in occupied East Jerusalem, who talked about this air defense system that is threefold. The Iron Dome missile defense system is the most commonly used in Israel, but it's for short to medium range projectiles, meaning this is for rockets that don't really have any sort of guidance with them. They're not very technologically advanced. These are rockets we see primarily coming from Gaza. But in this war, the David Sling has been deployed once, and we haven't really seen Israel use the Aero system, which is actually twofold, one and two. The Iranian weapons capabilities are something that Israel has not fought against, so it's surely going to be a test to how well they say they are going to protect themselves. And the Didn't they use Aero against the Yemeni, uh, the Yemeni missiles that fucking reached, like, uh, reached space? Percent. We even saw that in the beginning of the war I think on that's Gaza the last time when there they were barrages used of rockets coming from the Gaza Strip. The Iron Dome missile. Remember, the Iron Dome is for small projectiles like bathtub rockets and shit, and it's pretty effective. But they have obviously different. Uh, <clears throat> they have different anti-missile systems beyond that for much larger capabilities. Indeed. That okay. both Iran and Hezbollah. Uh, have and well, including, I guess, the US uh, Yemen Joe too. Joe Biden has now cut a weekend trip short. He's returned to Washington, D.C. to consult with his national security team. Heidi Jo Castro is joining us from Washington, uh, D.C. And we understand that that meeting has now begun, Heidi. That's right. Joe Biden is in the Oval Office meeting with the National Security Council, the senior members, which include the U.S. Secretary of Defense, the Secretary of State, as well as the joint, the chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff, the CIA director and the National, Secu uh, the National Intelligence Director, all of these senior U.S. officials putting their heads together to coordinate, according to a spokesperson, the U.S.'s response alongside with Israel to this attack from Iran. What that coordination and what the actions will look like, that is what's unclear. So far, there has been no indication that the U.S. has engaged its forces against the incoming Iranian strike, though that may change and how that may look like um, depends on, of course, the, the force posturing. And we have seen over the last few days as this uh, attack from Iran was imminent that the, U the Pentagon has been u moving around U.S. warships and warplanes, and now at least two destroyers uh, are in the region poised to perhaps uh, help assist uh, Israel in taking down any of these incoming uh, missiles or drones. Notably, at least one of these ships does carry an Aegis uh, missile defense system, which is capable of taking down a ballistic missile. Uh, we'll have to see whether it is engaged. We, of course, know that the U.S. Defense Secretary has been in close consultation with Israel's defense minister through the last few days, now touching base multiple times a day and working in close coordination as the two countries together decide how to respond to this Iranian attack. Notably, the disagreement that has been very publicly made over Gaza between Biden and Netanyahu about Israel's course of action there having sure. been set aside as now this attack from Iran takes center stage. Heidi, would the U.S. Had been, have been given advance notice through diplomatic channels about this Iranian attack from Iran itself? Well, it appears that if, if this is speculation, but if the timing of it does appear that the President Biden knew about this attack before we knew about it, uh, which would be of no surprise. He cut short a weekend vacation at his beach home in Delaware and was already en route back to Rehoboth. Washington as we saw the first drones launched in Iran. We also know that just yesterday, Biden specifically told reporters he thought that an attack from Iran would be sooner rather than later. He wouldn't cite the specific intelligence, but the U.S. and the White House has been preparing for this moment over the last few days, saying that it had also ramped up its coordination with Israel in preparation for this. Notably, the, the head of the U.S. Central Command uh, had just been in Israel in consultation guys, about how to respond to this. Guys, many of you are making fun of him for going on vacation, but 
little do you know, it actually takes a major toll on an 800-year-old demon's uh, existence when you are unconditionally offering support to a regional ally that has greatly over-leveraged its support and is dangerously unstable, especially as they're continuously doing an ethnic cleansing campaign while simultaneously opening up new fronts in a regional war that they want to draw your country to, okay? Sometimes you have to go out to your Delaware house and, you know, enjoy the sun, I guess. Please, totally valid. Find the response to the proxy group. So let me start off by admitting failure. Um, I think that it's clear that what they're trying to do is saturate Israel's air defenses and inflict some sort of damage. I don't know what the um, targets are. I don't think anybody does at this <laughs> point. But, um, a, you know, a long, uh, multiple attack by drones taking hours to get there, Israel clearly has the ability to attrit a significant number of those drones en route. I think they will deal with the drones as one threat, and they will deal with ballistic missiles as another threat. Um, I don't think that any U.S. Uh, capability will come into play in defending Israel because um, our assets, are, um, our missile defense assets, are either in the Gulf or they're in the Mediterranean. Right. Um, to, to really be effective, you have to be on the path that's being over overflight by the missiles. Okay, hang so on a second. You're the, raising a lot of points here. Let's just break, let's just break uh, some of the points down. Um, on the point sorry. you make about the drones, right? You're saying so they're going to take a few hours to arrive to Israel, but we now know that missiles have been launched as well, reportedly cruise missiles. Um, what's what's mm -hmm. the strategy there and what impact? I know you said that you don't know what the targets are, but what impact could we expect the drones and the missiles to have? Okay, good question. So um, let me let me start. Well, so so we don't know what they're looking at. Drones generally have a small um, uh, relatively small warhead. Uh, the Iranian model of drones typically is about this big. It's the size of about two coffee cans, and it has copper penetrators on each side. So what we've seen in Ukrainian um, usage of the Russians, for example, is that they, they aim them at machinery to cause maximum damage. So it would be possible that these would be uh, fired at civilian infrastructure, such as the power grid, to disrupt it. That's what we've seen in Ukraine. They don't have the ability to penetrate hardened structures. So it's um, not a decisive military weapon. It's more of a harassment weapon and effective against civilian infrastructure. Cruise missiles uh, are basically unmanned um, jets that fly, you know, at, at a low level. They would have the ability to carry a larger warhead and create more damage. Um, they're also a little bit more precise because they're less affected by uh, weather and damage, uh, weather and going off stream as they cover the large distance. Ballistic missiles, if you know, ballistic missiles take minutes, not hours, to get from Iran or um, Iran. How does Israel benefit from dragging the U.S. into this conflict? What do you mean? Israel wants total elimination of Iran. Israel wants to nuke Iran. America is the number one country on the planet. It's the top dog. It's the hegemonic superpower. Having America in your corner means more weapons. Having America in your corner means better support directly from the largest actor in every region. Yeah, they're calling big bro. They're calling daddy. That's what it is. That's literally what it is. It's just like they can't handle it on their own. Of course, they can't handle Iran on their own. So they're calling daddy. So um, the issue, the first issue is can you acquire these? And the second is do you have the ability to... Israel is like having uh, like a Damien style, Omen style evil child, okay? You know they're a fucking asshole. You know they're a bully. They're being increasingly more fucking violent. We're not doing anything to stop them. And then, of course, eventually as the parent, we got to step in and defend the piece of shit child that we have. In some ways, we've basically also, you know, trained them to behave this way. And that is probably because some of these missiles, uh, we believe, are guided by um, the Russian version of GPS. So if you disrupt that, the missiles go off course and, you know, they, they won't hit their intended target. So that's the first one. The second is, I would expect against drones and possibly cruise missiles that the Israelis would launch aircraft, uh, helicopters and fast movers, and try to just shoot them down kinetically. Um, the challenge there is not so much can you do damage, it's can you find them, because, um, you know, like the Shahid is made out of fiberglass, it has a very low radar 
signature. Um, so what you would have to do is uh, project forward where they're coming from. And then uh, against the ballistic missiles, I think that um, that's where you get into things like David's sling and arrow. Um, those are your defenses against ballistic missiles. There's the possibility of some electronic warfare defense. When you get to your terminal phase, Iron Dome may be of some use against drones and possibly cruise missiles, but only in limited uh, areas. Uh, and I think that uh, uh, Patriot, which Israel has, uh, would be used against uh, uh, ballistic missiles, but again, only in limited areas. Right. Cruise missiles, I think, would be dealt with as aircraft. Do you expect an Israeli retaliation? Boy, that's a good question. Um, and as I said, I got I got the Iranian response wrong. I thought it'd be proxies. I think there will be. It depends on the damage. Um, so, you know, if Israel manages to intercept uh, most of these and no serious damage is done, then it's quite possible that they'll just say, OK, and there'll be some pro forma action against um, Revolutionary Guard personnel elsewhere in Syria, which we've been seeing for months and indeed years. Yeah. Famously restrained uh, Israel, the famously restrained nation state of Israel. The only way Israel restrains itself after this is if America is like done, you're done. You're fucking done. Stop it, bro. They've been doing military. They've been doing air force training in Cyprus uh, for, for bombing Iranian targets on Iranian soil. Okay. They literally, depending on the casualties, they will, I mean, the likelihood that they won't escalate is pretty low. All things considered the looking at their fucking current track record. Okay of the region if Israel is able to restore deterrence through its defensive capabilities. And um, what about the U.S.? What What's their role well, right, in all of this? I mean, we well, know... Yeah, go ahead. Less, go. less than we think. So the uh, ships in the Mediterranean will be unable to play any significant role in the defense of Israel. Um, their Aegis is only effective... At, Again, it's most effective against missiles that directly overfly it. And uh, the indications I'm seeing is that, um, you know, the Iranian missiles are not being launched across the Gulf, across Saudi Arabia. They're being launched <sighs> over the, along the border with Iraq. Um, there is no high level intercept capability for missiles uh, at the U.S., at any U.S. facility uh, in Iraq or Syria. Um, so, you know, the forces would just watch them go past. Uh, I think that our role is to probably resupply Israel. Their, um, to missile, what extent would they be coordinating would... Israel's response if there is one and advising the Israelis? Yeah. One, well, one possibility is there may be, there may be a coordination huh. of electronic warfare and certainly threat coordination, you know, sharing of flight paths and capabilities. Uh, and then, of course, there will also be resupply of Israel's uh, surface-to-air uh, missile inventory. I think that that's something that we can expect. Okay. But um, it's, we're not going to be directly involved in shooting down missiles, I don't think. All right. We will wait to see how this develops. For the time being, <laughs> David Zarosh, we thank you for speaking to us from Washington, D.C. Dude, DC. this is my favorite. My favorite. My favorite Olsen guy. Um, baited. Got it. Okay. Um, Israel de-escalating after this. Also, Loki shows that same reality that I've been repeating over and over again, which is that they only respond to force. Israel historically only backs down when they are met with force. The only other way that Israel ever backs down is if America tells them to fucking back down. That's it. Why did Iran broadcast this? Because they, because they broadcasted it for two reasons. One, because it's like pretty hard to fucking hide thousands of fucking drones and missiles being launched from Iran and other regional actors in the direction of Israel. And two, because they believe that they have the legal grounds to do so. The Iranian embassy in the UN says we attack the Zionist regime in accordance to article 51 of the UN charter attack in self-defense following the attack in Damascus. The matter is over, but the Israeli regime may make another mistake. And then Iran's reaction will be much more severe this is a conflict between Iran and the Israeli regime. Their U.S. should keep its distance. Anyway, according to some news, Turkey has closed its airspace to U.S. Fuck no. There's no way. Y'all are crazy. Yeah, Iran is doing a little bit of de-escalatory bombing, if you know what I mean.
have around 2,500 U.S. troops. In Syria, you have about 900 U.S. military personnel. And over the course of the past several months, since October 7th, you had close to 170 attacks emanating from inside. I saw that Iraq too. Turkey closed the airspace all over Instagram. Assets in Iraq. No, bro. I'm sure Turkey has closed its actual airspace as far as like commercial air traffic or whatever in order to, you know, in order for the safety, uh, in order to secure all commercial airliners. But I doubt that they would literally stop American airplanes from flying out of Injilik, for example. Um, Breaking, Israeli source tells GLZ Radio that more than 100 of the drones launched to Israel have already been intercepted outside Israeli territory by the USA and Britain out of hundreds of UAVs in total launch. That's what they're saying. They are uh, they are already intercepting them, which was, of course, going to happen. Can we get a Zionist celebrity actor traveling to Israel roll call after today? Oh, my God. We'll see. Dozens of Katushas that are being fired. But if Iran were choreographing this, which we believe to some extent they, they certainly did, um, is this the stage in this response where the other proxies would now get involved as those Iranian weapons, the drones, the missiles are getting closer to Israel? Yeah, I, I think so, Alex. And, and, and Mr. Rule would be the best to ask this, but I actually thought Hezbollah would act much sooner uh, and actually prep the way. You're going to see not only Hezbollah, uh, but also the popular mobilization forces at, or fronts in other countries probably chime in. It doesn't necessarily mean that Iran is controlling their actions or telling them what to do. What we've seen in the past in this area is they just do it because they want to contribute. Much like we've seen the second front they've opened up is Israel has gone into Gaza. Uh, no one has told them to do that. They're just doing it. So. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's not surprising at all. Uh, but again, I go back to what several of your, your guests have said. This is more than a proportional response. This is significantly greater than a proportional resp re re response. And not, I, for, I, for one, did not expect it to be as significant as it is. All right, I'm going to ask you all to, to stay with me as we bring in Congressman Jason Crow, a Democrat who is on the intelligence. What are they supposed to do, bro? I mean... No matter what Iran did, he'd be like, yeah, it's completely unacceptable because they just don't want anyone to retaliate to Israel. Where General Hurtling <laughs> uh, just left off in terms of his surprise about what we're seeing this evening uh, with multiple waves of different kinds of weapons coming from uh, Iran. And now it appears more uh, rocketry, Katusha rockets coming uh, from Hezbollah. Your reaction, sir, to, to what we're seeing? Well, it's a significant response, uh, Alex. Israeli chatter here, do you believe Israel actually might not respond? No. I do think that it is very likely that Israel will respond. Just judging by, like, America's lack of interest in restraining Israel and Benjamin Netanyahu's interest of self-preservation at any cost, like, that war cabinet is fucked. Unless, like, dude, anything short of, like, a Shin Bet assassination of, like, all of the most right-wing institution, uh, all of the most right-wing, like, war cabinet members... I don't think Israel is changing course. Either that or America just being like, yeah, you're done. Stop it. We're not going to help you at all. Because why would they? This is the whole point. I, 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 why else would they strike the fucking Iranian consulate compound in Damascus? Why would they do that? That's one step removed from directly striking Iran. They did that because they wanted to broaden the conflict and have this look at, like it's a state versus state, uh, dr uh, knowing full well that, of course, Iran would retaliate, and knowing full well that America would most likely defend Israel unconditionally. And that is precisely what's happening so far. Something needs to change. They said they didn't do it. I'm confused. Yeah, dude, definitely. It is always awesome when Israel will be like, yeah, we did it, and it was awesome. And then they'll be like, no, i just kidding. We didn't do it, as a matter of fact. Come on, bro. They literally... Why do you think mainstream media is like, it's actually totally valid to strike a fucking embassy because we've decided that there were like uh, really scary guys talking about really scary shit about what they're going to do to the Jewish people uh, uh, in, in Israel or whatever the fuck. Like, why are they fantasizing about why it was a hypothetically justifiable act of war if it wasn't Israel? If it wasn't Israel, they just go, it's not Israel. Why are you blaming Israel? You must be anti-Semitic. Tolerance for a broader Middle East conflict changed recently? Are they now looking for a broader conflict with the United States and our allies? Because 
you know, uh, before this, they really haven't been. You know, they have been content to engage in destabilizing efforts, to use their proxies to conduct attacks. They yeah. Just yeah, I call bullshit on Israel because that shit happens in embassies and shit. No, that it's just embassies kind of just do that on their own. You know what I mean? <laughs> Bro, you don't understand. Embassies always just kind of blow up on their own. Like, that's normal. Uh, hello? Another very common thing, people that sometimes walk into the Saudi embassy, for example, find themselves chopped up with a bone saw. It's just a natural thing that happens, dude. It's like going in the water, you're going to get wet, right? Yeah, it's not funny. Embassies only do that when they're stressed. It's not funny, nor is it cute. Hello, embassy expert Move assets here. into the region. There were already ships um, in the eastern Mediterranean, the Red Sea, the Gulf of Aden. Um, are, are you happy with the level of support? Do you think uh, that the U.S. is, is uh, doing a, is going to do an effective job at protecting Israel, helping protect Israel uh, from what is incoming right now? Probably. Well, time will tell that. Um, you know, what I, what I can say is, that we have been doing all the things in preparation to defend against an attack that I think were necessary, surging resources into the region. Uh, the Papa John's currently pretty busy by the Pentagon. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder why. Qatari Dancer, thank you for the 100 community gift to subs, by the way. Qatari Dancer is just like, fuck it, YOLO, world is ending. Might as well dump all my remaining funds into you, Hassan. To actually arrive to, exactly. to Israel. Um, what about... Um... Let's let's talk about actually the UK prime minister who came out very quickly and condemned the Iranian attack on Israel. And we understand that President Biden uh, will be giving an address to the nation at some point. We believe in the next Bro, few hours. The bombs haven't even fucking landed on Israel. And Rishi Sunak was like, how dare you, Iran? How dare you? Struck <laughs> that Iranian consulate in Damascus, killing the, the seven uh, commanders and this in fact is the reason why Iran says it carried out this retaliation yeah, absolutely I mean it's one thing that this is a reflection of the double standards on the part of the Western powers so on the one hand thank you sexy they give Israel the, uh, the free hand the Israel can do whatever they want to uh, the Israel is going to do whatever they want to do with impunity but when some other people retaliate they immediately condemn that and and this is actually uh, um, they create a, a kind of anti-Western sentiments in this part of the world. Oh, yeah. But also, it gives them ammunition. It, uh, oh, yeah. The Iran Everybody knows what the fuck is up, bro. Everyone in the Muslim world, everyone in that region in general, everyone sees what the fuck is up. Everyone. It's like, really, dude? A, a, a ethnic cleansing happening for six months? I sleep. Israel strikes Iranian consulate? I sleep. Iran retaliates after literally saying that they're going to retaliate for a fucking week. Whoa, 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 chill out, bro. Chill, that's condemnable. Yeah, of course, of course, everyone sees what the fuck is going on. Oh my God, the U.S. House to consider legislation to support Israel next week. Republican Majority Leader Scalise. Yeah. By the way, Saxy Panda Bear, thank you for the 100 gift to subs. Hassan's HRT dealer and Jay Ghost, thank you for the gift to subs as well. Um, when will I start The Walking Dead season finale today? I don't know. I feel like we uh we may have fucked that up. Eliza Ames. A1 is day one. Thank you for the 10 gifted. Fishy, thank you for the 20 gifted. Yeah. Let's see what the latest developments are. France on Saturday condemned the strongest possible terms of the Iranian strike on Israel by taking such an unprecedented action. <laughs> Everyone is like, dude, wow. Wow. I can't believe you guys did this. Like, you're not supposed to retaliate, dude. Everybody knows you're not supposed to retaliate. Calm like a Tom. What the fuck's going on right now? Thank you for the 20 gifted. Yeah. ...be more severe. It is a conflict between Iran and the rogue Israeli regime from which the U.S. must stay away. I think this is a olive branch being extended by the Iranian officials at the U.N. saying that this attack that is uh, happening at the moment is going to be uh, the response that Iran will have to the Israeli um, act, uh, the strike in its consulate section in Damascus on April 1st, and warning at the same time that uh, the United States should not get directly involved. Any kind of uh, assistance provided to the Israeli military will be seen as direct interference uh, by the United States, and that is something Iran has warned against, saying that this is a conflict between Iran and Israel, and they wanted to stay that way. There is no desire for the Iranians to further expand this conflict. Uh, you know, for, the, for Iran, Dorsa, we heard over and over again that they felt like they had no choice this time around but to respond to Israel, despite this having happened before. I mean, it's not the first time that Israel 
has killed Iranian commanders on Syrian soil. No, since uh, just since October 7th, in Syria alone, 18 Revolutionary Guard members have been killed by Israeli airstrikes alone. Now, that is not uh, even considering Lebanon and, and also attacks that have happened over the years inside Iran. And of course, um, this is something Iran felt like was just crossing a red line. The Iranians had said that this was an attack um, on their... Yes, if, if like, full-scale nuclear war happens, how are people celebrating this? Real easy for you to celebrate this shit, safe on the other side of the world? Let's not forget Hamas. Wait, 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 wait. Was that a... Was that an Israeli chatter talking about how fucking afraid he is? Wait, hold on. First of all, you shouldn't celebrate this, okay? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. It is an Israeli. Yo, chat. Hold up. We got one. Why would you ban that guy? Come on. Come on, dude. Let me see what he had to say real quick. Hold up. First message in the chat. Wait, can I pull it over here? What the fuck? I can't. God damn it. He said, what's his name? Wait, hold up. What was his name? Young Peasy? Give it to me so I can click on it. Monkey YZP. Oh, there it is. Okay. A couple things to address here. How are you people celebrating this? Real easy for you to celebrate this shit safe on the other side of the world. Let's not forget Hamas started this war. Israel retaliated. Iran had no reason to attack other than anti-Semitism from an Israeli currently shaking. Okay. So, one, welcome to the broadcast. Two, uh, stay safe. Three, there are plenty of other Israelis in here as well. You're not alone. Um, but one thing you have to understand is that, one, Israel is an apartheid state. So, no, October 7 isn't the first time that this war started. It was an apartheid state for 75 years of its existence. Started off with the Nakba. It's a pretty deadly and devastating uh, attack anyway. Pretty violent overall. The inception of the Israeli state was a pretty violent one. Um, but beyond that, if you feel right now in this very moment, genuine fear for your safety and your life, and that's totally understandable because, because there are currently missiles being lobbed in your direction. Remember that that is the existence that you're defending every single fucking day for every single child in Gaza. Okay. Every single child in Gaza has lived with that fear in perpetuity. There's never been a single moment and you at least have a standing military, you have bunkers, you have bomb shelters, you have all the amenities, you have billions of dollars of support from the West, you can go different, go to different places, okay? The reality of the matter is, and there are plenty of Israelis in here, plenty of anti-Zionist Israelis in here, who recognize that pain and the suffering that their government causes, just like there are many Americans in here, this is primarily an American community, who understands the pain we cause globally. You can't come in here and expect sympathy in this very moment while simultaneously justifying that it was actually Hamas that started it and that Iran decided to retaliate because of anti-Semitism, okay? Was it anti-Semitism? Was, was that the reason why Israel chose to strike Iranian soil in Damascus? by striking the consulate compound in Damascus? Because that's the reason why Iran is retaliating. That's bullshit. You can't do that. But be safe regardless. There are red alerts uh, all over. Massive air raid alerts across Israel are happening now. Maybe he just fucking stopped. Maybe he had to go and shelter. Anyway, as I was gonna say, is like if World War III broke out, I'd be so mad because Shogun needs to end first, okay? We, I need to watch the finale of Shogun, okay? Both southern and northern Israel under red alert, possibly Iranian missile slash drone attack underway. I think it's uh, approximately around five minutes out. Cam 4, by the way, wild stuff. Where is Cam 4? Oh, shit, what the fuck? Is that... Wait, what? Oh, those are, uh, those are the Tamir interceptors. Yo, Ashkelon! Dude, that was scary as fuck. I don't know why. Bro, I don't know why it felt like... Yep, they're they're in. They're on. This is a they're familiar sight for you, Nick, and for those of us who've been following this war. Holy fuck, that scared me. Like I was fucking sitting behind the camera or something. As the Iron Dome intercepts that you've been seeing for the past few months, how different is this? It, it's a little different. It's hard for me to assess. There's the sirens now, guys. Are we on air? And those are the sirens, Nick Robertson. You are on air. Uh, those are the sirens that are sounded by Israeli authorities uh, to yes, warn residents. 
in this case of Jer in Jerusalem, of incoming rocket fire. What you're looking at there, live pictures of Jerusalem, the hills of Jerusalem, just before 2 o'clock local time in the morning. It has been several hours since we first reported that Iran had launched more than 100 drones at Israel from Iranian territory, followed shortly thereafter by cruise missiles and then a wave of ballistic missiles. It has just been a matter of time until we believed that that combination of firepower would be arriving at Israel's doorstep. We know that the U.S. has helped intercept some of those drones. I believe these are the first sirens for this evening, uh, indicating that there may be some incoming drone or rocket fire. Nick Robertson, if you're still there, is there anything more you can tell us about what you're seeing? We're continuing to see multiple uh, intercepts uh, in the skies above me, coming from uh, multiple different directions. It's hard to determine uh, what is potentially an incoming missile and what is an intercept at the moment. So I'm just going to back up and look out here. That's a bright white light flying in here. That's got in, that just got intercepted. So coming in from this side, it appears to be, uh, well, that was a, a bright white light. So that appeared to be the incoming missile. I saw it intercepted. The siren's now gone off. I'm searching the skies here to see more intercepts. I'm hearing barrages of what sound like iron dome interceptors, but more in the Ooh, distance. All of, and I, but perhaps all that of Israel phase is under of missiles alert. that was intercepted over Jerusalem close to us, that phase of missiles is moving through now and being intercepted somewhere else. But those explosions that we could see in the air behind me, and I'm hearing multiple, multiple detonations again of what sound like intercepts in the sky. I am not, and I should be very clear about this, I am not hearing the sound of impacts. I am not hearing the sound of things hitting and detonating oh, hey. on the ground. What we're hearing at the moment are the detonations of out. the outgoing, it sounds like Iron Dome intercepts. We're seeing the intercepts in the sky and we're hearing the detonations associated with those intercepts in the sky. But I have to stress, it, it's a little hard to pick out the precise dynamic of what's happening. That was another white flash. It, uh, and I'm seeing more, uh, yeah, more amber, orange tracer fire, um, possibly intercept missiles in the sky ab uh, 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 above us and behind us here. So this is ongoing. That was another big detonation and rumble there. This is an ongoing situation. I would say, while we've been talking here, we've witnessed 20 to 30 perhaps, perhaps intercepts. Now, we don't know what's being intercepted in the skies above us. That they us, would deploy but those resources when it came to a situation like this. The Israeli army has never been faced with this type of weaponry that has entered its airspace. And as a result, they have closed their airspace. They have, they have landed all civilian flights. The airspace is completely closed. There was roars of Israeli fighter jets in the air earlier in the evening. And it's part of this multi-layered defense mechanism that they're talking about in order to shoot down these drones and potentially these ballistic, perhaps cruise missiles that are also coming towards Israeli airspace. Um, um Hamda, we're also uh, hearing, and this is according to the AP news agency, and I believe that you were saying this a moment ago as well. So air raid sirens are sounded in Jerusalem as explosions are heard in the skies above. And we're looking at the live picture right now uh, from West Jerusalem. You're speaking to us, though, from uh, Tel Aviv. Ah. Talk us through what sort of preparations were being made by the Israeli military in anticipation of an Iranian attack. And, and do you think that this is what they expected. Yes. Well, the Israelis said that they were prepared for a wide variety of scenarios. And in fact, they were ready for anything that could happen. And just this evening, Homefront Command, that is an extension of the Israeli military, had issued 
an abundance of new guidelines. In fact, there was a protest going on in Tel Aviv in the evening that the police had shut down because of 11 o'clock this evening. They said that there would be no gatherings of more than a thousand people. Schools were closed. Different work sectors were closed as well for the next two days in anticipation for this attack that they said was imminent. And the Israelis were expecting a response. And that's because of their airstrikes on the Iranian consulate in Damascus on April 1st. They knew they were anticipating this kind of response. Perhaps they didn't know the size and the scale and the type of weaponry that would be used. But nonetheless, a response and a retaliation from the Iranians was promised. The Israelis say that they are partnering with regional allies and additionally the United States and the United Kingdom. In fact, the Israeli army is reporting that several drones were already shot down before they had reached Israeli airspace. You're looking here at more active interceptions that are happening in the sky. And what's falling here is the shrapnel that will land in different areas. Now, where that is happening over, sirens are also ringing. And when that happens, Israeli authorities say for people to go into these protected areas for a minimum of 10 minutes unless told otherwise. They usually get these types of alerts on their phones. But again, all of the GPS and phone type systems are disrupted at this point. But you can just see it in the sky that this is clearly an active situation that the Israeli military is still saying could take hours. They were anticipating these types of drones coming in anywhere, reports indicated from two to 10 hours. So it still looks like it's going to be a long night ahead as the Israelis say they have defense mechanisms that are stockpiled and they are ready to go and they are prepared for any type of scenario. Okay, Hamda, we'll let you go for now. Thank you. We'll bring in Rory Challens from occupied East Jerusalem. And Rory, can, can you confirm, uh, just tell us what's happening there, because we're hearing air raid sirens go off in Jerusalem and explosions above the skies. What do you see and hear? Hmm. Yeah, exactly that. For the last 10 minutes uh, or so, we've been looking out from the balcony here uh, across the Jerusalem skyline. Uh, we've seen uh, a, a succession of uh, air defense interceptors going up from various points uh, around the city uh, to meet targets in the sky. Uh, and then uh, the, still going on, there's a sort of dull thud going around uh, the, the skyline across the city as well as uh, interceptions are made. About 10 minutes ago as well, the air raid siren went off uh, and now the police seem to be going around uh, on the streets in their cars uh, with uh, uh, an announcement going out, which we assume is telling people uh, to go to their nearest air raid shelters as quickly as they can. So uh, th this is the situation in Jerusalem at the moment. It seems to be calmer right now, but uh, there could well be another barrage of drones in coming in and on the way. We are seeing uh, basically Israel under attack from Iranian uh, projectiles right now. What sorts of advice or preparations um, has the government or, I mean, you were just mentioning the police telling people to go to shelters. What more have they told people to do? Hmm. Well, I mean, they've basically been telling people not to panic. Um, they have been issuing various uh, restrictions on movements and things like that. They have told people that they shouldn't be gathering uh, anywhere in Israel in groups uh, larger than uh, 1,000 people. Uh, they've been saying that schools, universities, daycare, etc., is going to be closed uh, for the next two days. And they have been saying to everyone to listen uh, to the advice for when the air raid sh uh, sirens go off, uh, to go to those shelters and to take shelter for as long uh, as is, is necessary. Um, but the, uh, the, the advice has been just to sort of take it calmly uh, and not to get too worried <coughs> about things. The, you know, the military has been uh, telling people that the air defence systems that uh, Israel have, that's the Iron Dome, that is uh, David Sling, and that's Arrow 2 and 3, are very capable systems designed to deal with multiple types of threats. It's a layered air defence system to deal with rockets, to deal with uh, missiles, ballistic, to deal with missiles that are cruise missiles, and to deal with drones as well. And that is what we're likely to be seeing uh, over the next few minutes and, and, and hours as these different waves of projectiles come in. The big test, of course, uh, is for this uh, layered air defence system. Can it cope 
uh, with uh, an assault of this magnitude because this is not something that Israel has faced before on this scale. It has its, uh, its uh, assistance coming from the United States, providing uh, overwatch, providing um, uh, 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 electronic jamming, electronic warfare, uh, and shooting down projectiles before they even get uh, to Israeli airspace. But this, as I say, is a test that Israel has not faced before on this scale. Uh, Rory, it's, um, it's Darren Jordan here. I've just taken over uh, from Darreen. Um, so you're with me now uh, France for the next few hours. Navy. Um, for those viewers, Rory, who are just joining Al Jazeera now uh, to take in this uh, developing story as it's happening, talk us through again uh, what you're hearing uh, from Israeli Army Radio, from officials there, uh, about the incoming drones. Because we're hearing, as you've been telling us uh, throughout the evening, it may also include... Guys, the reason why they launched 500 fucking drones is not because they wanted to hit 500 targets. This, of course, they know that, of course, they know that, uh, like, many of those drones are going to be intercepted by Iron Dome and also the, uh, the central command defense systems that are in the region. I'm sure they have, like, a specific target in mind, military targets in general, that they're launching uh, ballistic missiles in the direction of. Don't know if that will also be successful, but ultimately the goal is to retaliate and to say, no, you can't get away with fucking hitting, uh, you can't get away with hitting uh, an Iranian uh, embassy. You can't get away with hitting the Iranian consulate compound in Damascus. The ultimate goal is to wear out the defenses. It's kind of wild though. I, like, I don't think I've ever seen, I mean, we've seen interceptors before. I've never seen this many fucking interceptors in action. It is genuinely a marvel. <clears throat> um, it is genuinely a marvel to see uh, this thing in action. Low key, high key. Hi how does this work? Uh, it's, it looks at the trajectory. It looks at the trajectory of the ballistics and tracks it and then sends an interceptor, a Tamir interceptor missile in its direction. Um, ultimately, obviously, if these fucking drones hit like it, the the... Not all of these drones are directed in the uh, it, it directed towards like military targets. Some of them are there to exhaust the military systems. If they were to fucking actually hit, um, if they were actually hitting like the ground, they'd be killing random innocent civilians. Okay, it's not an act of celebration. Israeli senior command, very significant retaliation to come against Iran. Oh no, they're so fucking stupid, bro. They're so dumb. Bro, Israelis, you're on your own. Hassan, you're watching a video game tweet again? What? Bro, what are you talking about? We're literally watching, like, direct fucking live coverage. What the fuck do you mean? Arma 3 memes. Like, there are actual interceptor footage that we've seen. Anyway, um, to the Israelis in the chat, good luck. Uh, it seems like your government is going to... It seems like your government is going to retaliate aggressively. Dude... Chatters that uh, chatters that don't give a fuck about the genocide at all only come in here, only chirp in here, uh, specifically to be like, "Yep, doesn't matter if World War Three is gonna fucking start, depending on how Israel retaliates, depending on America moves forward. Uh, doesn't matter if my fucking friends and family get drafted, myself included. I'm here to fucking clip some shit, okay? I'm here to clip, like showing your fucking asses. It's very weird." I'm here to clip and ship, bad boy. <laughs> I'm here working at the behest of my favorite YouTube content creator, my favorite kick streamer. You know what I mean? Um, he's not paying me, but I'm doing that regardless. Meanwhile, I'm sitting through the top of the hour ad break and watching a three-minute ad at the top of the fucking hour because I don't have $5 to fucking subscribe at the top of the hour. And I haven't been able to get a gifted sub at the top of the hour. So I'm just going to sit through the three minutes of ads, hoping that I can find another clippable moment in a little bit. Here's the three minute ad break now, by the way, chatter. To liaise with the Israelis and, and, uh, and build up their kind of intelligence picture of what might be coming. So these are the kinds of things that Israel has been doing. And the government has been insisting to people that the country is as prepared as it could possibly be, but warning them that air defense is not infallible, however, comp uh, however competent it is something might well get through. All right, uh, Rory Challenge there, uh, live for us in uh, Occupied East Jerusalem. Rory, we'll no doubt come back to you a little bit later. Um, for our viewers just joining us here, it's just gone past 2300 GMT. We're bringing you continuing coverage of Iran launching its retaliatory attack on Israel. 
Iran's Revolutionary Guards have launched its first wave of missiles, as you've been seeing uh, on our screens. Air raid sirens, uh, as Rory was telling us there in uh, occupied East Jerusalem, are sounding, uh, and rockets have been intercepted above cities across Israel, including Tel Aviv and West Jerusalem. A senior U.S. official has told the American media they believe as many as 400 to 500 drones and missiles will be launched towards Israeli territory. Well, Tehran says it's a response to Israel's bombing of the Iranian consulate in Damascus in Syria. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is meeting with his war cabinet in Tel Aviv. Israeli combat planes are also in the air now as we speak. Israeli officials say the response will be firm and clear and have called Iran's attack a severe and dangerous escalation. Meanwhile, U.S. President Joe Biden has rushed huh. back to Washington. Bro, it's so funny. There's still dumb motherfuckers being in here like, oh, dude, you don't understand. The U.S. is a puppet state of the Jewish lobbyists or whatever. No, dude. No. Okay? No. America does what America wants to do. Okay? America says jump. Israel says how high. Not vice versa. Please do not, under do not misunderstand the situation. Okay? Israel is basically behaving in the most belligerent ways possible. And America is still rushing to its defense. Those are American, those are American Air Force fighter jets that have intercepted hundreds of fucking missiles that were trailing in the direction of Tel Aviv. Who the fuck do you who the fuck do you think uh, is in charge here? It's not Israel. <laughs> Definitely a JDAM. Dude, that's awesome. All the fucking all the drama perverts are back to be like definitely a JDAM. Israel blew up every single fucking hospital in the Gaza Strip. Big dog. Every single one. So mad. So mad that you were wrong. So mad that you found yourself on the wrong side of a genocide and having to defend it. Anyway. A post on X by Iran's permanent mission. Huh. Certainly from what we've been hearing over the past few hours. First, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, who are carrying out this attack against Israel, calling this... Um, mission, a uh, true promise, that is the name of it. They say that they've launched drones and missiles towards Israel as a result of their aggression uh, and that this decision was made. The JDAM memes are only funny if you are personally completely uninterested and not even remotely invested as a German would, by the way. I think Shrooms is a German uh, Twitch uh, viewer or a uh, Twitch partner. Uh, completely uninterested, maybe on the side of Israel a little bit. That's the only reason why you would find that to be funny. Because, like, I don't think it's funny that Israel has done an ethnic cleansing in Gaza for the past six months. I don't think it's funny. And I think that that is, if that's the only counter you have to that, is to be like, dude, a JDAM, when they have used munitions, guided munitions such as that, time and time again, pummeling fucking, uh, pummeling Gaza... Yeah, I mean, it's funny for you, I guess. Maybe not so funny for anybody Israel else. Israel will be made to uh, regret what they did. Uh, Israeli forces have carried out strikes in Syria since October 7th repeatedly and killed 18 Revolutionary Guard officials since then alone. But, of course, that is not the only time that they've targeted senior uh, Iranian officials. We saw a number of attacks on uh, nuclear scientists in Iran over the past decade uh, with the last one high ranking um, Fakhrizadeh was assassinated in Tehran and Iran blamed Israel for that attack but Iran didn't directly target Israel until tonight this is the first time in the country's history that Iran has taken such a decisive action but it seems to be fairly limited first of all there was a uh, communication back and forth between Iran and the United States Iranian officials making it very clear that they don't want a full-on confrontation with the West and that what they're going to do is um, have a precise and limited uh, action against Israel and that the Iranian foreign minister just tonight posted on his ex account that the United States had sufficient warning in advance about what was to come so there is no surprises yeah. about what is happening tonight yeah I mean they said they were gonna do it um, they've been talking about when they were gonna do it um, if I'm a fucking dumbass okay, we'll as I am and I've been talking about like the potential for Iran retaliating for the past five, six days now, then yeah, of course they had better intelligence. Expected because they've even given it a name, haven't they, for the operation? 
Yes, uh, True Promise is the name, and uh, they did say uh, that this was coming without Don't specifying. Don't attack Germans. Exactly is we're your fourth largest viewer base? No, I have no uh, smoke for the Germans. The I do have smoke for the German so. government, though. We didn't the German government is doing some fucking real historical errors again. What kind of a response? Do specifically I mean, Iran come on, dude. Arresting a fucking anti-genocide, a Jewish anti-genocide protester, is is ridiculous. Like some real Gestapo shit. <clears throat> clear is that Iran was very careful about what they were going to do. This was a very much um, calculated uh, response because it took them so long to actually do. Many people here were doubting whether or not there would be an, a direct response from Iran. Many believe that the Iranian proxies in the region, in Iraq, in Lebanon, in Yemen, would be the ones to respond to uh, Israel. But Iran has decided now this is a very critical point in this country's history and relationship or lack thereof with one of its Bro, the western world is pretty crazy honestly like western officials only condemned israel when they killed white people seven white world central kitchen workers were executed uh, uh three tap by the idf and that's the only time when i've seen unequivocal universal condemnation against israel israel struck the damascus compound the consulate, not a fucking peep. It's only it's only when either foreign white people die, white aid workers die, because Palestinian aid workers had died 200 prior to the World Central Kitchen. Almost 200 UNRWA aid workers had been mercilessly executed by the Israeli state. Not a single fucking peep. A month prior to the World Central Kitchen uh, attacks by Israel, Anira, an organization that we've raised millions of dollars for in this community, uh, Anira had an aid worker get killed as well. Anira stopped their actions. Uh, Anira, the the um, Anira's aid worker, of course, was Middle Eastern, so it didn't make news out here. Anira had to stop its actions after the World Central Kitchen attack. It's crazy that like the only time when there's any sort of condemnation is when you know either Westerners are killed. Or, of course, the foreign adversaries retaliate. It's crazy. It lasted until 1988. It was devastating for this country. And the supreme leader that is now in power since 1989, he's the commander-in-chief of the country's armed forces, had a very difficult decision to make. This was not something that was taken lightly by Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, because to engage with direct conflict with Israel is something nobody here wants or wanted. But I think the officials felt there was no other option. If they use proxies in the region, they will be made to look weak because they had said that they don't have direct um, what? say of what those proxies do. So they felt this was a time for them to step up. There has been rhetoric for the past 45 years in Iran between what the Iranians feel Israel is doing in Palestine and how Iran will respond to the aggression that has continued against the Palestinian population. So I have to tell you, these scenes that we're seeing tonight are extremely unprecedented. I think many Iranians, when they wake up on Sunday morning, will be utterly shocked that Iran has actually taken this decision to launch direct attacks from Iran towards Israel. These are threats that we've heard over and over again over the past four decades. But to see the scenes over Jerusalem and Tel Aviv are something many here never imagined they would see. All right, uh, Jorsa Jabari there reporting live for us uh, from the Iranian capital, Tehran, as we're looking at some of those earlier pictures uh, of uh, those interceptions. Uh, we understand there have been explosions and interceptions uh, throughout, uh, across Israel. Uh, Come again, David Aduma, Ambulance Service says, drones, as medics are shooting a 10-year-old uh, boy, the boy so, from a Bedouin uh, town near Arad. Uh, Always. On your now. Let's bring in Sean Bell. He's a Always. Here's another real piece of shit thing that Israel does. The Bedouins are in disastrously underserved areas. They're technically considered Arab under the Israeli demographics designation. And they literally fucking mistreat them. The government straight up does not develop the areas that they live in. Sometimes are, they are also purposely fucking displaced. And every single time there are these sorts of attacks, whether it be like Palestinian Islamic Jihad or Hamas uh, rockets being lobbed into Israeli territory, there's surprisingly, oh, more lies, really? You think the Bedouin do not uh, do not 
shoulder the major burdens of not having enough Iron Dome defenses over their areas? Really? That's a lie? Famously, the Bedouin are in... Iron Dome has priorities. Okay. What... I never understand. I, I never understand why people come in here and then quite literally fucking repeat the position that I have. Yeah, force transfer the better win is the latest example of apartheid uh, cruelty. Yeah. So rockets, when rockets do actually, uh, when rockets do actually go through the Iron Dome, it's usually on Bedouin communities. Bedouin people face the highest rates of poverty in Israel. 80% of residents are in unrecognized villages and they live in poverty. Bedouin adults face numerous physical and mental health disparities compared to other groups in Israel. And in a lot of instances, they do actually fucking, uh, they do actually get hit. Not only that, but part of the reason why we know about this was also because the, uh, the, the, uh, the victims, the survivors of Kibbutz Be'eri were specifically talking about them on like October 8th. Iron Dome, David Sling, and fighter jets are likely intercepting incoming Iranian drones and land attack cruise missiles. Arrow 2 and Arrow 3 are likely intercepting Iranian medium-range ballistic missiles over Syria and Jordan. They're not that capable. I mean, they're about the same speed as a car. They do about up to 140 miles an hour. Um, they have got long endurance. They can travel hundreds of miles, um, and they can be quite carefully programmed. They've got a relatively small warhead, 50 kilograms, but uh, that will still do a lot of damage on the ground. But they're really more terror weapons than anything else. The huge advantage is that these things are probably only about $20,000 a time, whereas most of the cruise and ballistic missiles, you're talking about a million, two million dollars a time. So the great thing about drones is that you can afford quantity and sort of quantity has a quality all of its own because you can actually start to deluge air defenses and that's what um, these weapons are trying to do. They're a terror weapon more than actually physically be able to do material damage, but they are, as you said, very widely being used out in uh, by the Russians against Ukraine targets. No, what he means is they're terror weapons in the sense that like their sole purpose is to cause fear amongst the civilian population and not to actually hit a target and he's right because the only targets you can hit with those drones are civilian infrastructure targets that's why they're being heavily used in uh by russia in ukraine that's what he means they're slow they're easy to intercept in comparison to to other missiles Obviously, all weapons are technically terror weapons missiles, when you think about missiles, it. Missiles, ballistic missiles. In effect, the attack itself is multi-layered as well. What is this? What is reportedly from Jordan? I mean, there's no point firing one missile and having it shot down out of the sky by the very kef, um, very high-tech Israel uh, air defense systems. That that would appear that Iran was um, not not strong. It wouldn't be seen as a robust response. So it would have to have considered a multi-wave attack. But Iran would have been well aware that most of the drones will get shot down. It's more a question of where the, the main missile not strikes. Not they're perfectly fine against my power stations and sense of this, though, yeah. is that Israel must but have not known when it targets attacked with that consulate on the 1st of April that they would trigger some sort of response like this. And despite America asking uh, Iran for a measured response, telling them not to respond, Iran probably had no choice. So the real question is, what was Israel seeking to achieve with those attacks on the 1st of April? And is this part of a carefully coordinated plan? Because Israel's made no secret of the fact that having dealt with Hamas, it wanted to deal with Hezbollah next. And this attack by Iran might well give Israel license to have a go after Hezbollah next. Mm. All right, uh, Sean Bell, live for us there uh, from Birmingham in the, U uh, Dude, in the UK. Sean Bell, crazy, military analyst. Crazy, bro. Air Vice Marshal, thank you very much indeed for your time and your analysis. Let's go back to Rory Challens. He joins us live. From it's just Occupied endless, East Jerusalem. seemingly. So, um, just talk us through now what you're seeing and hearing. You're there in Occupied East Jerusalem. We've been, you've been hearing these explosions, seeing these interceptions. Tell mm -hmm. us, tell us what you're seeing. Tell us a bit more, Rory. Well, there have been extraordinary scenes, I have to say, over the skies uh, of Jerusalem this evening. Just a half an hour ago, it, it looks calm now. It is calm, uh, but uh, just. 30 or so minutes ago, the sky behind me was lit up with, uh, well, I mean, what looked from here like uh, slow moving fireworks arching into the sky, which were interceptors launched by Israeli air defense uh, all around the city, rising up uh, to meet the threat of Iranian drones uh, coming in, perhaps cruise missiles. We don't know exactly what uh, the targets up in the sky were. Ukrainians are watching this like, God damn, bro. No, the attacks have not ended. They came in, I believe, 
three different uh they came they're coming in three waves i i guess this was the first wave, but it's still continuing interesting to see the difference in coverage yeah of course us must stay away that's in all caps u.s must stay away so yeah. what is the, what is the iranian threat to the u.s if the u.s continues to intercept incoming drones uh, missiles or uh, ballistic missiles or other iranian targets coming towards israel what are the iranians going to do attack the united states I don't think they're going to attack the United States, but one of the things that the Iranians have been telling me over the past couple of uh, years, and this comes from people in the Revolutionary Guard, but also in the Iranian military, uh, is that they've been saying, look, the U.S. needs to understand with all of their assets in the Middle East that next to almost every American outpost, next to almost American, every American base, or at least in the vicinity, there is a militia out there that is loyal to Iran, or at the very least has ties to Iran. So the Iranians certainly believe that they could put the U.S. under under pressure in the Middle East. We saw that after uh, Qasem Soleimani was uh, assassinated in 2020 when the Iranians fired back at an air base uh, in, uh, in Iraq, the Al Assad air base. We're also, they gave ample warning before they did that, but they were able to target that fairly easy from Iranian territory. So of course the U.S. has assets in various places in the Middle East. Bro. The Iranians are saying those assets could be under threat. If the U.S. continues I'm sorry. to... Stop sending me fucking random links on Twitter, bro. Stop. Stop sending me... Stop sending me random links on Twitter of videos that you think are real, okay? Strike if the Israelis chose to do that. I think some of the messaging that we've seen tonight from the Iranians has been pretty remarkable, where they've come out and said that any country, if the Israelis now want to strike back, any country that allows, that opens their airspace for that, or their ground space for that, would be under threat from Iran as well. So certainly the Iranians are messaging that they are extremely serious about this, while at the same time saying that they're giving Israel an off-ramp and saying, look, these are the strikes and retaliation for the hit on the embassy. It's up to Israel now whether or not it ends here, Wolf. All right, stand by. We're going to get back to you, Fred Plaikin, uh, with his expertise on what's going on in Iran right now. I want to go back to Jerusalem. Nick Robertson is on the scene for us. What is the son. rational perspective Nick, from the Iranian something pretty side? I mean, they know that all, almost all of their fucking attacks are going to get intercepted. So they want to... They want to show force. They want to scare the Israeli population. They want to scare the Israeli government and and apply pressure to the Israeli government for um, for striking Iranian, technically Iranian soil. That's the reason why. That's the reason why they have said that they're going to do this for Flying a week. Flying in the sky now. over Jerusalem at this time is unusual. It is clearly related Wynette to what's says, happening here right now. We intercepted 99% um, of the, the Iranian response. The intercepts that we saw before, General Hurtling uh, suggested that he believed that they were being, uh, some of the intercepts we were witnessing were intercepts by fighter jets. The fact that we're seeing the fighter jets up there now certainly certainly um, brings uh, additional credibility to his and already yes. very credible words. But I think that's <laughs> what we're witnessing here tonight. Multiple layers and levels of uh, Israeli air defense systems. Systems. But again, the fact that these missiles, these Iranian... When you guys ask, why did they fucking hit the Iran... Uh, why did they hit the Iranian embassy? I told you why. Because they want to open up a new front, I think. I think they want... To, they knew that, of course, Iran has to retaliate. Iran is going to retaliate. American forces and, um, and, and European forces are going to absolutely uh, intercept missiles. And then there's going to be political pressure from America to respond to Iran because there's so many fucking psychopathic, bloodthirsty monsters. Here's Tommy Vitor saying these lunatics are desperate to push us into a direct war with Iran. It's bloodthirsty, stupid, and not what any actual voters in this country want. This is Senator Marsha Blackburn. Iran has begun launching drone strikes on Israel. POTUS, we must move quickly and launch aggressive retaliatory strikes on Iran. That is a psychotic thing to say. But the goal from Israel is most likely to draw the United States into a broader conflict against Iran, directly against Iran. Notice, too, of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. After more than 10 days of silence and negligence of international organizations, especially the U.N. Security Council, to condemn the aggression and criminality of the Zionist regime in the attack on the consular section of the Iranian embassy in Damascus as a part of our country's territory, and the testimony of seven of the country's legal advisors and the non-punishment of the criminal regime under the seventh paragraph of the United Nations Charter, John Barkfon of the Revolutionary Guards, in response to these crimes and the realization of previous warnings and the fulfillment of the demand for the uh, right of Iran and in order to punish the aggressor, 
Using its intelligence, missile, and drone strategic capabilities, it attacked the important military targets of the Zionist terrorist army in the occupied territories and successfully hit and destroyed them. I don't know about that part. Following the strategic policies of the Islamic Republic of Iran, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps announces... The terrorist one, the terrorist government of America is warned that any support and participation in harming Iran's interests will result in a decisive and regretful response from the armed force of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Two, also, if America is responsible for the evil actions of the Zionist regime, and if this child killing regime is not contained in the region, it must accept its consequences. Two, while emphasizing the policy of the good neighborliness with neighbors and countries in the region, it is stated that any threat by the terrorist state of America and the Zionist regime from the origin of any country will be followed by a reciprocal and proportional response of the Islamic Republic of Iran or the source of the threat. We assure the heroic nation of Iran and the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps and other armed forces of the country will stand to the death in defense of national interests and will neutralize the enemy's efforts to disrupt the security and peace of the people. As a bunch of rhetoric, I'll believe it when I see any actual action. The fuck do you mean? There's like thousands of fucking drones that are being intercepted on top of israel right now what actions what do you mean nuke fucking uh, tel aviv what the fuck are you talking about western western leftists are so funny they're like bro me i'd be doing something different like what would you be doing would you be nuking tel aviv dude what what would you be doing in this situation iran failed weak as hell guys yeah they're tweeting praxis see iran is tweeting as well that's also praxis Oh my God. Did bro say the terrorist states of America law? I mean, they're not wrong. America is a terrorist state in the Middle East. This is true. I don't know if they actually hit any targets. They said they did, but that's PR. I just met my national security team for an update on Iran's attack against Israel. Our commitment to Israel's security against threats from Iran and its proxies is ironclad. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Joe, thank you. Americans want to see blood. They're like, oh dude, this is not enough. On the Israeli side, I suspect that they feel a different way. Some Israelis obviously are way more angry now than ever before and want blood and want to attack Iran. Other Israelis recognize that, holy shit, the night sky turning, the night sky lighting up with missiles, albeit intercepted, is still a very fearful position. It is. This is terrifying. This is terrifying for the civilians. The airplanes in the night sky are like shooting stars. And we could all really use a wish right now. Wish right now. Wish right now. Not just what happened this evening, but perhaps also bracing for more. The Israeli army has said from the beginning of the Israel Hamas war that they knew something else could happen. There's they see this still every day, an nothing new. Front on no dog. Fucking Palestinian Palestinian bathtub rockets are a little bit different than like Palestinian bathtub rockets are definitely a little bit different than fucking this shit. When those things land, and they rarely do, but sometimes they do land, they'll, like, hit a fucking courtyard and open up a little dent on the ground. These things are a little bit different. And also, both in size, magnitude, and frequency are a little bit different. They're, Iran has never struck... Iran has never directly uh, sh uh, hit Israel. This is, a, this is a big deal, for sure. The Kidia is in the heart of Tel Aviv. There were reports speculating that that could potentially be a target, but there were more reports from anonymous Israeli officials indicating that the targets would be primarily military targets. And what exactly that means, whether it's air bases, whether it's Iron Dome or air defense battery systems, whether it is artillery positions, perhaps it's unknown what exactly was being targeted, but the Israeli defense array in the air has intercepted Accepted seemingly most of those projectiles. We haven't really had any reports yet of them falling in any sort of open areas. We haven't had reports of damage. There are reports of one injury in the southern part of the country, a 10-year-old child in a Bedouin area. These areas typically do not have these types of bomb shelters or safe rooms that are located in other sorts of Israeli towns and homes that are easily accessible and available. So the Israelis say that while perhaps this part of of the evening is over but the longer game for them is going to be a retaliation and look it's still unknown if this part specifically is over it's unknown if there will be this second and third wave of launches from it on that was reported that Israeli officials are still perhaps bracing for but they say again that they are prepared for any possible scenario all right to Hamda salute live for us there uh, in Tel Aviv Hamda mm. thank you
Well, as we mentioned, U.S. President Joe Biden has cut a weekend trip short and has returned to Washington, D.C., to consult with his national security team. Let's bring in Heidi Jo Castro. She joins us live from Washington, D.C. So we know that security meeting, uh, Heidi, at the White House uh, has already started. Who's in? My man said, don't use your consulate for military purposes and it won't get blown up, lol. Brother, you say this, but the idea of headquarters is smack dab in the middle of a mall in Tel Aviv. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, would you have that same attitude if they just fucking dropped a nuke in the middle of that thing? Do you think that would be cool? The fuck do you mean? Oh, dude, don't use your consulate for military purposes. What do you think happens in fucking embassies, dumbass? Do you think there's no military action ha happening in American embassies? No generals ever touching American embassy soil? It's not in a mall. It's across the street from a mall. Sorry. It's not under, it's not in the mall directly. I mean, that's, that's directly, that is straight up uh, a, a military base, the headquarters. That the U.S. has indeed been taking down these Iranian drones. Meanwhile, a spokeswoman for the National Security Council, again, used this word we've heard over and over again coming from the Biden White House, ironclad, to describe the level of support that the U.S. has for Israel's security. And though we're not getting much more detail about how, what assets the U.S. is deploying to take down these drones and other incoming projectiles from Iran, we are getting some clues from a British, uh, a British official saying that British uh, air jets are now replacing some of the U.S. fighters that have been doing counterterrorism work in Iraq and Syria in order to free up those U.S. fighter jets to now support Israel. In total, there are still tens of thousands of U.S. troops who are deployed in this region. I should remind us. And there's another 1,000 U.S. troops that are in route to the coast of Gaza there to build a humanitarian pier to receive the delivery of food there. Uh, but the Pentagon has been moving to even beef up more the presence of U.S. troops in this region, not to mention the USS Eisenhower uh, Carrier Group, which includes two destroyers as well as uh, six, uh, nine rather Air Force squadrons that have all been placed there waiting in anticipation for this moment to arrive. Again, we're not exactly clear which assets were used okay. to take down these Iranian drones, but that, that response continues as we speak. Yeah, Heidi, let's just go back to uh, President Biden because there's some speculation that he knew about this attack. What, what sort of behind the scenes diplomatic warnings or intelligence led Biden to believe that the response would be sooner rather than later? He certainly hinted at that. He said there was intelligence that he knew of but couldn't get into publicly yesterday uh, when he said those words exactly, that this attack would be coming sooner rather than later. And he told Iran at that time, which was about 24 hours ago now, don't do it. Well, obviously, that advice, that advice was disregarded by Iran. But behind the scenes, the U.S. has been, over the last 10 days or so, really ramping up diplomatic pressure, trying to avoid this very moment from occurring. Uh, using pressure on third-party countries to try to... We will wait. There are reports that uh, some Israeli targets have been hit, uh, including either a military, two different military bases. It, we, we, we are going to wait until there's confirmation, okay? Apologies to the chatters, but I'm not going to... I'm not going to immediately go gung-ho um, before there's, like before there's actual confirmation, okay? Love you guys, love the enthusiasm, but we will wait, okay? It's very clear that the fighter jets are involved in shooting down these slow-moving drones and other missiles that are, that are incoming. It's a very effective tool for the uh, Israeli Air Force to do that. Um, and so the fact that we're hearing the jets again right now over Jerusalem seems to indicate that there may be another wave um, on its way here at the moment. Of course, if that happens, Wolf, we can expect to hear the sirens. I'm not, not hearing a new uh, a siren alert go off at this time it is very quiet here um, as you know real? you know jerusalem so very well like this is a city um that just, uh, bro what the fuck there ain't no way bro are you serious
Chilla motherfuckers, get ready with me for war. I ran just uh, launched a few missiles and like I'm not trying to go out looking ugly. So uh, straightened my hair, plucked my eyebrows, I had a whole like facial routine situation. Like who knows how long I'm gonna be underneath the ground for. I found like an underground. Oh, that's by the way, I swear by that last year was the best thing ever. Anyway, this is the final fit. All of my friends have come by. So like, hakul tov. So I have to go now because we're going underneath the ground. Bitches want me. Bro. Chilla motherfuckers, get ready with me for war. Bro, that's crazy. I mean, this is just sheer arrogance, dude. Hakol Tov, Saul's good. Saul good. Oh my God. Why aren't you talking about how this relates to the book of Revelations? Because, dude, honestly, honestly, you're not even fucking wrong at this point, okay? I don't know, bro. I don't know. The eclipse is happening. Now fucking Israel's being attacked in retaliation by the Iranian forces. Who knows, man? Maybe, maybe these fucking psychopathic white evangelical protestant in freaks are not wrong for that israeli strike in damascus um how would iran go uh, seek yeah, mercury's in gatorade arguably the most dramatic shit. option that iran chose tonight of the, the the various scenarios that could have played out iran tonight uh directly attacking israel uh, from Iranian soil. In anticipation of something like this, the U.S. military had moved more assets Why to are you the Middle East. A Chinese uh, we tutor? understand that they strengthened air her? defenses. Of course. The Hello, because she's awesome. I love watching TikToks about what's going on on Chinese uh, internet. She keeps me up to date with the Chinese netizens we saw tonight but wolf we have been talking to our sources for the past two weeks trying to figure out what iran would do and it really only came into focus yesterday that iran could indeed carry out uh, tonight's attack from iranian soil cnn reported yesterday that a number of military assets including drones and cruise missiles around 100 cruise missiles were being moved in iran that was certainly an indication of what we saw uh tonight and i'm really struck by this uh the the the, the two facts wolf that iran is claiming that this is over that's according to their mission at the united nations at the same time israel and the u.s in the support role very very much dealing uh with what is still incoming those drones. We believe they're also cruise and ballistic missiles. It remains to be seen whether Iran is done firing everything that it intends to. So far, as our correspondents have noted, it does not appear that anything has hit its target. No craters, no blasts, no destruction, uh, death. Um, the, 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 but this is this is far from over. Despite those Iranian claims, what you're hearing there, those sirens, those interceptions, Dude, Americans are so funny. They're like, dude, not a single fucking missile got into Israel, bro. It's like, listen, do you want them to? Like, I don't understand. As far as I understand, yeah, there are reports that there are multiple impacts at the Nevatim Air Base in the Negev Desert. But it's like, like, you're just over here. You're over here in America, in Iowa. You'd be fucking shitting. You shit bricks when you see, like, a brown dude walking in your fucking neighborhood and you're immediately like, grab the fucking weapons, boys. There's a takeover happening. Meanwhile, you're like, yeah, I can't wait. Oh, yeah. In either direction, even if it's, like, vengeance, it, which is not, again, not justice for the, the Palestinians, but also beyond that, even if it's just like, man, Iran is no smoke, bro. What the fuck? Hassan shocked his audience hates Israel. No, dumbass. Many of those people that are fucking talking in here are not even... No, they're not anti-Israel. They're pro-Israel. They're like flexing. They're like, ha-ha, not a single Iranian, uh, not a single Iranian missile struck a target, bro. Big L for Iran, bro. And it's like, okay, like, I don't know. I don't know what you want me to say here. Like, you, you do you want me to be like, yeah, no, I hope all fucking Israelis die or some shit. What the fuck's wrong with you? Not my position, you know? Yeah. Anyway, um, real issue is, yeah, it's just like chatters that watch war from afar and just like consume it for enjoyment it's gross not thinking about the the real human toll here for civilians um it's already frustrating uh I, and i think like russia's invasion of ukraine really fucking brought this up to a higher degree because it was like a just cause on the ukrainian front considering that they had the moral reason to want to defend their country from an invasion from a russian invasion so a lot of people started just like genuinely cheering on death, constantly asking for more and more blood. Obviously, it's perfect for us because it's not like we have American 
It's not like we have American military there. We don't have any like real connection. You know what I mean? <sighs> but we're also told it could reconvene later. They're watching all of this very closely. The stakes for the United States right now are enormous. Uh, obviously, the stakes for Israel are enormous as well. I want to bring in Aaron David Miller right now, former State Department Middle East negotiator. You've uh, been involved in this region for a long time. Aaron, give us a sense, a historic sense of what is going on right now, the fact that Iran, with a huge military capability, the is launching Israel rockets correspondent and missiles this video. against Israel from Iranian territory, okay. and they're not That's simply relying it's on their many. Iranian proxies, whether Hezbollah or the Houthis or others, to do this. Um, we can't, I can't read the Gideon Levy article from Haaretz. Uh, footage purportedly shows Iranian missiles impacting the Negev area of the southern Israel, uh, of southern Israel earlier. Trump is live. Impact was made. Different angles. No! Oh, this is the one. What is this suppressed news? Breaking confirmed direct impact made on Israel by drones missile fire from Iran. Video to the Bedouin diaspora near Arad. A missile hit 10 miles away from me? Why are you promoting this? Wait, what? Bro, why are you fucking... Dude, I swear to God, the brain rot is so high. Promoting it? Bro said I'm, I'm launching the missiles, dude. <laughs> Yo, somebody needs to check in on CNN with their promotion of these missiles, dude. It's fucked up. I'm sorry, chatter. I'm going to stop it real quick, okay? <laughs> Essentially, now, from now on, if the Israelis go after <laughs> oh, IRGC Jesus. members, wherever they are, Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, even if they're uh, on, uh, quote, Iranian sovereign territory, Iranian in military installations or embassies, now you have a precedent for the Iranians striking Israel. Yeah. The question is really, okay. I think, what the, what the government is, is going to right? do, and then if, in fact, they do strike Iran proper, Will the Iranians respond? Uh, and will um, will Hezbollah, which could inflict a much greater level of pain, I think, quickly on the Israelis with their inventory of high trajectory weapons? Fiona. What does Hezbollah Get do? In here, so that's Gaia. the key question right now Thank in my you. mind. And if Hezbollah does that, and uh, as all of us know, uh, Hezbollah does have a huge number of rockets and missiles in their inventory TV in to southern come Lebanon, in. which. Fiona tried to come in and, and watch the coverage. It's crazy. She's she she was also mad. Fiona was also mad that I was promoting the Iranian attack. Already been evacuated. <laughs> Tens of thousands of Israelis have have left Kiryat Shmona. But to those rockets and those missiles that Hezbollah has in South Lebanon, they not only could reach Haifa, but I'm told they could reach Tel Aviv, and some of them might even be able to reach the southernmost port of, point of Israel, a lot. What do you know about that? I mean. In, you remember off the summer of 2006, which is the last major confrontation between Israel and Hezbollah, um, the Middle East's most preeminent military power, Israel, the northern half of that country from Haifa to the Lebanese border was shut down for 33 days. And that was when Hezbollah had a relatively uh, crude inventory. Now they have anywhere up to 150,000 high trajectory weapons of varying ranges, lethalities, and precision that could cover most most of Israel. And that raises a... According to ABC, Iran has launched 70 more missiles at Israel, bringing the total number to 150, a senior U.S. official tells ABC News. Do you think the Arab countries were debating when they said they would intercept? I think they, pro some of them probably did, most likely not openly, um, considering that Iran said that if you... Considering that Iran said if you uh, interfere in our affairs, we'll come for you too. Trump is now talking about Iran. Okay, we'll see what this fucking dumbass has to say. It's windy, but it's energy independence with all electric cars. Would everybody like to Bro, buy an he's electric not talking car about for Iran. the rest of you? But we will return the world to peace through strength, and it'll happen very quickly. I will revive American strength abroad, and we will restore American strength at home. We were respected four years ago all over the world. Today, we are considered a joke. It's not going to be for long. Believe me, it's not going to be for long. We will quickly rebuild the greatest economy in the history of the world like we had it just four years ago. Big, big bro is not talking about nothing, okay? He's not talking about anything, bro. That umbrella group, uh, any of the other groups as well, as far as talking about having participated in Iran's strikes 
on Israel. We've seen one of those groups, which is uh, Kata'ib Sayyid al-Shuhada, the head of that group posted on social media expressing support for Iran's attack on Israel, but nothing beyond that. We've not yet heard anything from any Iraqi government officials with regard to these attacks or what they expect to happen in the days to come. And this is all happening at a very interesting time because the Iraqi Prime Minister, uh, Mohammad Shia Sudani, left yesterday from Baghdad, heading to Washington, D.C., because he's supposed to meet with U.S. President Joe Biden on Monday to discuss not only bilateral relations between the two countries, but also trying to come up with a timeline yeah, to this decrease is, this is U.S. The real troop shit. presence in Iraq. Of course, there are around 2,500. For the people who are asking, like, why did Israel do this? Israel's Channel 12 quotes a senior Israeli official pledging an unprecedented response to Iran's attack and urging Israelis not to go to bed due to what's coming Iran's way. Channel 12 quotes a senior Israeli official, I repeat, according to the Times of Israel, Channel 12 quotes a senior Israeli official pledging an unprecedented response to Iran's attack and urging Israelis not to go to bed due to what is coming to Iran's way. Now, that, that in and of itself, that right there is, is, you're saying cope, but Israel's insane, brother. Israel is insane. They... <laughs> Why did they fucking strike the embassy is the question that many of you have asked. Well, because they knew that it would draw out a retaliation that they could uh, bear the, uh, the, the brunt of. And then it would give them even more opportunity to escalate even further, knowing full well that now it's a state against state war and not just Israel doing ethnic cleansing in Gaza. Now, what the impact of this will be, or what, if Israel would be able to pull off like a severe attack against Iran, and what the consequences, what the long-term consequences of such an action are, well, we'll see. I don't know. I don't know what will happen if, if Israel retaliates against Iran. But the point is that if you are wondering why Israel struck the embassy first, it was so they could get some kind of righteous vengeance going against iran what does israel get from escalating i mean they're they want to wipe out iran they want to fucking nuke iran that's it they've always wanted to nuke iran so this way with western support they can be like they attacked us and we have to attack back so that people forget the embassy attack and why this was a retaliation the part that worries me is Netanyahu is likely going to jail or at least being out of power as soon as Israel's no longer in conflict, which gives him a pretty big incentive for him to escalate things for the rest of his life. Pretty much. It's definitely another, it's definitely another major cause. Military call-ups are happening now in Tel Aviv. 17-year-old family friend just received the message. Um, this is at least five decades of joint U.S.-Israel foreign policy coming to fruition. I mean, this is definitely what uh, America has been gearing up against for a very long time. This is what Israel has wanted for a very long time. Anyway... The other part of this is the current government can only survive through continued escalation and wants desperately to drag America into it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We saw this earlier. We were looking at this earlier. In the midst of a genocide, on the eve of a possible regional war, this is what the anti-Netanyahu bloc has to offer. A demonstration under a large banner that says, Enlistment for All. This is why I was asking the Israeli chatters, like, how they, like, what the, what the public sentiment is overall. You know what I mean? Because it does feel like... It doesn't feel like things are going to get better, you know? Would it be different from Russia and Ukraine? Wouldn't it be just two-country war if it escalates? Dude, what... Israel... Bro, today, as we are watching rockets perish in the night sky like shooting stars, whose weapons are those that are actually shooting those rockets from the sky, you think? You think those are Israeli rockets? No. Who's intercepting other missiles on top of... Uh, Iraqi and also Jordanian airspace. Do you think those are Israeli fighter jets with Israeli fighter pilots? Or do you think it is the United States Navy and also uh, the, the allied forces, allied Western forces in general? Israel does not have the capacity to defend itself or behave in the way that it has been behaving without this is who's those rockets. The content is no longer available. Um, Israel can't do any of that without America, without the Western world. Are you stupid? It has the most dense anti-air capability in the world. Stop yapping. 
Yeah, dude, you're right. Israel is a standalone fucking entity, and that's how it is able to do this uh, anti-air capabilities. That's why American fucking fighter jets are currently working overtime intercepting missiles over Jordanian airspace, like I just fucking mentioned. Shut the fuck up, dumbass. Okay? If, if Israel could fucking thrive and survive on its own, and it wasn't such a small bean uh, genocidal apartheid state, it would. It wouldn't require heavily on propaganda in the western world if that's the case then we should just stop aid to israel right now how do you feel about that except that would never happen because the moment that we stop aid to israel israel would stop its actions it would cease its hostilities you're such a sad person his son takes her sad keep being mad keep raging keep misinforming young turk there is none of these are actual retaliations or counters to what i'm saying you're just you're just vibing on the aesthetics, bro. On God. For real, for real, okay? You're not being a W person. You're being an L nerd right now, okay? Trust me, Lenny Pie. Absolutely no argument ever from these people. Yeah, it's always like, man, I don't like the fucking vibes in here. On God, for real, for real, okay? A 50-year-old man just called you his son. I hope that person is not 50 and actually just 15 instead. Before going any further, I want to say God bless the people of Israel. They're under attack right now. That's, that's because we show great weakness. This would not happen. The weakness that we've shown is unbelievable, and that's it true. would he not have mention, happened. He did mention TYT. That's probably a fucking 30-plus-year-old person. Like, Iran has launched a second salvo, 70 missiles towards Israel. First salvo was 80 missiles per senior U.S. official. Yeah. Why don't you address who started the conflict? The top of the hour ad break started when I got a new contract. Okay. Yeah. You're too late. You're too late. Chatter. That's weak. That's a weak bait. You can't do that. You can't do that. That's weak. I got baited one time already. Weak bait. But regardless of the top of the hour, there is a three minute ad break. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch prime. Here's the three minute ad break now. Meth Serpy, thank you for the 521 gift of subs, allowing five people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. Anyway. And if we were in office, you know that, they know that, everybody knows that. But America prays for Israel. We send our absolute support to everyone in harm's way. This is an attack that would not have happened. I mean, to think about, to think about what we have to go through and the things we put up with, with the border with uh, no energy independence, with all electric cars. Would everybody like to buy an electric car for the rest of you? Oh my God, it was literally right after he talked about the electric car. What the fuck is a Schnecksville, by the way? Sorry, no disrespect to the Pennsylvania chatters, but these naming conventions got to go, okay? But we will return the world to peace through strength, and it'll happen very quickly. I will revive American strength abroad, and we will restore American strength at home. We were respected four years ago all over the world. Today, we are considered a joke. It's not going to be for long. Believe me, it's not going to be for long. I'm in Philly, and I don't know this area. The IRGC has issued a second statement. Any threat from the U.S. and the Zionist regime for any country will be met with a reciprocal response from the Islamic Republic of Iran to the source of the threat. The American terrorist government has warned that any support and participation in harming Iran's... Oh, wait, we saw this already. I covered this already when, it, when they first posted it. Um, Shexville is slang for oral sex. Cool. Now you know how it feels to show up 10 seconds late to your coverage. Yeah. The issue it has with Iran. This is uh, not the end of the game tonight. Um, and uh, in this case, I think uh, Israel will have to hit back and uh, then uh, the uh, superpowers will have to take a stance and be clear about how do they stop the escalation. And uh, the, the Israeli response has to do uh, with, is not, I'm afraid, with, with uh, Netanyahu's public relations. He has got now the support of the Israeli public, which he lost in October 7th. Nobody is talking now about the uh, abductees. Nobody is talking about the famine in Gaza. It's all about Iran. It depends on how far the United States is willing to go. Um, what is the American leverage on Iran and how will the members of the Abraham Accord, uh, who has a, a clear interest 
to uh, stop Iran from getting the hegemony over the Middle East and how the Saudis will react. Well, it's just gone past midnight. Uh, that's OO GMT. We're bringing you continuing coverage of Iran launching its retaliatory attack against Israel. The first wave of missiles launched by the Revolutionary Guards have reached Israeli cities. Well, air raid sirens have sounded in more than 720 locations and rockets have been intercepted above Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. There are reports a 10-year-old boy has been killed what? in southern Israel. Tehran says the strikes are in Israel's been attacked on its own sovereign soil by two independent countries. Bro, Israel is literally, if we don't even factor in Mossad operations globally, Israel literally r routinely bombs every country in the region, including invading them. What do you think the fucking Golan Heights is? That's annexed territory that Israel took from Syria. What do you mean? That's so funny. Israel on sovereign soil. It's like, I, I don't even know how you can like look at history. Like what kind of fucking lenses are you looking at history from to be like, yeah, dude, Israel is always under attack. It's really fucked up. I don't think this guy is saying that fucking Gaza is foreign land to Israel and the Palestinian resistance forces on October 7th were like invading from a foreign territory and not like occupied territory towards a response Netanyahu and Biden will talk in the next few minutes oh no oh my god oh here we fucking go dude this conversation that's about to take place I don't even know what the fuck Biden's gonna say but I'm willing to bet it's not gonna be hey restrain yourself you know doesn't feel like it will be Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps issued a second statement warning the United States against Supporting Israel, it said, we warned the United States terrorist government that any support or participation in attacking Iran's interests will have a fierce response from Iran's armed forces. That probably means, like, bases, right? I assume. Like, American bases will be targeted way harder. My slim hopes of Dark Brandon telling Bibi to have fun with the war he started? Yeah, no. No. It's just, if anything, they're gonna, if anything, they're going to say, or Brandon is going to say, let's go. Let's go, Bibi. Let's fucking go. I love you. Keep it up. In the skies, of course, they are not going to be allowing civilian aircraft to land or take off. We also saw a lot of people in our hotel gathering in the lobby, carrying their pillows, asking where the shelter was. A lot of nervousness, as I said, hotel staff telling them that wasn't necessary at this stage. And again, just to underscore, Wolf, we haven't heard of direct impacts yet. We don't have a sense of any significant casualties yet, though there is a report of one 10 year old girl in the Negev area who was seriously injured. And so at this stage, the intercepts do appear to be remarkably effective, but that does nothing to detract, I would argue, Wolf, from the seriousness of the moment in terms of how this could quickly now escalate into that regional conflagration that everyone had been fearing and had been hoping to try to avert. Clarissa Ward in Tel Aviv for us. Prevent Clarissa, Israel and its there. citizens. We'll I will keep you updated. Any questions? We have heard a number of sirens in Dimona. Has a Dimona or has a strategic target been threatened? This is a, a result of the a small number of missiles that have been intercepted and the military base in the south was sustained some damages in its infrastructure, very minor damages. Question, Iran says that this is their response and they can, should we consider this that uh, the response is over? Answer, the military. Bro, the things that you're saying in this chat, Rear Admiral General Daniel Hagari will inevitably hear, okay, all the way in Israel. So you better fucking watch out. You think you're typing this stuff out and he won't hear what you have to say? He will. Okay? You see those fucking bad boys? My man's got his own sonar detector, okay? Our airspace, our readiness you is high. We chat. continue to face. Rear Admiral General Daniel Hagari will inevitably hear you. Intend to attack Iranian nuclear facilities. The answer is that Israel's military will continue to do whatever is needed to defend the people uh -huh. of Israel. Israel was invaded by Arab nations Has twice after the, the suggestion of a two-state solution. Not yeah, dude. To Israel any small attack beam. against Iran based on agreement with the United Kingdom and the United States. It's crazy because he was hearing the missiles being launched. Like he's a big part of the defense. But, uh, the military will continue to do whatever is needed to protect our people. <laughs>
כל מה שנדרש על להגן ביטחון אזרחי מדינת ישראל. As I have said, the event is not yet behind us, and the military will do whatever necessary to defend our people. Now I will speak in English. Big ears, a classic anti-Semitic troop. Wait, what? No, it's not. Drones, cruise missiles, and ballistic missiles towards the state of Israel. Together with our allies and partners across the region, we are operating at this very moment to defend Israel from Iran's attack. So far, we have intercepted the vast majority of incoming missiles by Israeli systems. So far, we have intercepted and are continuing to, inter to intercept dozens of attack drones as well as cruise missiles and ballistic missiles outside of Israel's border. A number of Iranian missiles fell inside Israeli territory, cause, causing minor damage to a military base with no casualties. Only one little girl has been hurt, and we hope she will be well. The Iranian attack is ongoing. Our plans are in the air. Tonight, wide-scale attack by Iran is a major escalation. Together with our allies and partners, We are, operating at a, at, we are operating at full force to defend the state of Israel and the people of Israel. We will continue to fulfill this mission. Questions, please. CNN is asking what type and how many projectiles have been fired towards Israel tonight so far, and how many drones and missiles have been intercepted, and can you specify by region? The event is still occurring, but until now, over 200 Different kinds have been fired to Israel. Killer drones, ballistic missiles, and cruise missiles. We have already intercepted a vast majority of the threats by Israel. No, this isn't the human animals guy. That's Yoav Gallant, defense minister. This is Rear Admiral uh, Daniel Hagari, famously pointing to the calendar, Intercepting saying targets. this is a terror calendar. Ready for any threat that will come to Israel, we will do everything we need, everything to defend the state of Israel. Thank you very much. All right, so you're watching there a live press conference there uh, from Daniel Hagari, the Israeli military spokesman, uh, talking there. Um, he was saying that Israel uh, was ready uh, for this attack. Uh, he said uh, the public must remain cool and calm uh, and not panic. Um, he was asked uh, about what was happening in Demona, which is an area where Israel, we believe, uh, has a nuclear facility. So there was some minor damage caused from a drone there, but nothing major. Um, he says... Um, The Israeli response isn't over yet, even though Iran says uh, that's the end of their response. He was saying they still have planes in the skies uh, and their response will continue uh, because these, the Iranian threat still exists. What was the little girl doing in the base? Chat, I don't think you understand. There are areas that aren't going to get broad coverage. Some, some drones are going to get through the defenses. Two things could have happened at the same time. Not only, it's not one area that was targeted and and successfully striked okay i think that what he's saying the one little girl is consistent with the reporting that we've seen so far it probably is like an interceptor like it could be it could be a remnants of a missile outside of israeli airspace that, so, the, that the 10 year old uh, was struck with Iranians like it could be a, it could be debris it could be anything points, and that is the thing concluded Uh, I think from the Israeli standpoint, uh, it's not <laughs> Someone old... said, bro is getting progressively more strapped. Yeah, it's kind of wild. He was, he did not have the vest on at first. He put the vest on, now he's got the helmet on. Next time we see him, he's going to have the fat man suit for Metal Gear Solid 2. Um, and, uh, and basically sort of maintain that kind of home uh, front command uh, uh, list of, of what they should and shouldn't be doing. So, you know, we know that the uh, the airport, the Ben-Gurion ben airport is, is going to be closed uh, indefinitely. We know that uh, uh, schools, universities, daycare, etc., that's going to be shut for the next couple of days. Uh, and nobody is allowed to gather in uh, numbers greater than a, a thousand people but I think generally the Israeli military and uh, its uh, friends and partners can conclude that this was a pretty successful defense uh, of the country uh, as long as there is 
no further waves uh, that significantly uh, degrade the air defense's capabilities to, to deal with the situation. They say that they were... Yeah, see, the systems are not programmed to protect certain areas like open fields and farms, and I won't be surprised if the Bedouin villages are also excluded. Some. Some areas where the Bedouins live are, are not... Uh, provided adequate coverage from the Iron Dome. Few got through and caused some damage at a base, a military base in, in the south of the country. And Daniel Hagari said that as far as they're aware at the moment, there is only one casualty, a small girl, who they say they hope to get better soon. All right, uh, Rory Challenge there live for us uh, in uh, Okpadi's Jerusalem. Rory, for the time being, thank you. Let's bring in Oren Ziv. He's a journalist and commentator at the Israeli magazine uh, 972. Uh, Oren, good to have you with you. I believe that you're in Tel Aviv. We understand uh, you've seen some of the interceptions uh, of these drones. Uh, tell us what you've been seeing and hearing there where you are. So it's the middle of the night here in Tel Aviv. We've seen some flares and airplanes on the sky. It's hard to say. If it's Israeli flares or other things, there's not like have shooting been any stars. hits in Tel Aviv or in, in the area. Earlier today, there was an anti-government demonstration and also for the release of the hostages. During the demonstrations, the, the organizer got the orders from the army, from the police, and they asked the people to leave. And since then, since uh, around 10 bro, in what the is evening, this we've take, seen the streets bro. getting empty, people leaving to their homes, not only the demonstration, but also other crowded area. Uh, I've seen people uh, buying a bit of food, some mineral. Bro, what is my man saying? Governor Phil Murphy, we're closely monitoring the situation in the Middle East. New Jersey stands with the people of Israel. Is such, dude, we are such a fucking joke of a nation, okay? We are such a fucking meme country, bro. I swear to God. Bro, you're the governor of New Jersey. What are you saying? What do you mean you're closely monitoring the situation in Israel? New Jersey stands proudly with Israel is like such a wild take. It's like New Jersey stands ready, sir. We will send. We will send our fucking shock troopers. We promise we will send the state troopers over to, to Tel Aviv instantly at a moment's notice. It's like, <laughs> sure, Phil. Thanks. We were wondering what New Jersey was doing. <laughs> it's like. Like, what do you mean, bro? What do you mean? What do you mean? Like, oh, New Jersey stands proudly. The state of New Jersey stands proudly with the, with the state of Israel. Like, I just, I can't. Chatters tuning in from any other country. Think about this. The LAPD is closely monitoring develops between Iran and Israel. While there are no credible threats to Los Angeles at this time. It's just. Yo, we're so stupid, bro. We are like, we are such a dumb country. <laughs> <laughs> this is the official account of the Los Angeles Police Department headquarters, man. This is not satire. LAPD is closely monitoring the situation. <laughs> it's like, what do you mean? What do you mean? Oh, my God. While New Jersey is distracted by Iran, Pennsylvania and her allies in New York will make plans to return the occupied cities of Camden and Jersey City to their rightful homes. <laughs> the tri-state... <laughs> The tri-state axis of resistance will retaliate against New Jersey for its for its unconditional support to the Zionist entity. <laughs> we here, we here in the tri-state do not can, will not stand idly by and watch New Jersey offer unconditional support. Know that the U.S. president, as recently as in just the last couple of days, repeatedly iterated to Iran that he was. Yeah, this is the other part of it. It's like, but I was being awfully quiet. Do they stand with Iran or something? Yeah, we need to hear from every governor in this fucking beautiful uh, nation, okay? Because if I don't hear from my governor, my mayor, and my police department that they are unconditionally and firmly committed to defending Israel. I'll be honest, I'm going to start thinking a little differently, okay? Seems to me your silence speaks volumes, okay? Gruesome Governor Gavin Newsom, your silence, sir, equals violence, okay? Where does Wisconsin stand on the matter? Where does our Kansas stand on the matter? We need to know. <laughs> the Keystone State wants a beach and no longer wants to be Keystone. Goodbye, New Jersey. Um, President Biden's weak and effectual leadership led to this moment. Iran was emboldened to attack because President Biden refused to stand up. Bitch, you can't stand up. How about you stand up, Greg Abbott? Fuck you mean stand up. Excuse me. Jordan fans going crazy on Twitter. Yeah. Dude, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the beautiful state of Michigan to make a statement that they are actually 
in favor of in favor of the the they're sending support to the brave Iranian Revolutionary Guard. Okay, Big Gretch, come on now, come in, Big Gretch. U.S. President Biden and Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu are currently holding a phone call to discuss response options to tonight's unprecedented Iranian attack against Israel. I mean, it is no, it's unprecedented in the sense that Iran striking Israel directly is unprecedented. That part is correct. It's not unexpected. If they said, if they said it was like unexpected, or if they said it was, um, you know, uh, unacceptable. But it isn't unprecedented. It actually is. Coachella is closely monitoring the developments between <laughs> Iran and Israel. Oh my God, that'd be so funny if Coachella was like, we, we need to do a moment of silence. Everybody, not to bum the vibes here at Coachella, are beautiful. As you guys know, as you guys know, Coachella is a place for techno music. Where, where does techno music come from? Where does the worst, like, House music you've ever heard come from Israel. Of course, we have to we have to do a moment of silence. Don't you think got the right to defend itself? That's a great way to ask that question. You mean Iran? Because yes. Kocaeli belediyesi de durumu dikkatle takip edip Filistin halkına destek açıklarsa şaşmam. Çok hoş olur yani. Anyway, what do you think is the likelihood of Israel going nutty mode? I think Israel has been going nutty mode. So, what is the likelihood of Israel stopping? Is the real question. And I think that likelihood is slim. Alabama, Alabama stands with Israel. America stands with Israel. Please continue to join us in praying for Israel, the Jewish people, and our fellow Americans and allies in the region. Governor Greg Gianforte, the great state of Montana. Susan and I are praying for the people in Israel. Montana stands with them against this unprovoked attack. Unprovoked. Unprovoked attack from Iran. <laughs> to be fair, he's from Montana, bro. They don't got internet over there, okay? He probably doesn't know. Bro, they, <laughs> he gets his fucking... He gets his information from Carrier Pigeon. I can't, I can't shit on him too hard, you know what I mean? He's like, unprovoked. Here in the beautiful state of Alabama, we are praying... For the Jews, praying that they leave and go to Israel. We do not want them here. We want them in Israel instead. We are, we are a very anti-Semitic but pro-Israel state, as you guys know. <laughs> this guy is way too horny for this. Yeah, OSINT guys are so funny. Israel's about to make shock and awe look like child's play. Yeah, 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 sick. Dude, Osin guys and just like fucking nutting every time war is happening. I I wish them well because I feel like New York has fallen. Oh no. New York stands with the people of Israel as they face a horrific attack by Iran. We are not aware of any domestic threats. As a precautionary measure, uh, the police are on high alert to protect houses of worship in high profile locations. New York has fallen, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> response to the Zionist regime's aggression against our diplomatic presence in Damascus. The matter can be deemed concluded. Uh, it went on to say, however, should the Israeli regime make uh, another mistake, Iran's response will be considerably more severe. It is a conflict between Iran and the rogue Israeli regime from which the U.S. must stay away. Those are the words verbatim uh, that the uh, Iranian mission to the U.N. posted oh, a little over an hour ago. It's important that they referenced this document, Article 51, because that is important uh, because that is in the U.N. Charter, and it says any uh, member state of the U.N. that uh, is a victim of aggression, uh, military aggression, does have the right to respond. Essentially, that is what... Uh, Article 51 says. And so Iran very clearly laying out in that post on the X platform saying, essentially, we are in uh, accordance with our rights under international law and under the UN Charter in our response. Our response meaning Iran's retaliatory. Silly Iran, dude. Don't you know? Silly Iran. Don't you know international law doesn't pertain to Iran? What the fuck? So dumb. The Security Council, and this is important, uh, the Security Council, of course, is tasked with uh, overseeing peace and security in the world. Uh, we've been told by diplomatic sources that Malta, and they are the president of the Security Council for the months of April. As of right now, we are told by diplomatic sources, Malta has not received any request from a Security Council member 
uh, to hold an emergency meeting. However, that could change. Bro, the moment. greatest response came from LeBron, okay? Iran launches 400 drones in retaliation for Israeli consulate compound strike. Nothing like two heavyweights doing what they do best for the love of the sport. You know, he said that. Check the fucking date, dude. Check the date. He said it right then and there, okay? Against Israel, Iran has once again demonstrated that it is intent on sowing chaos in its own backyard. He went on to say the UK will continue to stand up for Israel's security and for all our regional partners, including Jordan and Iraq. Alongside our allies, we are urgently working to stabilize the situation and prevent further escalation. No one wants to see more bloodshed. Well, Ali Khamenei, Iran's supreme leader, has issued a video statement on X. He says the malicious Zionist regime will be punished. He said attacking our consulate is like attacking our soil. The malicious regime has made a wrong move in this case. All right, this is what the airspace over the region looks like. Iran didn't really get revenge. They didn't show their capabilities. Well, they did, more in a negative way. They are going to get hit much harder. Kind of embarrassing for them. Yeah, dude, kind of embarrassing for Iran. You're right. Like when when Israel uh, gets his gets its way and uh, starts bombing Iranian soil directly, it'll just be kind of embarrassing for them. It's like a wild wild situation, like a wild way to analyze the situation. How can anyone look at this crazy Iranian leader and give him any credit? What like vibes alone? What do you what do you mean? Because he's got like a scraggly beard and he he's not dressed up in a fucking suit. I mean, there's plenty of there's plenty of monkeys in suits in the Western world. Let me tell you something, brother. Okay, they're making really fucking bloodthirsty and vindictive uh, and and barbaric acts just just on the aesthetics alone. You're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna really understand the situation. Also, ultimately, Iranian domestic politics aside, you have to understand something very important here. Okay, you have to understand something very important here. Benjamin Netanyahu dresses in a fucking suit all day every day but that doesn't change the reality that he is a violent bloodthirsty barbarian you know what i mean wearing a suit doesn't change that reality at all see the u.s involvement now in any retaliation by israel against what's happening tonight there's one thing very important that i heard in the news that when uh, the american administration told the israeli that they cannot or they should not retaliate without coordination and uh, this is very important. Sure, uh, Israel's genocide doesn't change the fact that Iran used the consulate militarily. Israel oh my to, God. To um, retaliate in a way that would probably lead to a regional war because the Americans have. Bro, is there chatters who say, sure, Israel is genocidal? Is there like a, an action that the, supposedly, you know, you're, you're allegedly saying Israel is genocidal? Is there an action that Israel takes that you actually have an issue with, though? Like, how can you say the same thing at the same time? Like, you're on the one hand, you're like, sure, Israel is genocidal. But, like, they were using the consulate militarily. Like, why do you even have to say, sure, Israel is genocidal then? Just fucking say Israel's always valid. That's what your actual talking point is. That's what you want to say. Israel can have a little genocide as a treat. Because if you truly believe that Israel is genuinely genocidal, then shouldn't every fucking, every regional actor that surrounds Israel be operating in, in the exact same ways that, like, Yemen has been operating? Like, what do you think genocide is? Do you think genocide is just some fun games? Or do you think it is the systematic ethnic cleansing and displacement of an entire population? Because I think it's the other, the second thing, right? And, it, and once you say, sure, Israel's genocidal, then, you know, all bets are off, don't you think? Let me just get uh, another thought from you, Hassan, <laughs> um, because I want to ask you... You know, it's, it's, it's easy to focus on what's happening tonight and lose perspective in terms of the broader geopolitical uh, situation in Can't the Middle East. So what are the implications the and the regional implications yeah, the, for things like oil production, oil prices? I mean, it's not just the Red country, Sea, you know? it's the Persian Gulf. So what does this mean then for global shipping and the oil market? Well, it has been a problem until this moment because of the, what happens in the Red Sea and the, um, the Gulf of Aden. Because the Houthi, have, um, the Houthi um, has been... Um, targeting all these ship shipments through the, the strait and and this actually led to a um, big problem because of the uh, uh, the prices are going up now if this uh, back and forth between the Iranians and Israelis continue unchecked I think this will also have a very grave implications for the prices of oil and because you know Iran is one of the uh, main exporters uh, but also it impacts probably everyone 
uh, around the region. Mm. Let me get a final thought from you, Hassan, because we've been talking to our guests tonight who've been telling us um, that they were surprised uh, that Iran made this direct attack on Israel and that, they, and that they didn't go through their proxies, which then put some distance uh, between Tehran and what's happening on the... Israel's you know, the calling space. for an emergency meeting for so the U.S. Iran's Security proxies, Council over the Iranian uh, attack. Hezbollah. I mean, there are many other fronts which so far have calibrated to some extent their response. Could we now see an escalation then from those proxies? Uh, and yeah. I Iran targets military targets is retaliation monstrous. Israel wipes off Iran off the map. Cool and base, apparently, according to that chatter. Yes, because all defense... Guys... All defense of Israel, especially at this stage, when like even your normie mom and dad, your MSNBC, or even sometimes your Fox News watching mom and dad, understand that what Israel is doing is like kind of fucked up. At this stage, if you are still defending Israel in any capacity, then yeah, you're doing it because you don't think that Israel's enemies are real human beings at all, but instead barbaric monsters that need to fucking perish. The dehumanization is kicked in. There's no way that you can... There's no way that you can have this attitude if you truly do believe that, uh, that Israel is, is acting this way against real humans, okay? To the, to the Iranian interest. Yeah, and so, you know, the Iranians saying that, you know, this is their one and only response. As far as they're concerned, the matter is concluded. Yeah, yeah exactly, uh, but, yeah. But as we heard from Daniel Hagari, the Israeli spokesperson, they're saying... We see how uh, dead people in Israel like yeah. Gaza, which is acting, yeah. Still, it's still ongoing, okay. That's probably what it is, like... Well, Iraq is part. one of the countries that has shut its airspace. Al Jazeera's Mohammed Jamjoum is there. He joins us live from the Iraqi capital, Baghdad. Uh, so, Mohammed, Iraq has announced it's closed its airspace. What more are Iraqi officials saying there in the capital where you are? Darren, it's interesting because you would expect at a time like this that is so fraught and so tense bro, 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 that bro, bro, we bro, would... bro, 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 bro. Maybe attacking Israeli citizens is also, you know, fucking terrible. You sound like conservatives after 9-11. You're either with us or you support the terrorists. Wait, what? Iran is not attacking Israel to free Palestine. I sound like the conservatives after 9-11. The fuck do you mean? Are you okay, dude? I feel like I feel like a lot of people's like a lot of people's programming is just like busted completely. Are you listening to the things I'm saying? Who do you think is America in this equation? Iran? Is that what you think? America is closer to Iran in this circumstance? Like the fuck do you mean? You're either with us or against us. You said personally that Israel's doing a genocide. Okay, you said Israel is valid in attacking Iran. I Israel is terrible for committing genocide. It's not hard, lol. Bro, if Israel is committing genocide by your own admission, which I definitely think uh, it is, then don't you think that it is valid to attack Israel in that situation? Like, fuck you mean? He you're literally, by your logic, you are straight up stating that, yeah, Israel's doing a genocide. It's fine. It's bad. It's terrible. But, like, also, you know... They can fucking strike against those who attack it. No, but like how much of this is actually realistically for the Palestinian cause? Iran did not do that much after October 7. Iran retaliated only when its own soil was struck. Okay? Perhaps Israel should stop fucking striking any and every country in the region in an effort to basically open up a multiple front war and draw America into the conflict. That is why Israel did this attacks on, on, on Israel. A retaliation like what Iran did or a response like what Iran did on civilian targets in Israel is just beyond uh, uh, what is uh, uh, proportionate or, or conceivable. Yes, I was surprised. Um, I, I guess they did it because they thought that they, uh, you know, Israel is vulnerable and they can do it now and maybe that Israel will not respond in a proper way. But I think what's more important just to remember that President Biden told the Iranians not to do it and they did it Anyway, so I guess what Iran was defying was not only Israel, but in fact also the United States and the international community. And that's a big problem that we need to think about and also to, to see how we react to it so this doesn't happen again. A former Israeli national security advisor, Eyal Hulata, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it very much. A very, thank very dangerous time in the Middle East right now. I want to go uh, back to the White House right now. I'm Jay Lee. Our correspondent is standing by. MJ, I'm told you have some news out of the White House involving a phone call between President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu. That's right, Wolf. Our understanding right now is that President Biden and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu uh, will be speaking tonight. Uh, of course, uh, in an incredibly uh, crucial and important conversation, given that this is the U.S. and Israel uh, talking as all of this is unfolding at the highest uh, levels and as the... Wait, so since Israel's doing genocide, it's 
It's fine to genocide Israel. Israel is owned by Jewish fascists and need to be just stopped, but all attack on Israeli civilians are fair. If you can find one single moment where I said those words, I will give you $1,000 US, okay? If you can find one single instance of me ever coming near any of these sentiments that you have just expressed in the chat, I will give you $1,000 American. You can DM me your PayPal afterwards, okay? Don't try to clip me reading the fucking comment. Don't do that. That doesn't count. AI deepfakes don't count either. Don't try to fucking AI deepfake it either. Do you feel like you don't have a fucking argument? That's why you're just making up stuff in your mind? He's saying that all countries should attack Israel? That's not what I'm saying at all. What the fuck are you talking about? I've said the exact opposite a million times over, especially as it pertains to Israeli civilians. Oh, dude, at a certain point, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Uh, it's just like, I, I, I don't think I'll ever In be able to get to a lot of people. Days. Uh, again, uh, you know, as soon as we have a uh, readout from the White House on President Biden's conversation with the Israeli Prime mm. Minister, we will bring that to you. Uh, but it is hard to overstate, of course, the importance of that conversation, uh, given the gravity of the situation right now. Wolf. Uh, MJ, very quickly, uh, earlier tonight, uh, there was some speculation uh, that uh, maybe the president, President Biden, would go before cameras and address the American people on what's going on between Israel and Iran right now. I take it that has gone away, right? That is not our understanding, at least right now. But, uh, Wolf, I have to say the situation is certainly really fluid. Uh, you know, uh, the president did meet with his national security team in the situation room for uh, at least a few hours. And when that meeting concluded a little while ago, White House official was quick to say. Yeah, bro. I wonder how this I wonder how this previously six months subscribed top of the hour fucking ad break debating chatter. Wonder why you came back here now after fucking two years of not being in here i wonder why you chose to come back here now and have this dramatic conclusion that you believe this is my assessment of the matter perhaps the reason why you feel that way is because you can't address any of the things i'm saying about israel so you have to find it in your mind because if i were to say it's okay if i were to repeat what you just said and actually condone it then yeah, I would be truly monstrous, right? So in your mind, you have to envision me as a monster because the truth, the truth that I speak here, yeah, well, that doesn't really suit your arguments. It's sad. I urge you to reconsider your stances. I urge you to see the humanity in people, please. And MJ Lee, our senior White House correspondent. MJ, I know you're going to be busy. We'll stay in very close touch with you. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Right now, I want to bring in Democratic Congressman Jared Moskowitz of Florida. He's a key member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman, thank you very much for joining us. I know you're a strong supporter of Israel. What's your reaction to what Iran has now decided to do to launch these killer drones, as the Israeli military calls them, these cruise missiles, oh these other God. rockets directly from inside Iran this towards fucking Israel? Guy. No, thanks, Well, Thanks for having me. I'm literally at a bat mitzvah uh, at the moment, uh, which is what Iran is trying to to destroy. Make no mistake about it. This is a uh, unprecedented attack from Iran direct into Israel proper. It is uh, beyond uh, beyond proportional based on their response. Hundreds of missiles uh, into Israel. And by the way, not not on a government or targeted site uh, like Israel did, but on civilians and on holy sites. The images of Israel's defense systems. Why do you talk shit about anyone who doesn't agree with you? It's pretty simple on this issue, okay? You might have disagreements on everything else, but on this issue, it's pretty simple. Israel is doing a genocide. That's it. Israel is doing a genocide on the Palestinian population. Israel is also trying to bring in the United States of America to the conflict and take it directly to Iran. And it's being done primarily by a dude who is demonstrably unpopular and very corrupt and is doing that in his own self-interest because he wants to extend the war cabinet and he wants to continue pummeling Gaza one because he wants to preserve his legacy and two because he doesn't want the criminal punishments that are going to come as soon as he's no longer in charge in this circumstance if you're still trying to defend Israel it's pretty fucking it's pretty bad like I I it's hard for me not to feel like you're, defend, you're defending unspeakable things. I'm not saying you're right, though. 
You are not right, though, but people have different opinions. Yeah, dude, if people have different... Brother, when a Nazi comes in here and talks about the Holocaust and acts like it didn't happen, I fucking shit on them and I ban them, okay? So why would I have a different perspective when it comes to literally ongoing genocide right in front of our eyes? You just want inconsistency from me because you feel like it is a more acceptable opinion in your eyes. It is not for me, okay? This is not a simple disagreement on what kind of ice cream flavor you think is the best. I think it's, it's, it's chocolate chip cookie dough. You might think it's Cherry Garcia. I disagree. I think you're wrong. Your opinion is morally repugnant for that take, but it doesn't matter. You say mint chocolate chip, I'll probably ban you. But, you know, we may have our disagreements, but it's not that big of a deal. But when it comes to genocide, it is kind of a big deal. It's kind of the biggest deal. So it's not just like an honest and simple disagreement that we're having with chatters. We're talking about chatters who are trying to defend a genocidal state. And this chatter, who has been chirping this entire day, is still chirping, and I still haven't banned him. You're just proving his point, numb nut. It's just a war, man. It's a war against children. You don't understand. Uh, new barrage of, uh, of, of munitions, I mean, or new barrage of missiles, I think, are... Oh, fuck. Oh, here we go. It rained a little bit. So, of course, I'm going to lose fucking internet, dude. Great. Ay, 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 ay. Of course, dude. Of course. It's back. It's back. It's back. It's back. It's back. Classic. Guys, it started raining in Los Angeles, so you already know what that means. Ron that means... Says, Look, the matter is concluded. Israel says, no, it's not. The threat is still ongoing. I think it's quite clear just by the size and uh, the scope of this attack that this was primarily aimed at uh, enabling the Iranians to save face, to show that they did something, that they deliberately violated Israel's red line because the Israelis said that they would view an attack from Iranian soil as something that would further escalate the situation. But they've also done it in a manner that clearly puts an end to it. If they really wanted to uh, inflict far greater damage on Israel, there would have been a far larger number of ballistic missiles, as well as drones, not shot from Iran, but much closer uh, to Israel, uh, in order to make sure that they would get there faster. They didn't choose to do this. They did something to be able to say that this is now concluded. And if Israel then decides to act again, then uh, the Iranians will try to portray that as a deliberate escalation by the Israelis uh, that further uh, 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 widens this conflict uh, and, and essentially shift the blame back onto the Israelis. Um, the question really is, will Biden do something here to put an end to the Israeli action? Remember, he said, don't to the Iranians. Will he ever say don't to the Israelis? He hasn't done that so far. Yeah. Um, and what do you make, then, of the U.S. response? I mean, as you say, Biden said don't. Um, the Iranians went ahead anyway. Um, what more should the Americans be doing now? Um, are they likely to calibrate the Israeli response? Uh, the Israeli security to cabinet Iranian authorized attack? Prime Minister Netanyahu and Gallant and Benny well, Gantz to decide on the Israeli response. The, the Israeli war cabinet convened tomorrow to discuss the issue. So Benjamin Netanyahu uh, had a conversation with uh, Benny Boy, had a conversation with Joseph Robinette Biden, the war cabinet gave him the authorization alongside defense minister Yoav Gallant, who's the one who said uh, Palestinians are human animals. We're fighting human animals. Their water, electricity, and food must be shut. Um, and the uh, and Minister Benny Gantz, the liberal America's guy in the room, uh, are going to decide on the Israeli response. On top of that, Israel also called for an emergency meeting of the UN Security Council over the Iranian attack. They're going to do this, I suspect, and say, we have been brutally attacked by a foreign nation and our sovereignty has been violated by the foreign nation of Iran, which is an adversary to many members of the Security Council, with certain exceptions, and therefore we should have the legal right to retaliate in kind. Um, that is precise. I, I suspect that that is what they're going to ask for. Obviously, the U.S. Security Council can be like, fuck no, get the fuck out of here. And then they're going to turn around and simply say, we're doing it anyway because America's backing us. And also do propaganda and be like, see, they're obviously very anti-Semitic. They are obviously very anti-Semitic for not giving us the authorization. Obviously, this is retaliatory in nature. However, do you think this was the smart move from Iran? I mean, Netanyahu has been trying to sabotage the talks since they began. And while Hania shows some restraint, Iran bit the bullet. Literally, Israel is committing genocide and ethnic cleansing. Pogroms took place today. But do you really think this will help Palestinians now that the U.S. and Israel will commit? 
I don't know. I guess the one silver lining in that circumstance would be that like they won't be able to focus as much on Palestinians on completing the ethnic cleansing on the Palestinian population, including like the invasion of Rafah, if they are trying to launch forward operations on Iranian soil. Um, so there is that, but I don't believe that Iran retaliated against Israel because they care so much about the Palestinians. I believe Iran retaliated against Israel because it's a regional actor that had to fucking put their foot down or else they felt as though Israel will continue increasing the pressure and violate their sovereignty further. I think that's the reason why they did that. Not because they care about the Palestinians or anything like that. Now, having said that, there are pogroms in the West Bank that are not going to stop and will only increase. You are correct. Time without an O-O-W-O. What you're talking about is the recent ones that happened over the course of the past couple of days, including where I believe an American, or not an American, a U.S. aid worker was shot. Um, yeah, for trying to assist a wounded Palestinian person. Xenomorph. Thank you for the 10 gifted subs. <sighs> Overall, though, I think the Iranian retaliation, there's a reason why the Iranian retaliation came in the way that it came. Um, the Iranian retaliation only happened after Iranian sovereignty was violated under international law. And I do believe that, I do believe that Benjamin Netanyahu did that deliberately. I think his war cabinet attacked and violated Iranian sovereignty specifically so they would withstand some kind of retaliation and then they would go back and even up the ante and directly attack Iran on Iranian soil, hopefully uh, getting the United States in their perspective, getting the United States to, uh, uh, to join the fight as well, drawing them in. What? Oh, that's a good one. Hassan, why is it so hard for you to admit that Iran is obviously the aggressor? They literally bombed civilian centers, didn't warn civilians, claimed to want to hit military targets, blockaded Israel, built a wall around... Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought you'd be finishing the walk and then what happened? Well, what happened is Iran retaliated against Israel. Incredibly critical of the United Nations. In fact, this same Israeli ambassador to the UN has called for the Secretary General to resign in shame because of how Israel thinks he is handling uh, the situation uh, in Gaza. So, but, but listen, Israel will use the UN for how it wants to use the Fucking UN psychos. to its advantage. And you clearly see that they want to elevate this uh, situation. And they're saying that this is a violation of the UN Charter. Interestingly enough, though, in, in, in Iran's uh, uh, post on the social media platform X, Iran says their response is in line with the UN Charter, uh, Article 51, which says any member state that is attacked, in the case of Iran, it was their diplomatic mesh. I don't think that, but for the record, for people asking like, well, what's Israel's end game here? What's their end goal? How do they, how do they feel as though they can like, you know, bring Iran the heel? I don't think they're thinking about an end game. I think that they just are not thinking about an end game at all. I think they just, uh, are going to continue trying to pummel Iran and see where it goes. Fascism is a death cult. That's why the Nazis also spread themselves too thin. And by the way, make no mistake, uh, Israel is more ascetic than uh, the Nazis were as far as like conducting it, its genocidal operation in, in Gaza while simultaneously fighting against, uh, fighting against Iran. So... That's why I said they probably don't have the same capabilities of continuing their uh, ethnic cleansing campaigns in Gaza. Um, the Nazis had already put all of the people, uh, Jews, trade unionists, communists, socialists, Romani people, or Roma people, um, LGBT people uh, in concentration camps by that point, and they were already facilitating um, at least parts of the uh, final solution. So for them... I mean, it's both fascist ideologies, and you're watching it unfold, okay? You're, you're watching fascism in action, fascism in display. Um, the, the most realistic outcome is that, you know, it, it goes the way of Nazi Germany and continues to expand, <sighs> continues to open up new fronts, and um, yeah... We'll see where, where it goes the UN from there. Charter. Sorry. Uh, Iran 
does have a right to respond to an attack on their territory. So uh, the Secretary General saw kind of, I think, probably saw a little bit of the writing on the wall of what potentially could be happening. What we are seeing happening right now, he's basically calling on all parties to restraint because he is really worried about a spillover effect uh, from Israel's war on Gaza. And he's been talking about this for months now. Well, this spillover effect is very much <laughs> Uh, happening. It's no longer a worry. Could it happen? It very much is happening. Yeah, right it absolutely now. is. Uh, Gabe Berlo is on the line for us there at UN headquarters in New York. Gabe, thank One. you. Sarah Fim, can't wait for you to call Israel targeting Iranian law sites genocide because it fits your agenda. Are you comparing Israel with Nazi Germany? I'm comparing Zionism with Nazism. Yes, they are both fascist genocidal ideologies. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I mean, make no mistake. I'm not alone in this comparison. There are Holocaust scholars that also make this valid comparison. It is analogous. Israel is currently doing an ethnic cleansing campaign. Israel also is an apartheid state. Um, hopefully you will one day recognize that truth. Israel being a fascist state, Zionism uh, being equal to fascism is not my assessment alone. I'm not alone in that assessment at all. There are Israeli Knesset members who also agree. There are Israeli conscientious objectors to the IDF that also agree. So yeah, it's true, whether you want to recognize it or not. Explosives, but the explosives have um, copper penetrating plates that are not just on the ends, but also on the sides. And there's also um, around the side of the warhead, um, metal fragment that's sort of in like a little band that can create damage. And so what you have is- uh, Now you Iranian fanboy is about to see, I am not, not a fanboy capable. of the Iranian government. You are delusional, you are coping, but also these sentiments, these sentiments were expressed against the Yemeni population as well. And look what happened there. Everyone was like, the Houthis are going to fuck around and find out. It's like a, a country that was the genocide, came from the throes of genocide and retaliated against the Israeli genocide as best as they could. And they still are continuing that to this day. America's bombing campaign did not work. How could you take the side of the Iran considering their treatment of women? Okay, dude, come on, dude. Stop with this fucking top of the hour ad break debate, okay? I hope you're trying to bait me into serving the top of the hour ad break. There's no shot that you legitimately think this. I don't make assessments on genocide based on the virtue of, of the people that are, you know. Yeah, there you go. Uh, of course. Stop. Stop. Don't do this anymore. This settler colonialism, calling it fascism, is not very accurate and waters down the term. Fascism historically came into power as a reaction to capitalism failing and communism becoming popular. It has always had a very directly anti-communist focus. No, Israel is not. Zionism in its, state, in its current stage is not just settler colonialism. No, Zionism is definitely fascist. There is definitely an in-group. There's, it's, it's definitely ultra-nationalist. You're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. You're also wrong if you think that you're not going to see the top of the hour ad break. At the top of every hour, you will see it for sure. Uh, if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for five dollars or for free with the Twitch Prime. Here's the three minute ad break now. Are you out here saying that Iran has any women's rights? No, uh, I wasn't talking about Iranian women's rights at all. What does Iranian women's rights have anything to do with Israel striking the Iranian embassy in Damascus and then Iran retaliating? And then if Israel inevitably does retaliate against Iran's retaliation, by greatly escalating and striking Iranian soil and kills a shit ton of Iranian women? How do we make that mental calculation? Like, are they doing it in a woke way? Are they doing that in a woke way, you think? Like, where they're killing Iranian women, but, like, this time in a woke way, in a way that, like, respects them or something? Is it wrong to love your country, though, and want to have a place to go back to when the most of the world looks like it could be anti-Semitic? Brother, that's a very favorable assessment of how Israel has operated. Okay, there are certainly issues with anti-Semitism in the United States of America, but by and large, as an American, okay, as an American citizen, it would be a great shame if this country was no longer a safe space for Jews. It would be completely unacceptable, okay? Israel does not make Jews safe. Israel can't even keep Jews in Israel safe. We are literally watching what is happening in Israel right now. That's, a, that's just a propaganda that Zionists have told everyone, and it's stuck in a way to justify Israel's morally repugnant actions in perpetuity.
Would you have called the U.S. during its earlier years a genocidal, a fascist state? Uh, yeah. What do you mean? White supremacist. Yeah. What, what do you mean? What, what? I think America's early settler colonial actions were fascist, for sure. The fascist ideology that, like, Anglo-Saxons were more deserving of this land, uh, with the purposeful exclusion of the indigenous population, with the enslavement of, uh, of, of black people. Yeah. I think that early settler colonialism in the United States was definitely fascist. I would go so far as to say America currently is a proto-fascist nation. I don't get this. It's true that independent of more messianic strands, Zionism is intentions were political in nature to find a homeland for Jews uh, so they'll be safe. Independent of more messianic strands? Yes, Zionism's intentions were political in nature to find a homeland for Jews so they'll be safe. Except the, the homeland was built on top of a fraudulent idea, as you know as well as I do, which is that a land without uh, a land without people for a people without land. There were people there. <laughs> And everyone obviously understood that, you know, those people had to be dealt with. Israel's been dealing with those people for 75 years. This is one of the unfortunate consequences of such, uh, 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 such ways of dealing with the people. Israel has developed itself as an apartheid state as a consequence of that. Israel can either be a democratic nation or a Jewish nation. It cannot be a Jewish supremacist nation and a democratic one at the same time. Israel currently is not a democratic nation for this reason. That's why it's an apartheid. Press send too early. Oh, but it failed. It said that it conducted uh, uh, this uh, strike, or strikes, I should say, on the strength of Article 51 of the UN this Charter. This guy keeps pertaining talking about the Article 51 over and over again. It's so funny to see Al Jazeera being like, Iran is, is attacking Israel on uh on the basis of international law as a retaliation for its sovereignty being violated by the israeli nation state meanwhile we go to cnn and they're like um how many iranian children should we assassinate with uh nuclear weapons that they're going to be confronted <laughs> with um it, now a, a, a very significant new reality for them and of course uh, as we're now hearing that the prime minister Biden reportedly asked uh, israel not to retaliate the, uh security cabinet has deferred to the prime minister's much smaller no. war cabinet to make a decision biden reportedly asked encouraged Israel not to respond with an attack on Iranian soil. They did not encourage Israel to not respond. They just simply said, do not respond on a, a Iranian soil. Also, he encouraged Israel. He didn't demand or he didn't say red lines, do not fucking attack Iran or Iranian soil. What is this? Iran's labor movement coming out against the attacks on Israel with firing at Israel. The Islamic Republic has adventurously began a war which is hurting a nation of 90 million. This regime is losing its last mission to destroy Iran, independent Iranian workers' union. Oh, the eventual victims of these attacks will be women, children, and the oppressed whose livelihood have been attacked in an all-out war. Interests of either neither of these two nations who are saddled with religious and fascist governments will be secured. Another Iranian trade union. I'm confused as to why Iran was attacked. Can someone explain to me what the deal is within Iran and Israel? Israel attacked Iranian soil by striking an Iranian consulate. You hate the Jews, that's it, an anti-Semite like Hitler. <laughs> sure, brother. Whatever you say, okay? Daniel Hagari said <laughs> Whatever you say, in big his dog. press briefing <laughs> that the, there are still intercepts going. Well, Messi's the name Hassana goes, oh, this is, a, this is another anti-Semite. <laughs> Hitlerian anti-Semite are going on um, uh, over the borders uh, before they get to uh, before they get to Israel but the fact that the home command has effectively put people on notice that they can be a little bit more relaxed they can of course turn that around in moments it is a very very effective alert system here not just with the sirens you hear and I hear another jet um, uh, speeding through the sky there and a second one directly above me speeding I'm waiting through for the him sky. to say something it is a very sophisticated system well, he's that can not. pinpoint a threat and let the population in that area know very, very quickly over, over their cellular phones. That that jet is quite low uh, that, that that's heading off Security into the distance. clarify that another so, barrage uh, is on its way to what Israel. What we heard from Daniel Hagari may still be playing out despite uh, the fact that the population has been put a little more at ease for the moment, Wolf.
Yeah, he said that over 200 of these Iranian drones, he called them the killer drones, have been intercepted successfully by the Israelis. We'll see what happens in the next few hours. The situation clearly is continuing right now. Nick Robertson in Jerusalem, thank you. I want to bring in Fred Pleitkin right now. He's done a lot of reporting from inside Iran. Uh, he, he's spoken to all the top Iranian you're right. So my point is, no matter how you justify it, Zionism is a failed project. The only way to create safety for Jews today is to end the apartheid and the supremacist regime. If your project is to create a safe home for Jews, the supposed original intentions of political Zionism, you should be anti-Zionist. I, th I agree. Yes, absolutely. The problem is that it's the Golda Meir quote, but in reversal. Like, Israel will never be safe for Jewish people or anyone else until Israelis love their children more than they hate Arabs. Like, she was right, but just on the other end, you know what I mean? Especially because when she said that about Arabs and Palestinians as a whole, it was laughable back then, but it's still, it's even more laughable now because the power holders in this equation is the Israeli government, a militant nuclear state. A lot of what, a lot of what uh, you hear from like early Zionists and Zionists now is just pure projection. <sighs> This wouldn't have happened if Biden didn't send billions of dollars that funded the attack on October 7th. <laughs> Biden gave billions of dollars to the Palestinian resistance groups. <laughs> yeah, man, you're so right. Yeah, Biden is a part. Biden is Hamas. This is true. Ben Shapiro was right. Already looking forward to what could happen next. It's been quite interesting to see some of the messaging that we've been seeing out of Tehran. We've seen some uh, from uh, Iran's representative to the uh, representation to the uh, UN uh, saying that the matter could be concluded here or that the matter could be deemed as being concluded, obviously saying the Iranians believe that the Israelis struck them, struck the embassy, killed uh, a bunch of uh, Revolutionary Guard top personnel uh, inside uh, that embassy uh, compound, even though the Israelis obviously say they didn't consider that to be an, uh, an embassy compound. The Iranians now saying we've struck back and it can end here. But then, of course, you also have that threat from the Iranians telling the U.S. not to get involved in all of this. And, of course, Wolf, we've been reporting uh, about this matter over the past um, a uh, little over a week uh, since since it happened. And we have seen the Iranians on several occasions, be it the foreign minister, be it others, telling the U.S. or urging the United States to stay out of this, to stay away. And that's the exact messaging that we're seeing tonight. This will be the uh, end again, of Iran. Yeah. One of the other things that we've also been picking up, Wolf, was that the Iranian sure. foreign ministry has put out a statement also in the middle of the night, which is quite unusual for them, calling their actions tonight, calling the strikes by the uh, Iranians, calling their targeting of Israeli territory self-defense and saying they believe that it's covered by the UN Charter. Um, I want to read you uh, some of that uh, statement of what the Iranians put out. They say that if Israel strikes back, and this is what they're referring to in that statement, they're saying, quote, if necessary, the Islamic Republic of Iran will not hesitate to take more defensive measures. So they're calling all this a defensive measure to protect its legitimate interests against any aggressive military actions and illegal use of force. So the Iranians are are saying that they consider um, the uh, attack on their embassy compound in Damascus, which of course Israel has not claimed responsibility for, that they consider that uh, to be an aggressive act and they consider this their retaliation. And again, the Iranians are saying it could end here, but of course right now um, the messaging is, is that the ball is in the Israeli court. At the same time, the Iranians are telling the U.S. to stay out of it, especially with the threats uh, that, uh, that, that the Iranians could uh, make very real for the U.S. in the region. Of Pause course, and effect. The they a lot of military the assets in the Middle East, and the Iranians are saying they have a lot of proxy forces near those military bases, Wolf. Yeah, and the statement that the, the IRGC, the uh, Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, just put out, it said it will hold, hold the United States responsible for what it termed the evil actions of the Israeli government. Uh, so they're clearly warning the United States if the U.S. does get involved in helping Israel at all, the U.S. will pay a big price for this. Is that right? Yeah, that's exactly uh, what, what I think they're saying. And it's a threat that we've been seeing from the Iranians really over the past couple of years. And a threat that they've also made, made good on a couple of times. If we look, for instance, back towards the Trump administration and even the months before uh, the U.S. Yeah, I was talking about this earlier, but it is a good time to remind people that Ukraine could have had this level of air defense if Netanyahu didn't block them from getting the Iron Dome tech. That's I, I forgot to mention that as well. Like when we were watching the Iron Dome in action, which is 
genuinely incredible. I mean, it is an incredible piece of technology for sure. Because remember, it is purely defensive in nature. Even if it's being defensively used by an apartheid regime, it's still a defensive weapon. And when Ukraine wanted Iron Dome defenses, Benjamin Netanyahu said, fuck no. Remember, it's not their tech to fucking say no about. Like, we played a big role in the development of the Iron Dome. Okay? It's ours. And yet, Benjamin Netanyahu said, no, you can't have it, Zelensky. Suck my dick. Why didn't Iran strike more military targets? Is it a lack of strategic intelligence? What do you mean? I think they tried to strike as many targets as they could, as many military targets as they could. Um, and it's still ongoing, but it's pretty crazy that they the said US no to that. In the Middle East. So clearly now threats from the Iranians. Again, the Iranians are saying, look, the U.S. bases are there. Iranian proxy forces are there as well. But of course, drones are a big threat to those U.S. assets in the Middle East as well, Wolf. Yeah, this is a very, very tense moment right now. Fred Plankin, thank you very much. We'll get back to you. Jim Shudo is with me uh, here in Washington. We're watching all of this unfold. This whole situation could explode I gotta big be. time or it could, it, could, it could calm down. No question. L listen, th this is an escalation. It's, a, it's an Iranian attack attempting to strike Israel. The defenses largely worked, it seems. That's why the damage assessments to date and you have, uh, show very little damage on the ground there and the IDF saying it intercepted the vast majority at of missiles. At least so far. At least so far, and there could be more to come. But, but we also do know that the U.S. did already participate, that, that it was shooting down some of these drones and missiles before they got close to Israeli territory. We should also note there was some concern prior to this that Israeli proxies might target U.S. forces in the region, and that does not appear to, to have Iranian happened. Proxies. Iranian, Iranian proxies. Iranian yeah. proxies target U.S. forces in the region, which they have done before multiple times, and, and as, as you know, as U.S. forces have died. They did not in this case, which was a deliberate decision by Iran. Certainly bold, aggressive, blatant to attack Israel, but they chose in, the, in this circumstance not to directly target U.S. forces. And there, there's a, an enormous number of U.S. forces, not just ground forces in the region, but of course U.S assets that have moved into the region prior to this, uh, which Iran did not strike. And, and that's a deliberate decision not to confront the U.S. directly now, despite the kind of rhetoric we're hearing from them. And this warning the U.S. away, let's be clear, the U.S. is highly involved in Israel's defense tonight. They moved assets into the region, ships, etc., to be able to scan the skies for threats exactly like this and help Israel take them out before they reached Israeli territory. And our understanding is that U.S. assets did take down some of these drones prior to reaching And I think it was significant Israel. that the commander of the U.S. Military Central Command, mm -hmm. which is responsible for the entire Middle East region, has spent the last several days in Israel coordinating yes. and projecting, and, 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 you know, what the U.S. and the Israelis would do if Iran did launch this kind of a strike. Absolutely. They were preparing for this. They were pre-positioning forces for this to help defend Israel and also to help uh, make clear. I don't get it. I thought they were fine on their own. It's kind of weird. Like, I thought they were totally fine on their own. That's what I kept hearing. That guy called me a bitch and said I didn't know what I was talking about. You know, seems weird that they... Um, Seems really weird that they, they don't seem to be super fun on their own and, and uh, are, are needing uh, help. Attack, but those defenses held. And we should note, you know, folks I think are familiar with the Iron Dome, which is, which is really the low altitude defense system for uh, is Israel. The drones are going to be uh, intercepted by the Iron Dome. Hi, well, Iron Dome, uh, but some of the other threats that were, were intercepted by Aero, which is a higher altitude right. defense system. You have the David Sling, which is for medium range missiles. You have a multi layered defense with the U.S. involved as well, and that multi layered defense appears to have worked tonight. Now, Israel's going to retaliate. I've been speaking to Israeli officials. Uh, it, it's clear that they will. The question now is, what does that retaliation look like? And, and, and like with any attack like this, you're always concerned about escalation ladders because one side attacks, you have this, what we presume to be uh, an Israeli strike in Damascus against the Iranian officials a number of weeks ago. You have this Iranian response. Israel People keep res saying, why did Israel attack Iran? Not understanding that you're watching why. You're watching why they did it. They're literally saying, they're, they're talking through the steps as to why they did it. It's an assessment. Uh, going back to October 7th, even, when, when there were great concerns about escalation uh, beyond, that as involved as Iran is, that the U.S. has assessed consistently, it does not want a direct war with the U.S. Right. Uh, even Hezbollah does not, the assessments has been, want a direct war now with, with Israel. So th there, are, there are assessments that... 
They want to attack. They want to exact a price. They don't want it to escalate. That doesn't mean... Dude, these guys, they don't, they don't think these are people, right? Like, there's no way. Biden's unconditional support to Israel gave all the confidence to a corrupt fascist madman like Bibi to broaden the conflict in an effort to draw the U.S. in. Israel struck Beirut, and then the Iranian consulate compound of Damascus. We should have put an end to this a long time ago. He goes, hold up, in your mind, does Iran not bear any responsibility for escalating tensions? What's Iran supposed to do? Like, Israel, Israel wants to do to every other fucking country in the region what it's been doing to the Palestinians. What are other countries in the region supposed to do? Just sit back and take it? Roll over? The fuck do you mean? This is such a fucking idiotic assessment of the situation. I just don't get it. I, I genuinely don't understand. What are they supposed to do? What is any country supposed to do? What is anyone that's not Israel supposed to fucking do in this situation? Only Israel gets the punch. They determine how hard they punch. They determine when and when they punch. And when they do punch, you can't do anything. You can't defend yourself. You can't uh, punch back. You have to roll over and take it. Submit and fucking die. What, what do you mean? Why is the question not, why did Israel attack a fucking embassy? How do you, like Israel, while in the midst of its ethnic cleansing campaign, chose to open up wars on different fucking fronts. Why is nobody asking if Israel has any agency in the matter? Are they simply just a uh, impossible to reckon with natural force? Is this a naturally occurring phenomenon? Is that what it is? Or is it a fucking rogue state? Did Israel claim responsibility to the attack on Iran, or was it a group of individuals that don't represent the whole of Israelis? Yeah, a group of individuals found fucking precise striking capabilities randomly. Oh my god. I don't understand how an attack on Iranian consulate would warn a full-on war slash bomb slash missiles on the country of Israel. They're attacking Israeli military targets. The fuck do you mean? What, what, like, I don't like it either, okay? But what is there to do in this situation? Israel has demonstrated that they will not stop. There's no reason to believe that once a country violates your sovereignty, that they will ever stop, especially when they have full unconditional support of the Security Council or at least veto power from the United States, which Iran asked for and did not get. No condemnations whatsoever to Israel for, for striking an embassy. Half of the people that want to defend Israel act like this is not a Hassan Abin misinformation incoming. How brain dead are you? Israel kills guy that helped plan 10-7. That right there is a defensive attack. That's really interesting you say that because Israel itself said that the IRGC had no, uh, no, nothing to do with 10-7. So did you come up with that on your own? Did you even read that from a Hasbara uh, troll operation? Like, where did you arrive at this conclusion? You just made it the fuck up. That's how you got to that information. Hassan Abid, misinformation incoming. Yeah, you're right. Misinformation was incoming. You were right. You, you, you signaled. You signaled that the misinformation was incoming. Everything is a fucking defensive attack, bro. Iran said he did, Lamont. Okay. So weird because Iran personally also said that Iran had nothing to do with October 7th. So did Israel. And so did the United States of America. Ridiculous. Bro, you called it beforehand. Why are you surprised? This coverage is disgusting. Like, imagine if Gaza got this coverage. This is one of missile bombardment. Gaza experienced thousands of these. Yes. What is this music? What the fuck? You know that Chatter's gonna get his point proven wrong and then immediately turn around and say I'm spreading misinformation? Yeah, he has to say that. Targeting of Qasem Soleimani. So it appeared to me that they did not, they, the regime, did not just run pell-mell into this decision, but they thought it through. It is strategic. Uh, it is, in their mind, uh, synchronized, and in their mind, it's proportional. So uh, I think at this point, it is very clear what the Iranians have done and what they've put on the chessboard. And now it's going to be very interesting to see if the or Israelis respond to that. That was yeah, very that's thoughtful. Point you make, uh, Mark, because uh, we're, we were just talking to Kimberly Halkett there, uh, our correspondent at the White House. She was saying that they've just heard that um, Biden has spoken to Netanyahu. There is a sense, perhaps, that they are trying to roll this back and calibrate the response. How do you see the response like, playing out then? Israel kills 30,000 plus Palestinians while openly stating that they're doing a genocide. Everyone's like, that's defensive, dog. Israel strikes uh, Beirut, okay? A whole different country's uh, blossoming city, okay? Israel's like, that's defensive, dog. Everyone's like, all right, I guess we got to shut the fuck up. Israel strikes the top dog in the region as far as their major foreign adversary. A whole ass country with a hundred million fucking population, okay? 
a country that is outside of the influence of the Western world for decades, a country that has built its own defensive capabilities for damn near a century at this fucking point. Again, defensive. That's not a violation of their sovereignty whatsoever. That's just a defensive measure. It is so insane. It seems like Israel never does anything that's wrong. Oh, well, sorry. Except for when they fucking murdered seven Western people. That's right. That was the one time when I saw collective condemnation from the Western world. When they fucking murked those World Central Kitchen humanitarian aid workers. When they three-tapped them over a two-kilometer span across three different vehicles. Correctly marked with World Central Kitchen logos. That's the only fucking time Israel done a little bit of wrong. Just a little bit. Just a little bit of wrong. 200 aid workers were massacred up until those last seven. Israel has a right to defend itself. Israel seemingly always has a right to defend itself against Palestinian babies. Premature babies that were, that were born and had to be placed in incubators. They had to fucking rot on hospital beds because Israel had a right to defend itself against them. You know, grandmas walking out of the fucking Palestinian church. Israel had a right to defend itself by using drone snipers. Don't say that's war, man. That's not war. It's ethnic cleansing. Israel does not have a right to defend itself in an, offens uh, in an offensive campaign in Gaza. As a belligerent occupier, Israel, under international law, does not have a right to defend itself by doing the things that it's doing. Okay? It does not. Just because mainstream media is not covering it correctly it doesn't change that reality. Okay? It's so odd. Israel always happens to be on the right side of history. We just simply don't understand it. And guess what? That attitude was so prescient for so long that there is a tremendous amount of fucking arrogance. There's a tremendous amount of arrogance from Israel, so much hubris that caused October 7 to begin with, thinking that they could maintain an apartheid without any kind of cost, okay? Getting so comfortable continuously oppressing, brutalizing, humiliating millions of Palestinians. And that very same arrogance is continuing for many defenders of Israel right now. Oh my God, here we have the number one Iranian melter, John Bolton, on CNN. Let's hear what this fucking asshole has to say. I'm sure he's uh, got some great takes. Uh, to convene following these attacks. What's your assessment of what's going on right now? Well, nothing's going to happen in the Security Council, that's for sure. I mean, what we had tonight uh, was a massive failure of Israeli and American deterrence. Massive failure. Uh, a 200 ballistic missile, cruise missile, drone failure. And uh, I think, notwithstanding that there appears to be very little damage, fingers crossed, uh, until we get the final assessment. And thank God if the death toll is, uh, is low or non-existent. And while we're at it, let's thank George W. Bush for getting out of the ABM Treaty of 1972, unleashing American uh, missile defense capabilities. But, but once we see what the damage is, uh, I think it's incumbent on Israel and the United States to reestablish deterrence in a major way. Uh, and I think that means, by definition, Israel's response, and there should be a response, should not be proportionate. Uh, it should be far stronger because uh, when deterrence fails to reestablish it, you have to teach the adversary that any gain they may hope to get by any future attack will be more than outweighed. Bro, this is his moment. Like, he's going to fucking nut so hard he's going to have a heart attack on television. This is like he's wanted to melt Iran. He's wanted to glass Iran in perpetuity. The Israeli this is his life's goal. To what Iran has now done. Well, what, what, is, what Iran did tonight that I think was, was most significant was the firing of ballistic missiles and cruise missiles from its territory directly at Israel. Uh, almost certainly at this point, none of those missiles uh, contained a nuclear warhead. But you never can tell when the next firing, the next salvo of ballistic missiles might contain a nuclear warhead. So I think among the many targets Israel should consider, this is the opportunity. Uh, to destroy I Iran's nuclear weapons program. Uh, and I hope President Biden is not trying to dissuade Prime Minister Netanyahu from doing that. Uh, and if he succeeds, and if at some future point the Ayatollahs uh, are able to pull off what former Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon called a nuclear holocaust, 
history will know who to blame. So just to be precise, Ambassador Bolton, you're recommending that Israel launch an airstrike to try to destroy whatever nuclear capabilities the Iranians might have. Is that what I'm hearing? Right. I think they should go after the nuclear fuel cycle uh, activities that are well known. Their locations are well known. Uh, and I think that would be... Yeah, he's uh, saying Israel should conduct military operations on Iranian soil. It's not restrained by any concern about he's saying israel should bomb iranian soil directly has by its own admission fired ballistic and cruise missiles uh, uh, that would be a dramatic hit to the regime maybe enough to topple it ambassador my colleague jim shudo is here with me uh, in washington he has a question he has a follow-up question for you go ahead jim yeah, ambassador bolton we're back refresh given, and, and you know as as well as we do that Hezbollah and its enormous missile uh, arsenal, many, many thousands of rockets and missiles, is intended in part by Iran to be a pressure point if Israel were to strike Iranian nuclear facilities. And I wonder, given the size of that, an order of magnitude bigger than it was, say, during the 2006 war, whether you believe Israel can today fight what would be a multi-front war, Gaza, in the south, Hezbollah in the north, Iran to, to the east, and if you would then envision the U.S. directly involved in such a conflict. Well, I think for the foreseeable future, Gaza is not going to be a principal battlefield, and it's certainly not uh, something that's going to engage full Israeli military power. Uh, I think Hezbollah put pressure on Iran. It's one reason why the Iranian counterstrike took almost two weeks after the Damascus strike by Israel to say you need to put skin in this game Iran so I'm not at all sure what Hezbollah's response would be uh, to Israel taking out a nuclear power that hasn't done a thing for Hezbollah uh, the Israelis clearly have thought about what to do to neutralize Hezbollah perhaps their response uh, which also would be a, a pretty big uh, problem for Iran would be to go after Hezbollah now my point is there are a number of steps Israel can take Passivity at this point for Israel uh, would be a big mistake. I mean, for, I think from the Israeli point of view, uh, they should remember what Winston Churchill said in World War II. Without victory, there is no survival. Uh, how close is Iran to actually having a nuclear bomb? Well, I think about 72 hours uh, that they can get if they send a wire transfer to the Central Bank of North Korea in Pyongyang. He's still going. And give the North Koreans enough time to put a couple warheads He's still going, on the airplane baby. and fly them to uh, Tehran. You know, there's a lot of talk about how close Iran is compared to how close they were four or five years ago or before uh, the Trump administration pulled out of the nuclear deal, all of which assumes perfect knowledge of Iran's nuclear weapons program. I, I think we should have enough. Uh, uh, experience with uh, faulty intelligence by now, not to be so sure, not to know how much of Iran's uranium enrichment He's program. He's so evil; is it's really kind of hilarious. No, he is like in North Korea. he is a cartoonish depiction of an evil person. Like, he close. is cartoonishly the fact evil. Is the, the nuclear deal of 2015 was flawed from the start by allowing Iran any uranium enrichment capability, whatever. Ambassador Bolton, thank you so much for joining us. We'll continue this conversation down the road. Glad to be with you. And we're going to have much more special coverage coming up from the region. We have live reporters on the scene. Also, I'll be speaking with former Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger. He's got some strong thoughts on what's going on right now between Israel and Iran. Much more of our special breaking news coverage right after this. Uh, Itamar ben by the way, and Bezala Smotrich voted in the cabinet against authorizing Netanyahu, Galan, and Gantz. To decide on the response, all of the other voter, uh, ministers voted in favor according to two sources that comment on the details. I don't really know what the reasoning for that would be. Like, they want to go harder than Netanyahu or something? Like, what the fuck? He converted to Islam. Yeah. Bro. Brothers. Itamar Benkvir and Bezalel Smotrich have actually said the Shahada. And as of today, they have found the light of Allah. And they will be going to Jannah. I, I, it brings me no pleasure to report this, but that's right. They are, they're actually, they're not even Sunni. They're Shia Muslims, as a matter of fact. That's right. Praise be to him. Um, that's what happened. That's why they're, that's why they're doing that. How will the members of the Abraham Accord, uh, who has a, a clear interest to 
uh, stop Iran from getting the hegemony over the Middle East and how the Saudis will react. Well, Jordan, Iraq, Lebanon and Israel have all temporarily closed their airspace. And this is what the airspace over the region looks like right now. And you can clearly see the <laughs> areas that planes are avoiding. So there's big blank areas in the middle of... How can... How should Israel consolidate its situation between these fundamentalist Islamic governments? Bro, Israel is a fundamentalist government. Like, what do you mean fundamentalist Islamic governments? Because it has to be solved for the sake of Europe in the long run. What? I think this problem has to be talked about. Should they just move away from their holy land? Bro, how can you say this is Israel's holy land and simultaneously be like, but the Islamists are the fucking fundies. So you're saying that, like, you're perfectly fine with Israel being fundamentalist? Like, I'm so confused. Also, why is this a problem for Europe? Do you think these guys are just, like, fundamentalist and therefore it's the Islamic fervor in them? That's the reason why they want to, like, they want to destroy Europe or something? Is that what you think? Or do you think constant war and destabilization plays a big role in their existence? What is Israel doing to defend Europe uh, also? Like, well, what's happening here? Zaza. Bro, I'm just asking a question. Yeah, but the question is so loaded. It's like a wild fucking question to just ask on its face. So I'm, I'm asking you questions to clarify what you mean. If you're just asking questions, I'm just asking questions. How is that a problem, Zaza? Zaza! fuck you mean about the you know israel's position in in, in defending europe from islamic fundamentalists uh, it's confusing to me when it, i don't understand when the new strikes are going to happen they keep saying there's new strikes happening but they're not sorry bro i leave now you don't have to leave i mean hopefully you can hopefully you can clarify some of my questions but i guess not Anyway, bro, stop spamming the Netanyahu foreign policy article about how Netanyahu, uh, Israel's problem is larger than Netanyahu. Mr. I, know. I understand you're getting some new information on the defense secretary's conversation with his Israeli counterpart. Just a short time ago, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin spoke with his Israeli counterpart, Minister of Defense Yoav Gallant. The two have been in regular communication over the past days, weeks, and months, but obviously this is a very different situation, and they got off the phone just a couple of hours ago. In that call, according to a U.S. Fam official familiar with the call, Austin asked Gallant to update the U.S. on what Israel's response would be and to notify them how and what that response would look like. This is obviously important. The U.S. and Israel Soon people will be crying free Iran. Boo hoo when Israel strikes back says testicular to torsions. Bro, why are you fantasizing about like a whole different other state and how violent they're going to be? I don't even understand when Americans fucking fantasize about America being violent to like some random fucking dudes in Yemen. It's just like it genuinely is so strange. Like you think this is helping you? You think killing a bunch of dudes in Yemen is going to help you? Like, is going to advance your life in any meaningful capacity? No, dumbass. Every fucking dollar that went to that bomb could have gone to fixing the fucking potholes down the street. Could have helped tackle the crisis of homelessness in this fucking country. But no, some of you dumb fucks are so excited at the prospect of war. Straight peasant brain. Straight peasant mentality. Me lord! I will join the ranks, my lord, your army, my liege, your army must be grand. It's like, bro, what are you talking about? You're dying. You're dying. Okay. You will never be able to own a home. You will never be able to retire. And you're sitting there fantasizing about how hard Israel is going to strike Iran. Don't get diabetes either because you ain't going to be able to afford insulin. And it's crazy. It's like, it's, it's just like, why, why is this such major cope? So many people on the internet hyping and glazing so hard for war with Iran, but you know, as soon as a drone kills their neighbor, they cry like everyone else. This shit ain't a game. It won't be a spectacle when it's in your front yard. Yeah, it's just Israel won't do shit. No, I think Israel might do shit. I wouldn't say Israel won't do shit. The Americans spent nearly a billion dollars on interceptors tonight. That's right, baby. You know what I mean? Crawl out through the fallout. Remember, they said this bomb was Israel clean. strong nation, Israel big, Israel powerful, Israel mighty military. Israel ain't shit without our fucking tax dollars. Okay? That's your fucking student loans, dumb fuck. That's your fucking health care, stupid. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah! Baby, call out. Baby, kick. I 
can't wait for my dumb fuck fentanyl addicted cousin to join the military and go get his dick blown off in Iran. That's right. I have nothing to live for. Why? Because Netanyahu wants to avoid criminal liability. You stupid fuck. You do. Many of you dumb fucking American baboons do deserve that. I honestly, you do. You're so fucking stupid. Why don't you call Stupid up fucking Americans. God damn. Me. Seriously. It's so sick. To such a, such a conflict. I mean, it's possible. Look, I, I think the ambassador made solid points, which is Iran has shown a willingness and a capability to attack Israel. We know they're very close to a nuclear weapon. And I remember all my time in Congress being promised by every administration that if Iran actually does get very close to a nuclear weapon, that will be prevented. Iran will never have a nuclear weapon. But, well, yeah. we're at that moment now. So while I'm not sitting here saying that maybe the right response oh. on this is to attack the nuclear program, the question is, we are on the edge oh, of that moment. Oh, we're so fucking we stupid, dude. Country, we are so fucking dumb, dude. We will either dumb, have a dude. nuclear armed Iran, or we won't, and we may have to do something about that. Us and Israel, probably largely on Israel. So is it the best response on this attack? I don't know. I'll leave that up to the Israelis. But I can tell you what certainly needs to happen, I think, is going after Iran's. But this is a very directly proportionate response is going after Iran's ability to make the exact drones they sent against Israel and that they're supplying. This is a side benefit that they're supplying to Russia yeah. to attack Ukraine with. All right, stand by for a moment, uh, Adam. Uh, Jeremy Diamond, our correspondent, uh, is in northern Israel right now, and there's some uh, very intense developments unfolding where you are, Jeremy. Tell our viewers. Yeah, that's right, Wolf. We are in northern Israel, and in just the past hour, uh, there were 25 projectiles that were fired from Lebanon towards the Golan Heights. Uh, my team and I, as we arrived here, we actually were able to hear what sounded like multiple interceptions of those projectiles. The Israeli military is not specifying whether those were drones or uh, or, or missiles in this case, um, but we do understand that these were fired from Lebanon. Earlier this evening, of course, uh, this area in northern Israel uh, did get projectiles, un again, unclear if drones or missiles that were fired from Iran as part of that large-scale attack that Iran carried out on northern Israel as well as in southern Israel. Uh, we also understand that uh, Hezbollah uh, claimed responsibility for firing multiple missiles, uh, multiple rockets earlier uh, this evening uh, in the direction of the Golan Heights as well. And so this is what's critical about this part of northern Northern Israel is that this is really the intersection both of this proxy battle that Iran and Israel have been fighting for months now as Hezbollah and Israel uh, have been trading fire across the Israeli Lebanese border uh, for months now since the beginning uh, of uh, of this war uh, but also now uh, the site of uh, Iran's uh, latest uh, response and Iran's uh, first attack uh, against uh, Israeli soil now we do not uh, have any reports of any of those drones or missiles that were fired by Iran actually hitting targets here in northern Israel. No reports of any hits on the ground. Uh, it appears uh, that uh, the majority of those projectiles were intercepted either uh, here uh, in Israeli airspace. We do have video of some of those intercepts happening over the Golan Heights, uh, but also uh, across the border in, in Syria. There were also multiple interceptions that were reported there. There as well. Wolf. And those interceptions, I think, were largely done by the United States uh, air defense system that has been working together with the Israelis to prevent these Iranian drones and these rockets and missiles, cruise missiles and others, from coming into Israel. The U.S. is deeply involved in that. Uh, Jim Shudo has a follow up question for you, Jeremy. Go ahead, Jim. Jeremy, I wonder because that cross border fire, both from the Lebanese side of the border, the Syrian side of the border, has, has been going on for some time, going back to October 7th, in fact, predating October 7th. Is the pace tonight at all increasing? It, it, because, of course, the question has been, would Hezbollah get involved in any significant way, open up a northern front in this war, or is this more in line with what we've seen in recent weeks and months? 
Yeah, you know, Jim, it's a great question, and it is really hard to tell at this point. I mean, you know, Hezbollah and Iran certainly do uh, uh, speak. They do coordinate their military uh, activities. Hezbollah is uh, one of Iran's most significant proxies uh, in this region. Uh, but whether or not the barrage of rockets that we saw from Hezbollah earlier was coordinated with uh, this uh, Iranian uh, attack on Israel uh, is, is hard to tell. And actually, I'm seeing what, what looked like uh, some interceptions in, in the other direction here, not hearing any sirens or the sounds of that. But I did just see some flashes in the air. And, and, Bro, this and I would just know that this area, I mean, they are used to having these uh, Big homies about to get fucking lasered by a Hezbollah drone over here. Coming, uh, from, uh, Lebanon He's like, I don't hear any fucking sirens. I'm sure it's fine. And they fine. also are used to the sound of, of jets. And, and as uh, I can hear here, jets just continuously flying overhead. And yep, I just heard the booms from what I thought were, were potential interceptions. And so the, the delay there, I don't know if you can hear that on my microphone, but, but those definitely sound like interceptions. The light obviously travels faster than sound, so you can see those first. And now I'm hearing that's the third uh, boom that we just heard. It must be at some distance, so there is a possibility that that could actually be intercepted in Syria rather than in the Golan Heights. Um, we, I'm just checking my phone to see, yep, there were some siren alerts in northern Israel, um, in the in the Golan Heights, indeed, um, not far from our, not too far from our position, actually, maybe a distance of 10 kilometers or so. So what, what's also interesting is that the home front command here in Israel, actually, before this latest barrage that we had over the past hour, they had actually told residents in both northern Israel as well as southern Israel who had earlier been instructed to stay near shelters that they could return to normal, indicating that that large scale attack from Iran, that the threat for now at least was over. And yet what we are seeing instead is more rockets being fired from Lebanon, likely uh, by Hezbollah, uh, indicating that this is going to continue on as it has uh, for months now, as you were just mentioning, Jim. So uh, this, it's Wolf again, uh, Jeremy. I just want to be precise right now. So in addition to Iran launching all these drones and rockets and missiles towards Israel, it now looks like their proxy in southern Lebanon, Hezbollah, is beginning to do the same thing. You say at least 25 projectiles have been fired from Lebanon by Hezbollah, not the Lebanese military or the Lebanese government, Hezbollah forces this Iranian proxy in southern Lebanon towards Israel. Uh, so it looks like they're getting involved directly in this Iran attack against Israel. But is, is that what I understand? Yeah, and, and this was... Yeah, and this was not the only barrage that we saw coming from Lebanon uh, tonight. Earlier in the day, Hezbollah said that it had fired uh, multiple uh, rockets in the direction of uh, an Israeli military base in the Golan Heights, where it has directed rockets in the past as well. Uh, again, the question Hezbollah. that Jim raised is, is a good Hezbollah. one in terms of how much is this part of that Iranian response? How much of this is part of what we have seen over the course of months now, which is Hezbollah firing rockets into the Golan Heights, into northern Israel. Uh, that, mu that part is, is what's tricky to, to distinguish here. Uh, you know, there's no indication that, you know, even as Iran may, may, suggest, may have indicated earlier tonight, that this was its response to those strikes in Syria, that the response was over as far as it was concerned. There's no indication that that means that Hezbollah is going to stop firing rockets into northern Israel, nor does it mean that Israel is going to stop conducting airstrikes into southern Lebanon, which we have also seen at a similar clip over the course of the last six months. All right, Jeremy, just be careful over there. We'll stay in very close touch with you. Jeremy Diamond is in northern Israel. It looks like Hezbollah is beginning to launch a lot of rockets and missiles towards Israel from southern Lebanon. We'll watch that unfold. Uh, this is... I still can't get over how Bibi denied Ukraine the Iron Dome. Why? I understand he hates Muslims, but why deny Ukraine aid to defend them against Iran's ally? It makes no sense. What the fuck? Chatter about to find out some very fun new things about uh, who Israel is also aligned with, both economically, strategically, politically. Uh, the other country in this equation is Russia. His name is Vladimir Putin. And uh, while Vladimir Putin is, you know, always talking a big game about how he loves Palestine how he loves defending Palestinian rights. Israel would be like half of the nation it is currently without the Russian dual nationals. Yeah, Israel has ties with Russia, and Russia provides cover for Israeli airstrikes in Syria against Iran. 
That's true. Putin stands for Palestinian emancipation, of course. Yeah, sure, dude. Sure. Every fucking actor on that side of the goddamn planet is playing both sides, okay? Turkey, Russia, Netanyahu. Come on, guys. And Israel. The biggest purchaser of Iranian petroleum is China. It's why we passed the SHIP Act through the House in November, and I'm calling on Senator Schumer to pass this through the Senate immediately. We have to crack down on their funding source. $88 billion in increased Iranian petroleum sales since Joe Biden took office because they have weakened the sanctions against Iran. We have to crack down on this. So I'm deeply concerned about how this entire uh, situation could explode uh, and, and how Israel is going to defend itself on multiple fronts. Yeah, very quickly, uh, Congressman, uh, b before I let you go, what is the bigger threat to the population of Israel right now? These rockets, these missiles, these drones coming in from Iran, or potentially what Hezbollah is doing, the, the thousands of rockets and missiles they have in South Lebanon, which could not only hit Northern Israel. Well, China Israel, take advantage of the, the situation Haifa, and but, attack Hong Kong. Why the fuck would China attack its own, like its own part of its own state? Like, what, what do you mean? Did you mean Taiwan? And in which case, the answer would probably still be the same. China is taking the best approach to the equation, which is kicking, kicking their seat, kicking their feet up on the table and just going like this. America is making a mess of the situation, embarrassing itself on the global stage, showing its ass to everybody else that is a trade partner to China. They don't have to do shit. Out Iran's nuclear capabilities. Uh, this is a grave threat. The world is in the most precarious place since World War II. We cannot be a bunch of Neville Chamberlains in this moment. We must be Winston Churchill, victory at all costs. Israel must defend themselves. And to all of my colleagues in Congress who have been calling for ceasefire for the past many months that have been seeking regime change in Israel, uh, enough. Get behind the Israeli government work together to ensure the free world is victorious because if not the free world uh, the consequences will be dire across the globe congressman lawler my colleague and friend uh, jim shuto is here he has a quick follow-up for you it's so awesome bro when we're talking about foreign policy like cnn and fox news are on a competition on who will be more violent you know what i mean do you call on him now to do so this week uh look i believe very strongly we need to get aid to israel uh, to Ukraine and to, to Taiwan. Uh, it's why I've introduced defending borders, defending democracies, which would provide 66 billion in lethal aid, uh, as well as border security here in the United States. We have to recognize the threat at our own southern border. But let me be very clear about this. Oh. House Republicans passed aid to Israel back in November of last year. Chuck Schumer and Senate Democrats sat on that for months refusing to take up that supplemental aid package for Israel. We obviously have to work together to get this done. So yes, I'm calling on Speaker Johnson to bring a bill to the floor this week. I'm calling on Chuck Schumer and the White House to work with House Republicans. We are in a divided government. We have to work together. There has to be compromise. We need to help Israel. We need to help Ukraine. We need to help Taiwan. And we need to secure our own borders. The world is under attack. And we all have a responsibility and an obligation uh, to get this done. Congressman Mike Lawler, thank you so much for joining us. We'll continue this conversation down the road. And we'll have much more of our special coverage. Why do these ahead. people get microphones, bro? He's on the fucking, I think he's on the, 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 uh, the Foreign Intelligence Committee, I think. He's a Republican. It's Mike Lawler. He's on, he's, this person doesn't just have a microphone. He's not some random guy. He is a politician. With actual, on the Foreign Affairs Committee, sorry, not the Senate Intelligence Committee, Foreign Affairs Committee, he he has, like, direct power in the legislation. There are about 1.2 million Jews from former Soviets, if I recall correctly. Their politics are very interesting, especially with respect to stuff like the settlements. There's a significant Russian population in the settlements like Ariel. Much of the alignment is purely geopolitical. Yeah, the only, like, the only uh, Soviet, the only Soviet Jewish person I know is incredibly like incredibly aggro in pushing z it's a friend of mine's grandmother she's dope someone i know and their grandmother 
who used to be a doctor in the USSR, and she pushes Z so fucking hard, bro. Oh my god. It's awesome. Pushing Z is crazy, bro. It's a doctor pushing Z. Pushing Z means like you're pro Putin's invasion of of Ukraine. Yeah, no, she also is like very pro USSR. It's awesome. That part's awesome. Anyway, how does that even make sense? It's finally daytime for us, and I can see so many missile trails over the sky. I'm aware of the genocide that Israel is doing and how they want to want the Israel state, but why is Iran involved in this? Because Israel struck Iranian soil by hitting an Iranian embassy compound in Damascus last week. And then the international community said nothing. <laughs> like, nothing at all. And Iran was like, well, what the fuck are you doing? Like, we, we will defend ourselves. Air raid sirens sounded in more than 720 locations for hours overnight, and rockets were intercepted across the country. Tehran says the strikes are in response to Israel's bombing of the Iranian consulate in Syria. Israel's military has told residents the attack is now over. Together with our allies and partners. All right, I guess there's no more extra attacks. Iran said if the UN condemned that attack, this might not have happened, I believe. <sighs> Pretty astonishing video from earlier. <sighs> Pretty astonishing video from earlier. Craziness. Actually crazy. I thought Pushing Z was being pro Zelensky. What? No. No, it's the opposite. Pushing Z is when you push the top of the hour ad break button and then tell everybody that at the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with the Twitch Prime. In this video, the missiles are targeting the air defense systems, by the way. Yeah. You should push the subscription button at the top of the hour so you subscribe and no longer see ads at the top of the hour. That's what you should be pushing. Hold on, though. Why are we pro USSR with all the mass executions, starvations, gulags, and so on? Bro. You think about that, okay? I'm talking about a Jewish doctor in the USSR being fucking pro-USSR. Think about it. Like, you're, be, you're literally about to be, you're about to be like, dude, what about the doctor's plot? It's like, yeah, well, what about it? No, you're also generally correct. The main candidate for Russian Jews is the right wing, Avigdor Lieberman, who's pretty damn friendly with Putin. Putin famously said of him, he's one of us, and Lieberman said elections in Russia are fair. He's a big fan and has been shilling. Yeah. It's because, for the record, the reason why uh, older older people still favor the USSR is because it was glorious for them. That's why. Why wouldn't they be? Even the Georgian dude that we watched talk about um, Stalin's like uh, spa that he has in Georgia, that he built in Georgia, openly was talking about how like older Georgians straight up still feel nostalgic about the USSR. And there's much to be nostalgic about. There's also a lot of wrong for sure. But ultimately, they saw a lot of improvements in their living conditions. They thought it was a glorious fucking world power. And they also remember how bad things got after the dissolution of the USSR. Because that was infinitely more damaging to the entire region, if not the entire world, than anything else they remember of, like, full employment and whatnot. So, yeah, of course, they, are, they remember it fondly. Um, there is concern among top U.S. officials that Israel could do something quickly in response to Iran's attacks without thinking through a potential fallout afterward, according to a senior administration official and a senior defense official. Well, you should have thought about it beforehand, man. I think it might be too late. There's concern among... <laughs> the concern stems in part from the administration's views on the approach Israel has taken to its war against Hamas, as well as the attack in Damascus. President Joe Biden has privately expressed concern that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is trying to drag the U.S. more deeply into a broader conflict, according to three pe people familiar with, the con uh, with his comments. Huh. What will Hutch say now that Joe Biden is in agreement with me? Maybe he'll change his position now because he has to, like, literally follow after the Democratic Party says things. Not that it fucking matters. His concerns don't mean anything because he's still going to follow through on it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> He's always like, man, I'm so privately concerned about this genocide. And it's like, okay, well, are you going to do something about it publicly? Eh, not really. I am privately concerned, though. Privately, I'm getting very angry. Privately, I'm about to say something. I'm about to say something real mean, okay? I'm about to have a, a come-to-Jesus moment privately. He's going to say the gamer word. And just you wait, dude. He's going to say the gamer word, and then Benjamin Ayan is going to be like, I know so many more slurs than you, old man. They're going to have a slur off. Watch out, guys. Imagine if he got publicly concerned for a moment. Oof. Oof. Things would be real different. 
Oh yeah, here. I wanted to show you this fucking defensive marvel. Honestly, it is really a defensive marvel. <sighs> Man, we have no idea how to comprehend the terror of war from the West. We have no idea. Apart from the three that got of course got in, of course, yeah. No, there, dude. That's the whole point of launching five hundred drones, chat. Some of them are not going to be intercepted. So, the Iron Dome has what, like a ninety percent uh, successful inter uh, interception capability. That means ten percent still get through. And I think the numbers probably tonight are a little lower. They said ninety nine percent of attacks they stop, but I don't believe that. No, tonight they said ninety nine, but I still don't believe that. Isn't it very sus that Iran didn't hit anything? No, I'm, I believe they hit a military base. We'll find out more about the actual impact. Yeah, these were the Arrow 2 3, though, which have a higher interception rate. Um, we'll find out more about the actual impact. And uh, it wasn't just, it wasn't just uh, the, the Iron Dome that was operating. You had Arrow 2 and 3, which were for larger missiles. And not only that, but you had uh, American forces, coalition forces also intercepting literally over Jordan and over Syria, I think. So uh, it wasn't just the Israeli defenses that were accomplishing this impressive feat. Here, this is the video of the airbase being targeted. This was an awesome moment. Crowd chanting Genocide Joe. She is a big problem. He said, they're not wrong. Bro, what are you saying? God, the conservative brain rot is so severe. Bro, what do you mean genocide, Joe? Like, like we say that and that's fine, but you can't say that. You're MAGA. What do you think Trump's stance is on Israel doing a genocide? So fucking. <sighs> they're not wrong. They're not wrong. He's done everything wrong. Think she is a. Bro, I don't know. I, I just. <sighs> I don't know how these guys operate. Like, I don't know what they're on. This level of mental illness is crazy. I run into Zoomers who are unironically like this. They say Biden is doing a genocide and support Trump. It actually hurts my soul how fucking stupid people can be, especially on this issue. Dude, they're legit lobotomized. Yeah. It's a negative epithet. They're recuperating to say Biden is genociding Israel. No, no, no. You're wrong. I promise you those guys aren't saying genocide, Joe, because they think Biden is genociding well, Israel. No. That it needed to defend itself uh, against the threats coming from Israel that have been continuing for many years since October 7th until now in Syria alone. Hassan, um, you are wrong in everything. Have killed 18 members of Iran's Revolutionary Guard. And not only that, since 2010, at least six nuclear scientists in Iran have been assassinated. One of them survived the assassination attempt, but all of those attacks Iran has blamed Israel for in an attempt to uh, deter or delay Iran's nuclear program. Uh, this certainly will be an event that Iranians will be talking about as they wake up to the news. What we do know is that the two uh, airports in Tehran, the capital, the domestic one and the international one, Mehrabad Airport and Imam Khomeini Airport, have um, canceled or delayed all flights possibly in preparation for any kind of a retaliatory attack that could be carried out by Israel in the coming hours. And the Revolutionary Guard have also issued warnings to the United States and those countries that have helped Israel uh, def defend itself against the attack that was carried out by Iran earlier on Saturday, saying that they will also be uh, paying the price for their uh, assistance uh, they've been providing to Israel. Dorsa Jabari, Al Jazeera, Tehran. I thought I was having a bad well, time Jordan, with this Iraq, news. Lebanon and Israel have all temporarily closed their airspace. It comes after earlier reports of interference with the GPS navigation systems. Well, this is what the airspace over the region looks like right now, and you can clearly see the areas that planes are avoiding. Well, Iraq is one of those countries that has shut its airspace. Al Jazeera's Mohammed Jamjoum is still with us. Uh, he joins us live from the Iraqi capital. Uh, Mohammed, things seem to have quietened down in Israel for now. Um, just tell us what's been happening there in the Iraqi capital. Well, Darren, what's... All right, morning is, become, morning is happening. Um, I'm really tired, and I apologize for not playing Walking Dead. I'm going to go to sleep. I'm not going to go to sleep. It's early, but I need to fucking chill out. Drake's diss track tomorrow. 
And also Walking Dead tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to go finish Fallout. Fallout, crawl out to the Fallout, baby. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that, I guess. Uh, I will continue to provide this kind of coverage as best as I can. And uh, that's it. That's it for tonight. I'm so fucking tired. Holy shit. I don't know why. It just stripped me a little bit. But yeah, unfortunately, no gaming occurred tonight. But gaming will occur tomorrow. All right. Love you all. Peace in the Middle East. Tomorrow's another day. Sunday fun day might be delayed again, depending on the backlash and what Israel chooses to do. But we're back. Peace. Thank you.